Hello, mate. All right, Pat, yeah. It'd be better if I knew what I was doing here. I don't normally return to the scene of a crime. Well, I don't like to think of it as a crime. You're doing me a favor, told you enough, huh? <laughs> yeah, well, it's not so good you couldn't tell me on the phone. You, my friend, are here to lend a helping hand. What with? Well, the lad has left me in charge of all of this while he goes away and finds himself or whatever. He's going to be gone for a while. And I'm in charge. Of what? A few rusty old tools. And a very, very healthy bank account. So what, you're going to take the money and leg it? You'll be caught in a day. This is no rip it and run. What is it, then? You remember the nailers? Well, we can do the same here. Only this time, we've got even easier access to the money. So it's all sunshine and roses. Then one stormy night. Why is it a stormy night? I'm trying to paint you a picture here, and I'm sensing you don't appreciate it. I'm a storyteller at heart. Anyway, you know the drill. I do indeed. So, oh. exactly how healthy is this bank account? Trust me, mate. We'll be quids in. With me in charge of the finances. This, just the beginning. I tell you, it's going to be like tea. Oh, don't say candy from a baby. Money from an idiot. Only me! Oh, I ripped the car right off, put them all away. She had me drinking Ralphie Bellini's lethal. Have a nice time then, love. Mm. Who's your friend? This is Alistair. Oh. He's going to be working with me on some jobs we've got lined up. Didn't take you long to replace my son, did it? We're just looking at some stuff we need for the bigger jobs, you know, diggers, excavators. Sounds fascinating. Men with their diggers. Yeah, well, but investments really, look. Well, that's fine. You just make me a little listy and cost it out. I'm sure it'll be a riveting read. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I do you a list, look? Mm -hmm. So that I can clear the funds, you daft beggar. Am I missing something here? Don't tell me he didn't tell you. Who? Not told me what? <sighs> My beautiful son, you didn't think that he would lumber you with everything, did you? Well, he's put me in charge of accounts, so you and me are going to be walking together. <laughs> <laughs> I've to admit, they were very keen on admin. And who is? Thanks to my misspent youth in front of a dartboard and the Saturday job at the bookies, I have quite a head for figures. What I don't understand is why he didn't tell me himself he'd left you in charge. Well, it's not a problem, is it? It's like he didn't trust me. Don't be daft. Of course he trusts you. Left you with me, didn't he? Just because I'm family, love. Yeah, I'm blood stick in the water, I get it. Hey, look, Jason thinks the world of you. You know he does. And you're still going to be in charge of all the building side of the work. You know it makes sense. I need to talk to Steve, see if I can cut back on my hours at streetcars. Is that going to be necessary? Of course it is. I want to do this right. You know, I see myself as the new Karen Brady, surrounded by, ooh, spreadsheets and shoulder pads. <laughs> oh, one more thing. There will be no familiarity in the workplace. Well, at least not when the punters are around. <laughs> <laughs> And the thing is, we are going to need a new van. With Jason's being bent out, what have you? Well, what about yours? It's too small. The bigger the van, the bigger the jobs we can get. How much are we talking about? A new one. Plus the VAT, 16, 17 grand. For a van? I'd want a house for that. Look, I think we should just look at buying second hand, or I'll have a look at leasing. I'll see what's most cost effective. Yeah, I know you have, love, but I just think with the big things, it should be your decision. It's your money. <laughs> All right. Well, behave yourself hey, and, and stay safe. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Is the lad OK? Oh, he's fine. Violet's looking after him and he reckons he's got bargain flights to Thailand in a few days. All right for some, eh? Mm, says he's going to go island hopping, whatever that is, and... Something about a full moon party. Sounds a bit weird to me. And me. Oh. I reckon he's only going to the full moon party because there'll be lots of girls there. That's as good a reason as any. Yeah, well, he needs to be careful. It can be dangerous in Thailand, up with those sharp spiders and those nasty little cappuccino monkeys. What's this about monkeys? 
It's Highland's biggest killer, apparently. Mm. Hey! Do not take the mick. I'm just saying it could be dangerous, and let's be honest, our chase is not the brightest spark in the world. <laughs> you missing him, are you? No, I'm liking the peace and quiet. She's missing him. Yeah. Well, I just came to give you the rent, and, um, sorry it's late. Oh, don't worry, it's fine. <laughs> Thanks. Right, well, I best go. Need to pick up my rollers. Oh, uh, doing your hair, are you? <laughs> no, painting in the bedroom. Mm. Got it with a fashion statement. All right. <laughs> Steph's gone for lilac and yellow. Who knew they went together? Mm. I'll see you later. Bye. <clears throat> Is he always late with the rent? Don't know. You're too soft, you are. Well, that's what makes me so lovable. Right, there are two tea bags in there, so it better be strong enough. Ah, uh, what can I say, love? I'm a builder. I like builder's tea. What's that? Did you know the rent on that flat hasn't been raised in ages? Yeah, they got quite a bargain there. <laughs> They're paying well under the market rate. I mean, you've got to move with the times. You've got to inflate with inflation. Yeah, but they're really good tenants, Andy and Steph. OK. So Jason's got to be out of pocket because they're good tenants. Well, if it's not broke, don't fix it. They look after the flat and we take the rent. Late. Oh, but they are really lovely kids. I'm sorry, love. I know it sounds harsh, but... I see Jason as... Well, I know I'm not his dad, but he left us in charge, didn't he? So we should be making the most of the business, and that includes the flat. So he's got something good to come home to. I suppose we'd only be charging the going rate. Exactly. But I don't want to be left with an empty flat. Well, if they did leave, somebody else would just snap it up. Think about it, love. For Jason. It makes sense, doesn't it? It's up to you, love. I mean, they'd have to pay more somewhere else. Very true. Hiya, I was um, going to drop this off, but seeing as you're here... Oh, right, what is it? It's a notice of increased rent. We can't afford this. <laughs> well, it is in keeping with the market rate, and I've given you two months' notice. Well, does Jason know about this? Jason's happy for his mum to do the best for the business. Oh, 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 this is good business, is it? Hey, this is nothing personal. We've got rights. Whatever it is you're trying to pull, I promise you, son, everything in there is above board. <laughs> Michael? Hey. You never said you were back today. Well, I am. What's going on? Everything's fine. Oh, we're just sorting some things out. With him? Um, it is in line with inflation. <laughs> it's a joke. Well, you'd know all about being a joke, wouldn't you, mate? You think you're funny, don't you? That's right. Do you, do you just want us out or something? Of course I don't, love. You're up to something. But I'll tell you what. You won't take advantage of these two. Not while I'm about. Look, this is the first rent increase on that place in years. So this has come from Jason, has it? I mean, it is his flat. No, Jason's away at the minute. What? He's gone away for a bit. When? Last week. <laughs> you don't waste much time, do you? This has nothing to do with you. I said from the start he was trying to get his feet under the table. That's right, this is none of your business. I'm sorry, Steph, but... Rents go up now and again. It's a fact of life, and we've got big overheads on that place. We? Why don't us four go somewhere quiet and discuss this, eh? Yeah, good idea. So you can pull the wool over there, I should like that, wouldn't you? All right, that is enough. I was trying to be reasonable giving them two months' notice. That has now just turned into four weeks. <sighs> what? You have no right to do this. You'll find it's the legal minimum. This is not the Arlene I used to know. I would also like to point out that because you've redecorated the flat without permission, you've broken the tenancy oh. agreements. So that's grounds for eviction if Eileen so chose, which I'm sure she won't, but I just... Yeah, but you just thought you'd mention it. You are a completely different person since you met did it. right to mention it. So I want everything putting back to how it was, or when you go, I'll have to take your deposit. Thanks for chucking petrol onto the fire. That was a great help. Just what we needed. Rodwell crawling out of the woodwork. What's he doing back? Well, things didn't work out, I imagine. Why else does a loser return? I shouldn't have let him push me buttons like that, though. Hey, love, you've done nothing wrong. Well, it wasn't going too badly. Then we start talking about eviction. Because he provoked us. Oh, I should have known better. He forced our hand. We had nowhere else to go. You can't say those kind of things to you, love, and get away with it. Yeah, yeah, I know. 
If it's Andy and Steph you're worried about, I mean, we've got nothing against them, have we? So if they decided to leave, you don't mind giving them a reference for their new place, do you? Of course I would. There you go. All the poison in that conversation came from Rodwell. It's him they have to blame. Oh, a one bed flat in Cramier Street. That would be handy. I, that's almost what Eileen wants us to pay. Yeah, well, there's nothing else. But maybe we should rent a studio. Oh, yeah, sleep on a sofa bed six feet from the kitchen sink. Michael! Gail. I thought you were in Brighton. I was. When did you get back? Just a few hours ago. I thought the ice cream trade would have just been getting into its stride down there. Well, yeah, it is. To be honest, I read about Callum in the papers. It's been awful. It was. You're looking right. How long are you thinking of stopping? Um, I'm not quite sure yet. Well, no doubt I'll see you around. Yeah. I look forward to it. Found anything yet? Don't worry. We'll think of something. I'm really sorry if I've muddied the waters. We might need to get second jobs. Yeah, well, you could always move in with Luke and Maria. <laughs> or your mum and dad. Well, if you hadn't have redecorated the flat. I, I didn't know we weren't allowed to. I thought I was upgrading it. You should have asked permission. Oh, well, they didn't hear you complaining at the time. Anyway, that is not why we're having to leave. It's because we can't pay the rent. Yeah, it still needs sorting. Like somebody's had a reality check. Of course, there is another way out of this. I'm keeping on a mate's floor, but I could move back in with you and we could split the rent between us. Oh, yeah, that was great last time. Right, it'd never work. Oh, OK. Just a suggestion. But if that's worse than the alternatives, then uh, I'm sorry I spoke. You heard from Jace? Yeah, I spoke to him this morning. Seems to be enjoying himself. Where's he gone? He's in London, off to Thailand any day soon. It's all right for some, isn't it? Yeah, he's welcome to the heat, Doc. I had enough of that in Dubai. Oh, right. Blackpool for you this year, then, is it? I have many happy memories of Blackpool. Oh, me too. Hey, we should do the illuminations. Fine by me. So it's nice to live for a week in Spain. <laughs> ah. Uh, can we have a word? Um, far away. Um, we've had a long think about the new rent you want. OK. And we've decided to accept it. Oh, great. Can afford it, then? Well, no, not on our own, but Michael's going to be moving in with us again. I see. So I can make up the difference? Oh, that's fantastic news, isn't it? Absolutely. Let me buy all the drink, Michael. What do you like? Uh, just a mineral water, please. Steph. But you weren't expecting that. I'm delighted. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Why wouldn't it be? Because it means I'll be sticking around for a bit. I don't know what it is exactly you're after here, but... I'd advise you to watch what you say to me. <laughs> oh, I'll be watching you. Every minute of every day. You ruined things for me once before, but... Well, I'm back now. <laughs> and I'm not scared of you anymore. I won't rest until people around here see you for what you really are. Mum, quickest flights are booked up. I mean, even if you flew out tonight, by the time you caught your two connections... Well, you, um, you need a visa or anything? Visa? Yeah, didn't Jason say something about a... Visa? I could be wrong. Here, let me have a look. You get your mum a drink. He sounded so vulnerable last night. He kept going quiet, but I could hear that he was crying. I wish that his dad had never come back into his life. I should have said something different. Mum, it's not your fault. I've only persuaded him to get in the cab and go back to the hostel. Don't you blame yourself, Eileen. Blame his murdering father. And you're looking for visas? I am, I'm just saying. It's Tony's actions that have sent him off the rails, not your mum's phone calls. This has been coming ever since he found out what his dad did. I'll get you another bottle. Oh, I'm all right, lovey. There you go. You don't need a visa if it's less than 30 days. Todd, I said I'm fine. Hello. Sure. Is this a bit much? 
It is, it's too much. Liz said she wanted bright, but tasteful. I take it Todd hasn't called you then. Mind you, in her world, that probably means all the bar staff in Fuchsia Bath. Jason's had an accident. An accident? What sort of accident? We're still trying to find out, but Eileen wanted you to know. Now, I'm going to get back to her, cos she is up the wall. Oh, and just when she needs him, Todd decides he'd rather be at a funeral. I'll go and fetch him. Or at least hurry him back. I mean, it's not what he can do for Kylie now, is there? He's probably not thinking straight. Thanks. Okay. I know it's hard, love. I'm trying to look at things this way. Whatever's going on out there is what it is. It makes no difference whether you're sat here fearing the worst, hoping for the best. Got a bad feeling, Pat. But you could be wrong. Try to stop giving yourself a hard time, love. Just wish Todd had booked the flights. I don't want to be wrong. Sean's going to hurry him up. Sean has? Yeah. But Todd's probably gone to see Billy. Yes. Well, Sean doesn't know. Know what? That Todd and Billy are seeing each other. If Sean figures this out, this is all we need on top of everything else. Oh. Right, it's all booked. OK, if that's what you've got to do, love. It could be half dead in some foreign hospital. Of course, it's what I've got to do, Pat. I know, I know. OK. Sorry, I don't want to stop. I just want to... Sean! How could he do this to me? I turn up at church, only to find Billy and Todd together. Together, together, a couple. And I've never felt more stupid. Or overlooked. Or laughed at. Eileen's got troubles of her own, you know. Pat. Oh, Jason, Eileen, I'm so sorry. Oh, it's fine. I could do with thinking about something else. You, you, you go on, love. Oh, I don't know. I just thought he'd turn up one night and he'd say he'd made a huge mistake and, and we'd get our happy ending. But all the while, he was with Todd. Come here. And I bet I was the last to know. <laughs> Same old silly Sean. Everyone's jokes. Don't be silly. <laughs> we can't believe it either. Should be me waiting on you. But you're dying to get on that plane, aren't you? Listen, a tough lad like Jason, you'll probably find him chatting up all the Thai nurses. What a day. I'm sure Todd will know better than to come back here tonight. He'll probably stay at Billy's. I'm gonna go for a walk. Want me to come with you? I'm fine, Eileen. And I'm sorry. What for? For being too weak to be a better friend. Sure. I'll see you in a bit. This is going to be awkward, isn't it? Between them two. Hey? John's going to have to look at Todd over his conflicts every morning, no one who's diddling his fella. <laughs> Only it's not his fella anymore. Hmm. Not since Todd got his hands on him. I'm sure that Billy had a hand in the matter. All right, I'm confused now. Is it going to be awkward or not? Yeah, probably is. It's going to be a living hell. I preferred awkward. Well, what am I going to do? I'm just going to have to hope that Todd's going to be respectful. <laughs> what? Well, you said it yourself. Todd's poisonous. I have never said that about either of them. And if I did, they are my sons. It's no place for you to comment. I wouldn't have to about Jason. He's as good as gold. Todd only... That around. is enough. I know exactly what Todd has done. That is enough, Pat. I want you to go. OK. He said that Todd was poisonous. That's my son he's talking about. Pat doesn't like Todd because he knows he sees through him. To what? Pat's all bark and no bite. Oh, Eileen. You're usually such a perceptive woman, but where this man's concerned... Oh, Michael, you're not still jealous, are you? No, I... D Hi. 
Eileen. The cheapest of cheap apologies. I was out of order. I'm just upset about Jason, too. And I'm really, really sorry. Michael, do you mind? This is a private conversation. Any news? You do. You turn on people. I just don't suffer fools. Especially those who are taking advantage of people I care about. I mean, I know Todd's your son, but still... Michael says it's because he can see through you. I probably can. I'm pretty easy to read. I can't read you. I'd be daft. What? Sometimes I look at you and I don't know what's going on in your head. It's deliberate. Why? Because I'm not good at expressing my feelings. Don't give me that. It's true. I'd rather you can't see what I'm thinking when I look at you. Which is what? It might be the hospital. Hello? Jace. Two broken ribs, bruised jaw. But he's okay. Fell off the wall. You <laughs> stupid flaming idiot! Don't ever do that to me again. No, of course I'm still coming out. Yeah, you too. But next time, don't wait until you nearly die before you call your mother. All right? Right. Love you. Bye. Oh. And I love you. Unless you don't feel the same way, in which case, I completely retract it. Look, if I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. The man's a pillock. You're best off rid of him. Trust me, you can do a lot better than Brian. Are they split up? Must be something in the air. Look, I've got to go, love. Um, just give him hell. All right, yeah, of course. I'll, I'll give you love to Chase. Right. I love you. Seems like everyone's getting their heart broken. She needs to get rid of him. The man's an idiot. Right, all I have to do is this online checking in and that's me sorted. Wish I was coming with you. Hmm. you give Jason a big hug from me. Of course I will. That'll be fine. Made the tough stuff out, Jace. If anybody can go in. Why don't you have mine? What? Well, you're probably going to take it anyway, aren't you, so... Sean, can we not do this? I'm not doing anything. I'm just merely pointing out the fact that you just take whatever you want anyway, don't you? Whether that's bacon or boyfriends. So, you don't care who you trample over to get it either. Right, stop it! Jason is in some Thai hospital and all you can do is bicker like a pair of kids. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. I'll uh, go to Roy's for a butty. Sean, I am sorry. Aren't you going to be late? It's a loo day. <clears throat> Liz has asked me to do an extra shift, though, you know, what with Michelle and Steve off in Ireland baby making. So it seems that I'll be serving pints with a smile. Let's see if I can try and spend the day without thinking about Bill. Oh, enough with the wallowing. It's fine. No, love, I'm sorry, it's not fine. She's got Jason to worry about, you know. Yes, I know. Well, it doesn't seem like. She's not your real mother. You're a grown man. Have some respect. <clears throat> Matt! Long time no see. How are you? I'm good, lad. How are you? Good. Great, actually. You still reckon it in your developments? It's no wonder. That's a shame. Why's that? The reason I tracked you down, I was hoping I was going to get lucky. Oh, you know I'm not that way inclined, Vinny. I got a developing job. Yeah? Old building, disused. It's perfect to do up into posh little flats and sell on for a tidy profit to posh little punters. But you just said you were snowed under, so... Whoa, 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 whoa. The snow might be thawing. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Well, you better move quick. Other people interested. Yeah, but nobody quite like me, eh, Vinny? 
Looking at this place, though. You sure you got a cash to invest? I'm just looking after this for a mate. Don't you worry about the money. Oh, come on, what is it? Oh, hey. Just what I need. You some pork scratches there as oh, well. I haven't been able to eat. Hey, Jason's fine. Oh, he's not fine, is he? I'll feel better when I can get over there and look after him. Love? Maybe you should stop trying to look after everybody else. What do you mean? Well, I mean, these boys need to stand on their own two feet. Jason left you in charge of his business, his finances. Shouldn't we just focus on that? Not when I'm worried that he's going to drink himself to death, no. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry, look. I was just thinking practically. I hate to think of him so far away. I feel useless. Listen, love, there was something I wanted to talk to you about. Oh, that sounds ominous. <laughs> so, this is great. It's a business proposition. Okay. An opportunity. Mm -hmm. I found the perfect investment for Jason's money. Oh, have you now? It fell right into my lap. It's a big development, and it's a dead set to triple that 80 grand. It's 65. 65 what? The money. I put 15 grand into an ISA, Sean's idea. Huh? Oh, the ISA, yeah. Well, I was looking into savings for Dylan, you know. I figured that he might let me live in his big mansion when I'm older, now that I'm going to be alone forever. So, I mean, 65 still a reasonable sum to invest in. Oh, to be honest, I don't give a monkeys about the money or investing. Jason needs me. That's all I care about. Love, did you not hear me say oh, a dead set? Did you not hear me say I don't give a monkeys? Just give it a rest. <sighs> Sound of frustration, that, you know. Thanks for coming, Benny. Twice in one day. It's a treat. You got the money already? That's going to take a little longer than I expected. If you haven't got the cash, plenty of people have. Hold on. I've got the cash. It just take me a bit more time to actually get my hands on it, that's all. Oi! You going to buy a drink? Or are you just here for the ambiance? You'll have a pint. Right, well, I don't do table service. It's not the ivy. I'm not stopping anywhere, mate, so don't worry your little head about it. So am I wasting my time here or what? Definitely not. Now, let's talk logistics. Oh, well, they don't matter. Hey? Eh? How long have you known me? These flats, they're not actually going to happen. You lost me. You see, we build the little models and we show everybody what the development's going to look like when it's finished. Then we take the deposits. Non-refundable deposits. Is there any other kind? It's a perfect car. You just get me that cash pattern. How are you doing, Sean? I'm still at stage two. Stage two? Anger. I think I must have skipped stage one and gone straight to two. Yeah, I don't blame you. I mean, I would struggle being under the same roof as a man who'd nicked my missus. I don't know how you do it. Well, it's Eileen's son, isn't it? What else can I do? Well, they shouldn't be flaunting it the way they are, neither. Right under your nose. No, they shouldn't. And him staying over last night is like the cherry on the cake. I mean, it's like they're purposely trying to hurt you. Last night? Yeah. I'm sure I heard him leave first thing this morning. I just can't believe how brazen they're being about it. I mean, it's one thing breaking my heart, but now they're just trampling all over it. <clears throat> I'm at stage three. Three? Absolutely pigging, fuming. Ali, I've got a problem, I think. Look, we always knew he was going to be upset. He's not the most forgiving of people, is he? Hmm. I've not noticed. No, I know things are a nightmare at the moment, but... Sean, calm down. Mm. 
And it's worth it, isn't it? Mm. You know it is. <clears throat> Tracy said that you'd left early. And here you are. Yeah, here I am. So? Look at you two. Canoodling in my house. I think I'm fine. It's my house and all. Actually, it's Arlene's house. I know all about your sordid night together. <laughs> sordid? I wish. Look, I, I know you're upset and we're sorry, but you need to accept that we're together. That's what you think. But actually, it all depends on when he gets bored. Do you not know that about him? He enjoys hurting people. That's, um, that's, that's not true. No? He's never done anything hurtful towards you. Everyone's getting a little bit worked up. No, hang on. Right, Mum, if, if you're going to pick a side, you just tell me now. Picking anybody's side? Well, you should be picking a side. The side of goodness and rightness. Sh Sean, despite what you might think, I didn't set out to hurt you. Neither of us did. Have you heard the pair of you? We've all seen your true colours and they're garish. So you're just not going to let us be happy? Why should I? Don't know. Maturity? Maturity? You're like my brother, Todd. And you have stolen the love of my life. I can't be under the same roof. So you're gonna have to make a choice, Eileen. Either me or him. Let's all talk about this like adults. What, so now I'm being childish? No, no, love, that's not what I'm... I can't stay here with him. Sean, I never cheated, I never lied. You've never spent a day in your life without doing one or the other. Sean, if you're gonna get angry with someone, then get angry with me. Look, breaking up, it's never easy, love. Eileen, I've been betrayed. What am I supposed to do now? Just turn the other cheek? Let bygones be bygones? Listen to these two through the walls and say, say la vie? No. It's him or me, and it's your choice. I see. Blood's thicker than water, I suppose. So it seems. Oh, please come back. Let him go, then. I could cheerfully kill the pair of you. I really could. Sean, listen to me. Just uh, let him get through the door, eh, love? OK, you've got to know that the last thing I wanted to do was to hurt you. And yet you did. Did you seriously think I wasn't going to find out? No, of course not. But, Sean, we were going to tell you. Eventually. I mean, would you prefer it if we'd have rubbed your nose in it right from the start? Well, at least that would have been honest. And at least I wouldn't have looked such a... Look... The most important thing is how we move past this. I mean, you said they should have told Sean at the beginning, didn't you, love? What? You knew and never told me. Well, it wouldn't have been right coming from me, love. It wouldn't have been right? Five minutes ago, you were telling me I was like family. Like a son. <laughs> Just not a real one. Sean. <laughs> he lied to me. I get that. But you... I find it really hard to trust people. I always have. And now I know. Yeah, well, you know what? Life isn't fair. It seems. I'll pack my stuff. Sure, go back my way. I'm really sorry, love. I thought after your little chat that it was... Sure, don't go like this. You're clearly upset. Upset? That doesn't even scratch the surface. Sean, Arlene's right. I know you're feeling betrayed. Yes, I am. Sean, if it helps, I'll go. Th this is your home. Not anymore. Oh, please, 
And when you find my Bette Midler doll, could you bring her back to the factory, please? She's dressed as a mermaid. Tell her to let her go. Mum, I'm really sorry. Just don't. Listen, love, I hate to say this, but I actually think Sean's made the right decision. I mean, be fair, it would have been really difficult for him to be here with Todd and Billy, you know? I should have told him. You have nothing, absolutely nothing to blame yourself for. I don't think Sean sees it that way. You mark my words, moving out will be the making of him. He's a grown man, Eileen. Well, in my opinion, it'd be a good idea to... I'll put the kettle on, eh? Make us a bit of tea. Yeah, I need to finish packing first. I've treated me and Joyce to a new cosy, you know, the one he's up and around. Nice. Oh, that should help with the worry. Hey, you're always thinking about other people, so... Try and not make things worse while I'm away. Yeah, yeah, blame Todd. It's like, whatever happens, that's your default position, isn't it? Don't you worry. You go and enjoy your time with Jason. I'll hold the fort here. And I promise I'll have a look at that development proposal when I'm on the plane. Well, only if you're not too busy, you know, watching back-to-back -back movies and drinking free vodka. <laughs> 65 grand's a lot of money. I want to know what I'm investing in. Well, what Jason's investing in. Of course you do. I'll put that kettle on there while you get yourself sorted. Are you sure you don't want me to come to the airport? And eat into my duty-free time. Give my love to Jason. You remember Jason? You know the reason why you're going on holiday? Don't start. Right, I'm off. OK, I'll see you to the No, camp. no, no, I don't like goodbyes. Right, bye. Mm. And you, remember what I said. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Call me as soon as you get there. Bye. Bye. See you, Mum. Have fun. The thing about my mother is, she's a bit like a crocodile. Hard as nails on the outside, soft as anything on the inside. She's a wonderful woman, your mum. Yeah, she is. But one who's been used to her love life being turned into a cruel joke, you know, to protect the uh, soft inside bits. There's something you want to say? Then you come along. And you're cleverer than you look, and you think, ah, this is a woman who's susceptible to a bit of flattery. You convince her she doesn't need Michael, but you know, you know, she doesn't want to be on her own. Well, who does? Well, not sure, that's for sure, eh? That's right. <laughs> You're doing, not mine. I know you. Oh? Huh? Yeah, I know you. I know how you think. You knew how Sean was going to react. You saw the touch paper and he lit the match. It's almost as if you wanted him to leave. Isn't that funny? He's a middle-aged man living in digs. He's a bit like you. No. No, I'm nothing like Sean. Because you push me, I push back. Especially if my brother stands to lose all his money. Do you hear me? Let battle commence. Jason, I don't need to know anything about it, right? Any investment that involves Pat feeling is a bad investment. Yeah, well, I see him every day. I think I know him better than you do. Yes, yes, I know it's your money. I'm trying to stop you from throwing it away. Jason. Jace. So it's not sorted. Plan of permission. You know how difficult it is. Yeah, but I'll plan of permission. The scam falls flat on its backside. Well, that's why I was hoping some of your expertise might help us out. Well, I haven't had many projects going through planning recently. And I've still got a few contacts, so I can make a call. And a few arms behind the backs. Please. You've got to play politicians, not gangsters. You leave it with me. And you, brush up on your power to persuasion, eh? 
It's a residential development project, and my friend Vinny is very keen for it to be something that benefits the local community. So, he wants to be sure he fully understands the planning department's current priorities. Well, I could have a chat with your friend and give him some advice. That'd be great. And what about you? Me? Well, what's your interest in this development? You don't miss a trick, do you, Councillor? <laughs> when Jason left, after his father died, I promised him I'd keep the business going. Fact is, it turns out to be easier said than done. There's not that much work about. So if this project went ahead, then I stand to get some of the work. I mean, fingers crossed. Well, I'll talk to this friend of yours, but after that, it's in the hands of the committee and my fellow panel members. Can't say further than that, thank you. Well, give me the details and I'll uh, check my diary. <laughs> it's your office. Uh, well, it will be, once Tim's put it together. Mind you, the speed he's going, I could be campaigning for a re-election before he gets round to it. I've got a spare half an hour. Would you like me to do it? Well, that'd be brilliant. Can I use Tim's tools? Yeah, help yourself. I swear half of them never been used. Vinny, it's me. Good news. Councillor Metcalf's on our side. I guarantee it. Yeah, I know she's only one, but by all accounts, she has a lot of clout on that committee. Well, yeah, exactly. Anything about these uh, developers? Yeah, they talk about affordable housing. Yeah, given the planning, and suddenly, oh no, no, that's a penthouse. Well, you don't mind selling it to a nurse as long as she's got half a million quid. Really? Yeah, and if there's a big outcry, the book stops with the council. Well, it would. Yeah, so if you're voting for something like this. Make sure whoever gets the planning has got no wiggle room. You know, the dodgy ones, they'll back off. Oh, and get them to submit an amendment. That way it's all in black and white, right? Exactly what they're agreeing to. Thank you, Todd. That was very interesting. Anytime. May I get you a drink, Councillor Metcalf? No, I'm fine, thanks. I was just talking to Todd about the development. He was very interesting. He's a florist. Yeah, well, he still has an opinion. And he used to work for a solicitor. I see. So, I think your plan for affordable housing is a good one, but I think we need to set that plan in stone, not just have it as a vague promise. Right. Anyway, it's not down to me. No. Excuse me. Affordable housing. Level six green rated. Level six. I'm a builder, not Bob Geldof. Don't sweat it. Don't sweat it. This wish list of hers will bankrupt us. I'm promising something and actually delivering it to two different things. Ah. Oh, play nice. Mm -hmm. Hey, Sally Metcalf. Vincent Ashford. Councillor Metcalf. Pleasure to meet you. The pleasure's all mine. Thank you for responding so quickly. Well, we just want to make this happen. Please. So that's a yes, then, to all my conditions. So much for small talk. Uh, maybe we should order first. No, I'm not saying we can't accommodate some of your requests. Well, I prefer to think of them as deal breakers. I think what Vinny's trying to say is that there has to be give and take on both sides. You would like to put the will to rights, and we would like to make some money. I mean, the rest are, well, are just details. Yeah, which is usually where you find the devil lurking. Council, am I beginning to detect a lack of trust? I just don't want you thinking you're dealing with a halfwit. A halfwit? Councillor, if you were any sharper, you would cut yourself. Now, of course, this whole conversation is academic, unless we get this project off the ground. <sighs> Well, you both know it would be grossly inappropriate of me to make any promises. First of all. However, between the three of us and the gatepost, my relationship with the planning committee chair is more than cordial. As long as we get a fair crack of the whip. So. Which is something I can guarantee. Great. And so would you. Face have been tripping you since you clocked on. All right, cheers. Pound to a penny, it's man trouble. 
Dad's been wondering if he comes in for a pint, are you going to give him the dregs from the drip tray? Tell your dad not to worry, it's your brother I blame. Knew it. Oh, it's conveniently gone off radar, by the way. Screening my calls. Oh, well, he's probably just not turned his mobile back on. Yeah, we have the phones off rule when we go to the grave. Life and soul tonight, eh, Mikey? The audience with Mikey Rodwell. Eva, say me again when you're ready, thanks. Life in the Palladium. Rodwell, arm flogged. Shame you didn't perform as well for Eileen. What was it she said now? Like sleeping with a dead rabbit. You're <laughs> <laughs> a sad man, Pat! Sad and twisted! Hey, 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 hey. Don't rise to it, mate. Right, guys, that's enough now, please. Eileen would not go in for pillow talk. Eileen is a lady. Uh, come on for a quiet Distant. drink. Some I wasn't have... imagining it, was I? Some people can Still holds a talk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, come on, don't be silly. It's all right, Eva, it's just handbags. I'll get these. It'd choke me. Well, that went well. I can feel it coming in the air tonight. Oh, Lord. Ah. Oh, it's you. Can I come in? Oh, you got your girlfriend coming round? Actually, I'm expecting Eileen back from Thailand. Yeah? I'm expecting 65 grand in my bank account. That's late and all. I've told you. You'll get the money. Now, I need to get my casserole on. Not today, please. Yes, today. Some of us have been working our fingers to the bone. And some of us have been taking a mick. This paperwork needs doing. I'm not doing it on my own. You've not got the money, have you? I told you. I get it. Where from? Because it looks to me like you're more interested in wooing your girl. Oh, is that it? It's not your money, is it? It's Eileen's. Well, if you think I'm hanging about waiting for you to woo your way to 65 grand, you've got another thing coming. If I think you're stringing me along, We'll never ever let you down. Yeah, well, there's plenty of blocks lined up to get on this job. I'll have it sorted by tonight, I promise. I'm not too sure I have that much confidence in your powers of seduction. Uh, 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 uh. Surprise! Box ticking, Pat. Don't let me down. Hey! You're back! How was the flight? It's fine. Who's this? This is Vincent. He's the main man on the building development. Oh. Vincent, this is my Eileen. <laughs> Pleased to meet you. Likewise. Right, better be off. Leave you two to uh, say hello properly. He's got a surprise for you in the oven. Oh, mm -hmm. has he now? <laughs> Call me, no problem. So, uh, what's in the oven? Beef casserole. Mmm. How's Jason? Oh, he's fine. Listen, have I got time for a quick bath before tea? Yeah. Yeah, no problem. Good. We can talk later. OK. So Jason's doing well, then? Mm, yeah, he'll soon be back to his old self. <laughs> did you speak to him about investing? Mm, yeah, I did. I did. Filled him in on all the details? Yeah. Did you show him the brochure? Mm. You're going to string this out as much as you can, aren't you? Do you know, I blame those reality shows. You can't get a simple result these days. They just string out this really long pause. They keep you waiting. Mm. And when they're just about to tell you, they cut to an ad break. Oh, it drives me mad. I can imagine. <laughs> oh, do you want to know what Jason said when I told him about the development? I do, please. He said... Go for it. Thinks it's a great idea. Yes. Yes. <laughs> did you enjoy that? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Mm. You're good. Matt and Zach have got nothing to worry about, but you're good. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, Mum. <laughs> <Wow. laughs> Cheers. Oh, 
Wasn't expecting homework. Well, you're in the Premier League now, Ireland. Strictly speaking, Jason will be. As Jason's proxy, that's the latest draft of the paperwork, bigging up the affordable housing angle. If it keeps the planners happy and you and Jason happy, which reminds me. Councillor Metcalf, can I grab ten minutes of your time, please, to talk about the Calcutta Street development? Oh, Pat, if only I had ten minutes. You've barely got time for me, and I'm her husband. Look at you. Boss? What? Heading round? Yeah, yeah, I'm coming. Oh, that's another little bonus of where we work. I'm not your boss, and you're not mine. Music to me is. He's a tyrant. <laughs> I spy a window. Ah, uh, yeah, and that's called lunch. Well, I'll buy you a butter. Might even stretch it to a drink. And if you smile nicely, I will drive you to that two o'clock. Oh. Bingo. <laughs> Great. OK, got to shoot, guys. Thanks. <sighs> Put in my hands. Good job. Because we don't get planning from her lot. It's my land and Jason's investment down at Swanee. Relax. Ladies love a rough diamond. Well, I'm, I'm glad the guarantees are in place. I'm guessing that you didn't write this. These are Vinny's words. He swallowed. Thank you. He swallowed a dictionary that far. Anyway, what, what do you think? Well, I like the changes. I mean, offering 10% of the apartments for affordable housing. That's a great initiative. Our little shout out to you, Councillor. Oh. Meanwhile, I can guarantee that this is the driest light in the house. And before you ask, you've read these as my counselor, but you'll be drinking this as my neighbor. So I want you to relax. I've been in this game a long time. Well, given the concessions you've made, I am very happy to support this. And I'm sure most people on the committee will feel exactly the same. We care about local people. Let's see how you look at this, <laughs> He's uh, getting his phone fixed so interrupts at your peril. Oh, Sally! Please, come in, sit down. No, look, I, I won't keep you. It's just some very important information has come to light on the Calcutta Street project. Okay. I'm not saying I'm withdrawing my support. Not per se, but it seems this development is going to hit the community hard. With new homes? <laughs> at a affordable prices. Well, with the loss of a focal point, I mean, that is a hugely popular meeting place. And I was elected on a ticket of the community for the community. I need to go away and do some long, hard thinking. We already knew the place was being used by, you know, some clubs. But surely a housing development is much more important. Well, not if the people using the existing building are affected. Look, I'm just saying that you can't take my support for granted. Even then, I'm just one committee member. Mm. Well, thank you for keeping us in the loop, Councillor. I appreciate it. Pleasure. Well, I didn't like the sound of any of that. She's clearly not keen. Well, she's just a councillor, isn't she? So she's got to appear non-committal. She's completely gone off the idea. No. Yeah. Well, look, he hadn't transferred any of the money yet. No, 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 love. You still need to transfer the money. This is just a minor glitch. I'm not stumping up thousands of pounds worth of Jason's money when we might not even get planning permission. We will get planning. I guarantee it. Maybe I should bring Jason. No, don't do anything daft. I will take care of this. Fine, just let me know if there's anything I can do. OK. See you later. Hello, mate. It's Alex, isn't it? How are you doing? Not bad, thanks. Do you know, I've just been hearing about your film club down on Calcutta Street. I love it. I go every week. Well, I'm a bit of a film buff myself. Maybe I should get down there. Do you get a, do you get a lot of people going there? Lots. You got all the proper gear, you know, the projectors and big comfy chairs and that? No, just plastic bucket seats. Must be freezing in the winter, though, eh? Cos there's no heating down there, is there? We don't care. We love it. No, oh, I'm sure you do. Listen, Alex, do you fancy a pint? Cos I would love to pick your brains about something. OK. Come on. What do you reckon, Alex? Not bad. I fancy a penthouse. <laughs> That's a little out of your league, sunshine. 
go. I don't know. You live with your aunt Kathy at the moment, don't you? Yeah, but I would like to get a place of my own eventually. You, young Alex, have just given me a brilliant idea. Another pint? Yes, please. Sorry to disturb you, Eva. Sally, it's Pat. Oh. I just need five minutes of your time. Well, can't it wait? I'm really sorry. I'm just so fired up. Go on, then. Come on through, Alex. I've been speaking to Alex here. Don't trust him, Alex. Tim, pipe down. This is council business. It's about these clubs. Now, I think I've found somewhere that we can rehouse them. Somewhere that's much better than where they are now. And for the same price. But then me and Alex got to talking. We hit upon this idea. Would you like to say, Alex? No, you say it. OK. I've been hands off so far as the planning goes. I'm more about... Well, I'm more about people than I am about buildings, so... Right. Now, I really want this development to be special. And not just in terms of affordability. I want a few of these flats to be specifically adapted for people like Alex. Go on. OK, so I'm thinking five flats on the ground floor for easier accessibility. And you can wire the doorways to accommodate the wheelchairs and emergency alarms in all of them. Is that something you think you and your colleagues could support? Well, it's interesting. It's very interesting. In fact, I think it's a great idea. Thank you. Well done, Alex. <laughs> Mr. Connor dock their overtime. And of course, you can hardly blame him. Well, I think it's petty. Are you being argumentative again? No, I'm serious. Of course, they're only your friends and neighbours. Who cares if they get exploited and ripped up? <sighs> this is not the time or the place. Well, you're finding your new busy mate might hear you. Hey, I'm only doing my job. No, your job is to serve your community. That's not fair, Tim. I'm not the enemy. No, no, you're not. He is. I just wish that you'd see it. Mm. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, Alex. Can I ask a question about the flat? Far away. Can we choose our own colour scheme? Yeah, as far as I know, it's standard magnolia on all the walls and white on all the woodwork. OK. Well, I think we can make an exception in your case, Alex. Thanks, Pat. All parts of the service. Right, the bank said bring support and paperwork. And I'm guessing they don't want everything in triple good. Better safe than sorry. It sounds like I've never made such a large bank transfer before. Don't sweat it, all. You're not having second thoughts, are you? Of course not. But? It's just a lot of money which we are going to double, maybe even triple. If it all goes to plan. There's no if about it. <sighs> Just worried that we're rushing in. Well, I prefer to see it striking while the iron's hot. Listen up. If you've lost faith in the project... Of course I haven't. Just ignore me. I'm just having a moment. So we're good to go? Yeah. No doubts? None whatsoever. That's my girl. <laughs> Afternoon. Afternoon. Small world. Yeah. Wouldn't want to paint it, though, eh? Tough crowd. Eileen not back from the bank yet? No, she's running late. Bank? Yeah, she's transferring Jason's money today. Right, well, uh, she didn't tell me. Hope I haven't put my foot in it. Oh, spare me. Todd, I know you've got your misgivings. But trust me. This is an amazing opportunity. The only thing amazing about this is my mum's gullibility. And as for trusting you, well... I'm sorry you feel that way, Todd. I really am. Mm. I just hope that one day you'll realise I've only got your family's best interests at heart. I really do. One day. That guy's slipperier than the grease that used car salesman. Yet my mum still worships the ground he walks on. Yeah, she's not the only one, mate. Not the only one. Come back to bed. Half past eight. I'm never staying 
bed past eight on a weekday, only when I'm on nights. Anyway, shouldn't you be working? Mm. Vinny's not in till 11. Anyway, mm. I'll choose when I go in. Mm. Mm. When our company's listed on the FTSE 100, we can stay in bed all day. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, we got the house to ourselves. What are you doing here? I thought you were on some romantic getaway. What? I need water. <laughs> Didn't get chucked out of the hotel, did you? You what's your opinion? I'm just showing an interest. You what? I said I'm just showing an interest. Keep your beak out. I'm going to go and get dressed. There was no need for that. He swines me up, that's all. So... What's gone on with you and Billy? We had a row, just a stupid row. I mean, give me a perfect romantic setting, like a nice hotel, fine wine. What do I do? Mess it up. Where is he now? I don't know. Probably gone off and found somebody else. You know what? Serves me right. As I said, we haven't even got the planning. Look, if we get it, I'll be on the blower. I've got to go. Bye. What do you mean, if? It's when we get the planner. That was the architect. He's angling for us to put him in charge of the building work. Oh, <laughs> right. Probably start hustling you next, so I'll keep him sweet. <laughs> what do you think I'm going to do? Tell him we're going to do a run with the reservation fees? If he phones you, kill the call. Grab some bathroom and kitchen brushes earlier. You know, just for sure. Got to make it look legit. Only me. Hello, love. I thought I'd come and check Jason's investment, and I'm sorry about Todd earlier. Oh, water off the docks. Mm. Oh, this letter arrived for the pair of you. It's not very professional. Don't you think we should have a company name? Does you have in mind, love? Oh, don't know. Um, VPJ after the three investors. Jason's a sleeping partner in a hammock under a palm tree. What Vinny means to say is we don't want to have to contact him over every little decision. I mean, we ask you. But it's a good idea, love. We'll we'll think about a name. What's all this? Bathroom catalogues. For the flats? Yeah, only the very best. Take them all, have a look if you like, love. Mmm. Whirlpool. Overrated. Had one for years. I mean, these are like optional extras. They're not going in every flat. Which ones are going in? And we were just thinking about that now. Oh, well, when it comes to drooling over bathrooms I can't afford. Plus, you need... A woman's point of view. Well, I've looked at about 30, and I've ringed the ones that I like. And the most expensive, no doubt. I'm just floating ideas. Hey, wouldn't it be a good idea if all the flats were different? That way they'd all stand out. It's a good idea. Thanks, Eileen. Yeah. Enjoy being useful today. I'd like to get more hands-on. Yeah, we know what we're doing. Yeah, we really appreciate your input. Just most of the things we do are tedious, technical. Browsing through brochures. How hard can it be? Last thing we need is her sniffing about every day. Don't worry, I can deal with Eileen. You better add. Or I will. Enjoy! I will, thank you. What would you like? Can I get the kebab? Let's put the smile back on her face. Now, that pat is the power of the badge. The power of the badge? Mm. Listen, you want to motivate your workforce, give them a meaningless promotion and a badge. So she's not actually assistant manager? No, well, she is, yeah. But listen, there's only her in Chesney. <laughs> there, she's turning up late. How is that? She's been rude to the Panthers, been even ruder to me, but the minute I give her a promotion, bingo, she's like a different girl. Right, I've got to go. I only can't drop these off. We've got a meeting with the CEO. Yeah, who's that? Mary. <laughs> oh, and thanks again, love, for all your help today. Drooling over bathrooms, my pleasure. You've got a real eye for it, you know. Finney was saying the same after you left. We were wondering, how would you feel about being our concepts executive? What the heck is that when it's at home? Well, we want to... We want to select a few flats to be unique, like you said. And obviously, you couldn't do a job like that sat at home looking through catalogues. You actually have to visit the design shows, but... Oh, don't you need someone professional? 
Honey, don't you put yourself down. I know it's a big ask. But me and Vinny, we think you're up to it. Really? Time to step out of the shadows, Ali and Grimshaw. Hiya. All right. Well, nice to see you. A bit happier than you were this morning. Yeah, not even your ugly mug can change that. Todd. Listen, if we're going to go out to the pub, I'm going to jump in the shower. So who or what has put the smile back on your face? Um, it's Billy. You know, I was wrong, I apologised, and um, it's all sorted, so... Oh, praise the Lord. Miracles do happen. <laughs> you seem pretty happy about something. Pat has asked me to be the concepts executive for the company. Concepts executive? What kind of a stupid job title is that? Why can't you just say, well done, Mum, I'm thrilled for you? No, not you, Todd, because you can't bear me being happy. Mum, OK, right, listen to me. He is fobbing you off. I mean, you might as well call yourself a transportation czar when you're on the switch or Tim's chief biscuit dunker. No, it's I've all... had enough of you sniping and sneering Mom, at me. I'm trying to protect you and Jason. Jason's going to make a lot of money if this development goes ahead. Mum, do you know, Pat, he's gone bankrupt. Even if we were skint? I'd still be happy. Do you know why, Todd? Because Pat respects me. Pat listens to me. Pat makes me believe that I can do something with my life. Mom, Pat is just trying to tell you what you want to hear. For God's sake, that open is your enough. eyes! I am sick of the way you talk to me. I am sick of the way you talk to him. So if you can't keep a civil tongue in your head, then maybe you should go and live elsewhere. This is the sort we should be targeting. Young people. In love, not too bright. Well, no. These old biddies might have a nice little pension stashed away somewhere. Eh? Hey? Stop checking your phone. You put me on edge. So you should be. There's a lot hanging on this. Thanks. Sam. We'll answer it then. Hello. Speaking. I see. OK. Right. Well, thanks for letting me know. What did they say? The man from Del Monte. He said, yeah. Oh, I don't believe it, yes. we did it. Yes, looks like we did. <laughs> oh! Hey. Ali, come here, you. Oh! Oh! <laughs> I don't believe it. Oh. You better get your shears ready. Time to do some fleecing. <laughs> you enjoy. Thank you, Liz. Hey, Eileen, you need to get some roller skates. Serve on shoe leather. It's the bubbly. It goes straight to me. Well, not to my head. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, it's good to see you happy. You deserve it. I wish someone else felt the same. <laughs> we'll take it. Uh, you got permission? Looks like it. Can I buy you a drink? No, it's all. Get me on. Uh, pint, please, Liz. Hiya, do you want a drink? No, why does I want to keep buying me drinks? I don't know, maybe it's your delightful company. Sorry, I've, uh, I've got a lot on my mind. Now, one final toast. You said that last time. Oh, well. OK, here's to you, to me, and last, but by no means least, our gorgeous and brilliant Concepts executive. Hey. <laughs> now, speaking of designers, were you supposed to be giving the architect a call? Mm. Giving the good news? Do you know what? I'll do that from home. It's a bit quieter there. Excuse hey. me, love. Tell him I'm looking forward to working with him. I will. I'll be sure to pass that on. There you go. Sorry, Liz, you just, um, put that behind the bar. It's just some of, uh, Something I've got to do. What was that about? Don't ask me. So, like I say, I am sorry, but we're going to have to let you go. Yeah, I appreciate that. Well, and hopefully, we can work together in the future sometime. Yeah. OK, bye. Bye. In the next life. Something tells me that was the architect. What do you think you're doing sneaking around here? Here, Wigan. Oh, Pat, this is my mum's house. I don't care yours. whose house it is. What do you think you're playing at? <laughs> All right. Keep your hair on, outraged to Weatherfield. Anyway, 
I think you're the one who needs to answer a few questions. You don't know what you're talking about. Oh, really? No. Just like I don't know anything about poncing around with begonias. Maybe you should keep your nose out of my business. See, though, it's not just your business, though, is it? It's my mum's and Jason's and all. See, why don't you just explain to me what that phone call was all I've about? I've already told you. OK, well, look, maybe I'm just a bit thick. Maybe you should just, you know, no, just, just, just try me again, Pat. Come on. OK, I've told you. Mm. It's normal practice to change the architect at this stage of the project. Now are you happy? No, no not really, because that's not what you told my mum, is it? I mean, I heard you. Why didn't you tell her you were going to sack him? Why did you lie to her? You're really getting on my nerves, kid. Do you want to know what I think? Not particularly, no. You see, before I was poncing about with begonias, I worked in a solicitor's office. So? So. Right, we worked on this case where these lying, thieving lowlifes were ripping people off by selling them holiday villas. The thing is, they didn't exist. It was just, it was just a big scam. I mean, these guys were making hundreds of thousands before they were caught and locked up, that is. As fascinating as that little story was, I don't see what it's got to do with me. Oh, really? Now he's being thick. Coronation Street is back in half an hour. Paranoid, delusional, seeing things that aren't there. You can get pills for that, you know? You can say what you like. I know it's a scam. I mean, look at you, struggling to come up with an excuse. Hang on a minute. Let's just get this straight. You used to work in a solicitor's office, mm -hmm. making the tea. No, no, I was a clerk. Oh, and that qualifies you to spot a scam. When well, you, you see, I can one. see when somebody's lying, Pat. Can you? Yeah. You sure? Because if you accused me of trying to rip your family off before, remember what happened last time. You couldn't have been more wrong. OK, well, I best get a second opinion. I'm just going to go to the Rovers, you know, just have a quick chat with me mum. You've gone to your mummy twice before, she's never believed you. Your poker face needs a bit of work, mate. I can see the fear in your eyes. Vinny, we're in trouble, mate. There's something I need you to do. Now. <laughs> yeah. OK. Yeah, I get it. That was Pat. Well, where is he? Cos we've got lots of celebrating to do. Oh, he's been plotting. He's got a nice big surprise for you. Mm -hmm. My day just gets better and better. Come on, we've got to go now. Let's just finish this first. Well, check it with you. Just get me card. Oh, sorry. Oh! Is it on there? <sighs> Such a clumsy off. Give us it here. Right. No, come on, I'll take it to this bloke and I'll get it fixed for you. Well, when the cash comes rolling, I'm just going to get myself a blingtastic one. You do that. Mm -hmm. Come on, cars around the back. Come on. Liz, have you, uh, have you seen me, Mum? Hey, it's all been kicking off. Apparently, Beth has been arrested for being a bigamist. What? Two fellas on the go. I can't even get one. Where's my mum? This is the juiciest gossip we've had in ages. And is that all you can say? It's not really that. I haven't seen her. Uh, I think she might be in the loop. Right. Liz, I'm just going to go and check, yeah? Uh, hang on. Is he going in the latest? No, it's all right. He's gay. Well, gay or not, at least try to hang on to some feminine mystique. It's not in there. Oh, try the backyard. Where is she? What's wrong? I need to speak to her urgently. Why? I can't get into it now, but I've tried to phone and it's switched off. She never switches her phone off. I'll tell you what, if anything's happened to her, I swear. Why would anything have happened to her? Like what? If you see her, you just call me, all right? There you go, my lady. Thanks, Vinny. There she is. When Billy said you were planning a surprise, I was picturing a swanky restaurant. We've got plenty of time for all of that. I thought it was about time you saw the site. Is this it? Wow. Hang around in case I need a hand today. It's 
It's a lot bigger than I imagined. Yeah. And it's gonna make us a fortune. I can't believe it. It's amazing. Let's go up. Look at our empire. Well, there you go. These old buildings can be a death trap. You know, if you wanted me to do a workout, I could have got me Cindy Crawford tape, so... Look at you. Queen of all you survey. In the coming months, this whole place is going to be buzzing. All the different trades doing their thing. Creating great new homes for local people. And all because you gave me a chance. You've done a great thing, Eileen. We've done a great thing. Together. Mm. Come on. No, no, I'm not good with heights. Hey, you're no, safe honestly, with me. My legs will go to jelly. Trust me. You do trust me, don't you? Ooh. And I know we're in this to make some money, love. That's not the only reason, is it? You. And me, I'm going to leave this world a better place than we found it. And it grieves me that some people just can't see that. Take the notice of the naysayers. I mean, we're going to show them. Well, I'm loving the fighting spirit, girl, but easier said than done when it's so close to home. You talking about Todd by any chance? Why he's just so down on the whole project. I don't want him to spoil it for you to be the brains of the family. Jason was the brawn. Where does that leave you? I was the one who did the donkey work. <laughs> Not anymore. You're an investor, a player. I used to have such high hopes for Todd. I know he feels like a failure. And he's not going to like his boring old mother being successful. He's jealous. I never thought of that. I know he's my own, and I love him. I wouldn't trust him. Some of the things he said. For what it's worth, love, I think you're dead right. You know I said I had a surprise for you. Yeah. <laughs> it's not this. You're going to get your real surprise right now. All sorted. Like a dream. I'm sorry, love. You know me. Light on me feet. Checking you for a little drive. Where to? That'd be telling. It's just a little something extra laid on for you. You are full of surprises, you. You don't know the half of it, Petal. <laughs> Bye, love. Mum? She's had a better offer, I'm afraid. Where is she? Somewhere you can't get if to you've her. you've done anything to Oh, yeah, 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 you're gonna stamp your feet... What have you done with her? Bit. Chill out! Everything's hunky-dory. Just protecting her from you. you you, you got to be joking me, right? No! Your mum's got a fantastic future ahead of her. You're trying to wreck it with your big It's dog. a scam, Pat. None of it's real. All you need to know, she's out of harm's way. Give you a chance to cool down, have a proper think. Think, think, think about what? About the building project. I put a lot of time, effort, not to mention Jason's money into it. 
You're the only member of this family that's not going to benefit from this. You could be part of it. If you wanted. Just tell me where she is. Then we can talk. She's safe. That's all you need to know. Now, you be quiet. Try and focus. You might learn something. This is not like we're trying to take somebody for everything they've got. OK? It's a few grand here, a few grand there. We're spreading the load. In some ways, I'm doing them a favour. Yeah, yeah, right. I am. It's a valuable life lesson. Read the small print. Oh, it doesn't matter what the small print says. You're trying to sell people something that doesn't exist. You're gonna get caught. Mm -mm. Benny's done this before. He's got it down to a fine art. When the time comes, we split the money, OK? He does a runner. He gets the blame. We come up smelling the roses. You really think it's that simple? Todd, I love your mother. I can't stand to see her struggling, working her backside off pulling ten-hour shifts in that nasty little office and being paid a pins, you know? And you, what about you? You're gonna be poncing around in that flower shop for the rest of your days? A bright young lad like you? You're gonna have the world at his feet. Come on. Who's that? Uh, yeah, come in. Patrick Phelan? Yes? Can we ask you to accompany us to the police station? A couple of allegations have been made against you. It's down to you. He hates it when I cheat at Monopoly. <laughs> it's been alleged that you're planning to commit fraud. And we'd like your help to locate Eileen Grimshaw? Well, I hope it's not going to take long. Because I haven't had me tea yet. Offer still stands. Balls in your coat. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you know. You told me that already. Yes, thank you. Uh, yeah, cheers, mate. All right, ta. Yes, I know, but it's moved on since yesterday. Just listen to me, right? Pat Feeling is running a scam and he's going to screw people over. Yeah, yeah. Well? Police. Not interested. Got it wrong about my mum. They clearly think I'm some kind of wacko. You don't believe me either, do you? Well, I, I don't know what to think, but if they've looked into it... Do you know what he offered to cut me in? And the police aren't interested? Well, they won't even hear me out. You know, I've got no proof. And they'll just deny it. If you're sure it's a scam, you've got to do something. Yeah, I'll get him all right. It's just a question of how. Yeah, that's the one sold to the old boy at Levinsian. Then there's the other one to the young couple we were talking about. Call you back. Well, but isn't the boy Wonder turned in any jokers to the police lately? <laughs> I do hope you're not thinking of paying them any more visits. What are you worried, is it? Your word against mine, no proof. March card, though, innit? <laughs> oh, yeah. You tell them your mum's life's in danger, they find it in a luxury spa at my expense. The only cards that have been marked, Todd, are yours. Mm. You must wonder why I suspect about the development, though. They talk to crazy people every day. I've got no proof as of yet, but you know what? I'll work away till I get some. Excuse me. <laughs> you worried I'm wired? That offer I made you. Limited time only. I'll grab it while you can. You see, the police don't believe me. But my mum will. When is she back? She can't stay away forever. Do you know what? I'd get out now, before she reports you as well. And I would ask you to leave here before I report you for trespass. <laughs> In my own brother's office? Yes. <laughs> Finney, it's me again. That problem that we spoke about, it's not going to go away. Ah! 
you want something? I'm interested in buying one of your flats. Not today, kid. I'm busy. But I really want one. Alex, so sorry. Just having one of them days. <laughs> As it happens, you've come at a perfect time. Because you know the affordable housing ones? They're going really fast. Seriously? Seriously. We sold two just this morning. I think people are catching on to the fact that they're really good value. In fact, I'm starting to worry if we're selling them a bit too cheaply. But you've not put the price up. No, not yet. What I would say is, if you're serious, I would get a reservation fee down as soon as you can. How much will I need? Well, I know a good customer and I see one, so to you, 15. 15? Same place in Manchester, you know. You'd be talking 40, maybe 50. It's still too much. Oh. Maybe you could borrow it. A lot of people do that these days, you know. Maybe Roy's got a bit of spare cash floating about. I mean, it's a good investment, the way property is these days. Three or four years' time, it'll be worth twice as much. I'll see what he says. You do that, my mate. Thanks, Pat. You're welcome. I'm telling you, he's going to have to eat a lot of humble pie before I ever give him the time of day again. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Cathy. Yes, thanks, Cathy. Bye. See you. Bye, Audrey. Bye. Can I ask you something? I thought Pat Phelan. Oh, not again with his blessed flats. You can't afford it, Alex. I could if Roy lent me the money. Uh, out of the question, I'm afraid. Until those flats are finished and I could see what I was investing in. But they're selling fast. Who says? Pat Phelan? Yeah. Exactly. But I'll never have a flat of my own. Oh, well, you could always try asking your mother. About time she chucked a bit of money your way. Pointless even thinking about it. Why did you tell him? He's been sniffing around for months. He knows I'm up to something. So I thought the best way to neutralise him was to get him on side. And he called the police! Right blinder you've played. He was threatening to take things fair that I can't see what else I could have done. Run me for a start! Oh, yeah? When? When the police are quizzing me? Excuse me, officer. I'd just like to phone my accomplice, ask for a bit of advice. Besides, what would you have done? He's got no proof. Meanwhile, the police will be sticking their noses in everywhere. He told them Eileen's life is in danger. They find her up to her eyes in bubble bath and champagne. They're not going to believe another word he says. Right, so if it's not a problem, why did you call me? Because I thought you ought to know. We need to deal with him. Once and for all. Today. <laughs> Sean, have you, uh, have you seen me mum? Nope. Has Liz seen her? Well, I could find out, if you ask me nicely. Seen as it's you. I am popular. Todd, I think it's about time we had one of our little chats. That's not a hint of panic I detect in your voice, is it, Pat? I say the site, six o'clock. But the only person I want to talk to is my mum, all right? Yeah, well, let's just say it will be in all of our interests if you make it. Hairs included. Is that a... is that a threat? <laughs> I don't know where you get these strange ideas from. All I want to do is set our differences aside and all move forward. Of course, if that's not what you want, I'm just going to have to decide what's best on my own. Meaning what? Let's sort later, shall we? The answer's no. And then I can help with? Hmm. Charmed, I'm sure. Oh, new phone. Why do they have to keep changing everything? Nice perfume. Got it from the spa. I've just been at. Pat treated me. Oh, how lovely. Mm. Just got back, actually. Saw the kitchen sink and came straight here. Your Todd was in early. I'd ask him for you. Oh, don't spoil it for me just yet. Please, could you ask why again if he could lend me the money? I don't know, Alex. Pat. 
half not done anything wrong to us. Have you heard what he said, though? Is this about buying one of his flats? Yes. Right, well, Roy's obviously got his head screwed on the right way round. Well, you would say that. Uh, not just me. Todd as well. Oh, the same Todd who told the police that I was in danger while I was living it up in a spa. Really? Talk about a wild goose chase. I mean, he's my son and I love him, but good judge of character. Yeah, well, I say his instincts are sound. And uh, do you really think that Jason and I would invest all our money if we thought there was something dodgy going on? Each to their own. Look, it's none of my business, Cathy, but I'm involved in the project on a day-to-day -day basis now, and from where I'm standing, you can't lose. Thank you. Hello? No, I'm sorry, there's no Mr. Harrison here. This is somebody else's phone. You must have the wrong number. Sorry, what did you say your name was? No, no, you're quite right. Bye. Anna gone? Uh, yeah, she's just knocked off. Roy, um... I know that you've already said no, but you know this flat that Alex has been talking about? I've explained my position that isn't going to change. I'm sorry. But he's got his heart set on it. Well, it won't affect my judgment, I'm afraid, and I'm surprised it's affecting yours. It's not up to me what Alex does. I'm not his father, but I won't invest in something I don't believe in. <sighs> Might try a new system of vegetable rotation in here. The present one isn't working. No, you're right. It's not your responsibility. Will you be all right for a bit? Yeah, yes, I, I, sh I should think so. Uh, wh why? Uh, I'll not be long. Nessa, it's me. What time did you say? Six. And if he doesn't turn up, he'll be here. Do you always carry those things with you? They were not think of my neighbor. Is that your final answer? So you can walk out on your son and you can't even stump up a few lousy grand for a deposit for him? Well, I hope you rot. No luck. I'll get it from somewhere, though. I don't know where. Eileen, could you reserve one for me? Not without a down payment. Oh, please, Eileen. Look, it'll break his heart if he loses out. OK. Oh. But they won't hold it indefinitely. They won't have to. seen Todd anywhere, have you? That's not why he's not answering. All right. What? It rang earlier, after he'd left, so I answered it thinking it might be him. And? It was the bishop. Why would the bishop be...? The bishop was ringing for a Mr Harrison. It appears Todd has given him a fake name. Maybe you should go through the call list, see if he'd called the same number on the day that the complaint was made. Don't seem right to pry. Maybe, but in these circumstances. We are still singing from the same hymn sheet, Vinnie, aren't we? 
I was never much of a one for church. You know, I can always find somebody else if you don't want to get your hands dirty. You think it's worth the risk? Rubbing him out because he's in the way. If they find his body washed up in a canal, it's me and you they're going to come looking for first. You're presuming they'll find him. We can't just let him walk all over us. This is all or nothing here. At least let's talk to him again first, OK? Okay. Well, if you want to say I told you so, now's your chance. I like to think I've got a bit more class than that. I'm sorry. But, truth be told, I was tempted. Thanks, anyway. What for? Still caring. Well, you know me. I can hold a grudge about as well as I can hold a tune. That's what happens now. Get some answers. Oh, heck. Well, this don't look good. Mm, might as well tell her. We know who tipped the bishop off. Who? Todd. You wouldn't. Oh, are you my kid? Of course he'd pick him wood. Lost something. Ah, oh, Billy. You're a lifesaver. Where'd you find it? I didn't. Sean did. You left it in the rovers. Oh, it's all over the place today. Todd. Have you seen my mum? Really need to get hold of her. Yeah, I'm afraid that's gonna have to wait. You're not gonna answer that. It might be the bishop, Mr. Harrison. He must be on his way. I haven't got all night. You got somewhere to be, Billy. You trying to get shot on me? When he does get here, you let me do the talking, Billy. Absolutely. No, I mean it. I don't want you going off half-cocked. Harry, but you got the wrong impression of me. I despise violence. OK, try to remember that. Of course. If there was a choice between doing a lad or doing time, no contest. Well, you don't mean that. Don't I? Listen, it's one thing putting the frighteners on the kid, but what are you talking about, murder? If he talks... We do a couple of years for fraud. You make it sound like it's an inconvenience. It's better than the life sentence. That's one way to see it. It's the only way to see it. Come on, Vinny, we're in the same boat. I'm afraid that's why you're wrong. Pat, I know you think I've lost the plot, but when you owe money to the kind of people I owe it to, it gives you a certain clarity. People. Why didn't you say something before? Because it wasn't pertinent to our arrangement. I need a payday. A big one. So you better square things up with this jumped up little flower boy. Or I will. You had no right. I had every right. I mean, seriously, it should be your religion on trial here, not me. You have no understanding of my religion. Well, I know he doesn't want us to be together. Look, Billy, OK, if it hadn't been me, it'd have been somebody else. And that's your justification for stabbing me in the back? I did what you couldn't do, so... Well, what you did was make me doubt myself, my congregation, my church. Oh, please, your church couldn't give a toss about you. One phone call was all it took, Billy. One. And that must make you so proud. Billy, look, I'm not the enemy here. Yeah, next year, we're telling me you acted out of love. But you need to set him free. You can't see this now, but down you the line... You think I'm free? You've turned my world inside out. Everything that gave my life purpose, anything that made sense is gone. We, we still make sense. That hasn't changed, has it? Everything has changed. Because of you, I'm as lost as I was 10 years ago. That's not true, because 10 years ago, you didn't have me. I so wanted to hate you. I know, but that's not your style, is it? <laughs> hey? No. No, it's not. Pity is what I feel. Can we not 
you know, say anything we're both gonna regret. You know, I always thought your... your lack of empathy was a defence mechanism. I thought that if I dug deep enough that I would find the real Todd. This is the real you. The real Todd in all his glory. So you're not going to give me a second chance? I mean, what would the big guy say, eh? He would say that I deserve better than you. We're wasting our time. Give him another five. He said that ten minutes ago. He will be here. First facts. He's played us. Now we do it my way. Sorry I'm late, guys. I was unexpectedly delayed. Did you come on your own? No, no, there's a SWAT team waiting around the corner. Of course I came on my own. I think I stood you up? I thought I'd occurred. Well, you're here now. Right off the bat, I want to say, on behalf of... Why don't we cut to the chase, yeah? TikTok and all that. I want in. I want in all the way. I'm not really feeling the love here, guys. Well, it's just a surprise and change of heart. Well, what can I say? I've missed the real me. We're supposed to just take your word. It's not very trusting your mate, is it? Trust is earned. I mean, trying to see if my point of view, only yesterday, you reported us to the police. Yeah, and I came out of it looking like a right clown, didn't I? What, now you're just rolling over? Whoa, whoa, whoa. You said anything about rolling over. We haven't discussed the terms yet. Terms? You discussed terms? News to me. My family are off limits, OK? No matter what happens, me mum and Jason are taken care of. Oh, what? Or well, you'll find out just how annoying I can be. Or we just kill you and take our chances. You'll have to forgive Vinny's sense of humour. Todd, you got a deal. Cool. So, ripping off friends and neighbours, not a problem? Not me friends. And I've never been what you call neighbourly. In fact, if they're gullible enough to swallow your sales patter, deserve to be fleeced. Now, that's not very Christian. What's the boyfriend going to say? No, doesn't matter what he says. He's not my boyfriend. Since when? Since he found out I'm a lying, manipulative creep. In other words, you're perfect salesman. What will you tell your mum? I'll think of something. So, we good? We're good. OK. Best decision you've ever made. Well, even you've got to admit, this better than the alternative. Granted. But if this blows up in our face... It won't. It's in our pocket now. We'll see. Mum, we need to talk. No. You need to listen. I was in the whirlpool when the police turned up. The whirlpool. I know, and I'm genuinely sorry. I'd like to say that I've never been so humiliated by you, but this is definitely in the top three. Look how the brain melt, all right? It won't happen again. It better not. I swear. Because this is some kind of trick. Oh, Mum, Mum, give me a bit more credit. It's not a trick. There's no ulterior motive. I'm in the wrong. Plain and simple. Apology accepted. Billy get you to do this? No, he's, um... He's got rid of me. What? Why? If you don't mind, I just... I don't want to get into it now. Actually, I do mind, considering I'm the one that had to turf Sean out, and that's after I've watched you break his heart. Right, you don't need to kick off. He's apologised. Why would I kick off? 
I take it you've not told your mum yet? Well, I've not been able to get a word in edgeways. Tell me what? After you, Todd. No, no. After you. Todd and I have come to an arrangement. What kind of arrangement? Well, Pat's offered me a job. So, as of now, I'm on the team. And the punchline? There isn't one. Is this for real? Well, I hope so. I've quit my job and Tracy's not an happy bunny. Yesterday, you were accusing Pat of all sorts. Yeah, I know. Look, Pat was never the problem. I was just... I was just projecting my doubts and my failings on him. I think splitting up with Billy's made me realise that. Every cloud. Well, but ever the reason it takes guts to admit when you're wrong, I'm proud of you. Well, you know, wait till I've sold a flat. <laughs> not worried about that. All that matters is that we will be working together as a family. While in the process, making loads and loads of money. The key is to sell the vision. Not be easier when we get the brochures. We've got a perfect picture of a mill conversion. Double glazed windows, little balconies, surrounded by well tended trees. Vinnie got it off some stock image company. Now, if anyone asks, and they won't, it's what we call an approximate representation, OK? Hmm. Some enthusiasm, Todd. Come on, you're our salesman. How many can we sell? We can sell as many as we like, because they're not getting built. Yeah, I know, but how many are there supposed to be? Forty. But we can sell the same flat to more than one person, if we're careful. OK, right, so further on down the line, how do we...? Once we've got enough cash, that goes into Vinny's business account. Then Vinny does a runner. Cue despair and desolation. How could he do that to us? I was so sorry. <laughs> Let me split the cash three ways, and you're halfway to becoming a millionaire. OK, but you are going to protect my brother's money, right? I can't. Hey, love. Didn't go back to Billy's last night, then. Oh, why would he do that? We're gearing him up for his first day on the job. We'll need to change his clothes. Yes, Mother. And his tone of voice. Mm -hmm. He'll warm up, won't you, Todd? I've um, brought some of your stuff back. I mean, so I'd find you here. You're, um, you're working for Feeling. You make no sense to me, Todd. None. Not bad, Pat. Yeah. All we need now is that famous charm of yours. Here's one of them right now. Sorry? Well, Pat was just saying there's not many shrewd businessmen around here. I disagreed, and here you are. Well, I... We're just discussing these new flats. I mean, you're obviously a man who knows a prime investment opportunity when he sees one, right? Let's see. There's a one, two, three beds available. I'll tell you what, you'd make a killing on rental. I'd love to live somewhere like that. Yeah? Looks pricey. No, no, no. It's, um, you'd be surprised, actually. There's a, there's a range to suit everyone. Is this what you've left me for? to leaflet people in the street. What are you selling, Todd? Two for one donors at the kebab shop? <laughs> no, no, I'm not Tracy. I'm selling high-end property. So, uh, look, why don't you take those away? Have a think. Maybe we could have a coffee tomorrow, talk about it in more detail. Nah, I wouldn't bother Sharif, cos he'll only let you down, because that's what Todd does. He lies and he stabs people in the back. <laughs> Coming from you, Tracy, I take that as a confirmation of his good character. <sighs> look forward to that coffee. Pat? Your loss, my gain. You let me down, Todd. You were one of the few people that I actually enjoyed working with. Well, Tracy, I enjoyed working with you too. But I want to do more with my life than wrapping flowers. Oh, what, like being Pat Phelan's gopher? I'm not Pat Phelan's gopher. I'm his business partner. Oh. Look, Tracy, I'm sorry, OK? Yeah. Well, do you know something, Todd? I reckon you will be. These two are still available, am I right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then if you wanted the one with the view... I'm oh, sorry. Uh, Rita! I've already details. got a flat, love, thank you. All right, have you got any savings? Bye. None of your business. <laughs> all right, well, all I'm saying is, right, 
If you haven't got savings within the bank, they're doing nothing for you. Get yourself one of these on buy to let. You will double your money in just a few years. If I had a penny for everyone who said that to me, I would be a wealthy woman. Risa, just think about it. Come on. Hey, Pat, I've invited you to a surprise party. Now, here's another young man who'll want to take a look. These are the flats we were talking about, Alex. Looks great. I, I can't afford one. Well, you never know, you might come into some money. Tell them how great they are, Todd. I don't think you need to wear it, Pat. Of course he does. He just said he can't afford it. We might know someone who can. Laminated uh, floors throughout. Fully fitted modern kitchen diner. Um, um, there's a tiled bathroom. Some fitted wardrobes. There's a flat screen TV mount. Sounds like an ideal pulling pad. Tell him about the underfloor heating. You tell him. I'll have to excuse him, Alex. He gets a bit touchy if he hasn't had lunch. I'll get that. Uh, one for me, and please, one for yourself. Finally, at last, some courtesy. <laughs> Why the sudden conscience? Ah. The Reverend Father. No. No, this has nothing to do with Billy. Not directly. I'll tell you what. He sleeps like a baby at night. I ain't slept like that in years. Just remember, with your mum and Jason's money tied up in this venture, it fails, they lose everything. How are you going to sleep there? You play your cards right, you could secure a beautiful future for your family. Have a little something for yourself, make a new start, anywhere you like, London, New York, Monty, Flame and Carlo. You really want to go back to your carnations? Really? We can play with Barbie dolls next. Don't worry, we'll get you a Ken. <laughs> Admit it, you're impressed. Must have taken you all night. What, Vinny get his hands dirty? Well, you didn't make it, mate. Not with those sausage fingers. You've got to love a skin design student. He told him it was a competition. First prize, surely? Sadly, just missed the cut. This little beauty, and your gift at a gab, the rest of those flats are going to fly off the books. You know, it's a shame they'll never see the light of day. Morning, camp has made our first million yet. <laughs> oh, look, but we're getting there. Well, what do you think? Oh, my days. Has Jason had a filter of this? <gasps> it's really happening. <laughs> oh. Hi. Hi. You right? Busy. Billy. Can we not at least be civil? <sighs> there. Or the cheek. Happy now? That Karen Brady doesn't have to brew up for other members of the board. Who? Cags doesn't only make a brew, she bakes her own biscuits. <laughs> so, can I hand you over to Vincent? He's uh, drawn up your agreements. Right there. Well, that was painless. From where you're standing, maybe. <laughs> Wise move, having the tenant lined up. Yeah, we got a good caliber of people moving in. I mean, Sonia's obviously... But... Very respectable. A friend of my wife's. Mm hmm So, Shreve. Well, that's two leads in as many hours. You'll be getting a big head. Can I help it if people are thick? Now, now. Call me a genius. You're a genius. What have you done? I have just secured a feature in the Gazette. Tuesday's property pages pull-out section. Wow. It's official. Affordable living is hot. We are meeting Ross at 4pm at the site. OK, well, uh, I'll give it a miss. Probably want to speak to the brains of the operation anyway. He's plastered on a smile all day, sold like a trooper. He's going home to an empty bed, an empty house. Unlike us. Let's cut him some slack, eh? 
It's a bit of a hot head, Jim. <laughs> I thought he was going to land. <laughs> his, his missus, June, yeah. Mrs. Griffiths, she's a sweetheart. She crochets for England. No, let me uh, see excuse, you excuse me. Sorry. Oh. Um, oh, I'm sorry, honey. Did you uh, forget your change? Oh, no, no, it's Billy I need. Oh. If this is about Todd... I am not here to defend him. Good. Calling the bishop was out of order, but he only did it because he's crazy about you. He still is. Ooh. I mean, you're a good mum. And you mean well, but... You wouldn't be so firmly in Team Todd if you've heard what he'd been saying. About what? About your partner, but partners patting this dodgy sidekick. That was then. They get on like a house on fire now. Todd despises them. Since when did Vickers go into mudslinging? Maybe it's just talk. And I hope it is. But if any of this is true, even just a shred of it, I fear for him. This hold that Pat's got over him... It... Hold? Open your eyes, Eileen. Do you even know who you're living with? Whatever Pat is doing, you're up to your neck in it, too. <sighs> Have you gone to work? I should have clocked in 20 minutes ago. Steve's going to do his nut. <laughs> uh, well, when the money starts flooding in, you can tell him where to stick his job. Listen, love. Billy was really weird with me last night. Oh, well. He's probably still angry with me, probably taking it out on you, isn't he? Really got to you, hasn't it, you and him splitting up? Oh, what can I say? The man's really got under my skin. What did he say? That you'd said some terrible things about Pat. Yeah? Like what? We didn't go into detail, just that Pat had some kind of hold over you. It's not like Billy to dish the dirt. Sure you've not got the wrong end of the stick? Go and do lally, I know what he said. Look, I've been honest with you from day one, right? When I first met Pat, I couldn't stick him. No. Then he sort of... Grew on me a bit. You warmed to him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I told you that, didn't I? So why would I lie now? Mm. See you later, lovey. See ya. And there's this charity trip to Africa, building schools for orphans. I'm desperate to go. So you are going to work your butt off, but you've got to pay them. Which is to pay for the flights or whatever. I mean, they haven't got any money, have they? They're orphans. We should take it out of the pocket money. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Thank you, Rod. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, we won't be needing the flat anymore because Alex is going to be staying here with us. Thanks, you are. Billy, another word? Just give us a sec. I believe you've been, uh, blabbing to my mum. <laughs> Come on, what have you said? Not much in your scheme of things. Well, uh, enough to make her anxious. Yeah, well, I realised I was hurting her when it was you I was angry with. She deserves better. Yeah, I know she does, but Billy, I got it wrong. What? When I said feelings development was a scam, I got it wrong. You know, I didn't trust him. And I got a solicitor mate to uh, take a look over the paperwork. It's totally kosher. I just I misinterpreted everything he said, everything he did, and uh, I jumped to conclusions. So you trashed a man's character because you jumped to conclusions? What is wrong with you, Todd? Why are you so messed up? Come on, lads. Oh, uh, hang on. What are you doing? Wait. Don't tell me. A, uh, a photo shoot for hot guys in high vis. No, I'm clearing out a squat on Inkerman Street. Not oh. this anything to do with you. Right, well, why don't you let me help? No. Why not? You don't have anything to prove to me. Well, hang on. What is it you lot say? Many hands make light work. No, I said no. Hang on, Billy, can you really afford to turn down free labour? Besides, I ain't doing it for you. I'm doing it for charity. See, this is where I'm going wrong, you see. Hunting around with a bunch of flowers. Should be doing something butch and physical. I'm totally getting into this horny-handed sons of toil thing. Look at you. I mean, I'll roll literary. I can be deep when I want. Borderline clever, so my mum says. Yeah? Are you working for feeling, then? I mean, no, he's not a crook, but you still can't stand him. Just trying to make some money. Anyway, I'm not the only one with a career change. Hey, I'm just stepping away from the church for a bit, seeing what else is out there. Yeah, I'm just saying it's all down to me, innit? You know, I mean, you're going to thank me? You know, for making the call to the bish? Hey, don't push your luck, Todd. Sorry. Nice, but too soon to be getting cocky. Ah! We need to get you to hospital, get that checked out.
You don't have to wait, you know. It's probably going to take ages. It's fine. Not really, you know. I've got my, uh, got my eye on this chit chat. At Thirty winning ways with parsnips. That's going to keep me occupied. <sighs> Is it painful? Um, no, no. Just stings a bit. But the treatment hurts more. Probably going to have to get a Hep B vaccine. No, just best be on the safe side. Yeah. Probably going to have to take some blood, get an HIV test, take some PEP. At least that'll stop the virus getting into my system, eh? That's no biggie, I've taken it before. How come? How come, he says. Do you want to know why I'm so messed up? So, there was this guy when I lived in London. He was HIV positive. Just Jules? No, no, it was before him. Uh, his name is Sam. He was married 12 years. Two kids, Mr. Respectable, you know. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And he walked away from all that for me. He must have loved you a lot. I just felt like we could deal with anything, you know, so long as we were together. So... When he was diagnosed, he took it really badly. You know, he thought I'd given it to him. He obviously had No, no, of course not. It was weird, because I felt guilty that... that I was fine and he had all that to deal with, but I... you know, I stood by him every step of the way. Why'd it go wrong? So I was gonna... I was gonna propose to him. <laughs> and, um... And I had the ring in my pocket, and... And he told me he was going back to his wife. I don't expect sympathy, you know, what, what goes around comes around. I know that. He was the last one to judge. But when he left me, it felt like a... It felt like I'd been hit by a train. So if anyone gets too close, I push him away, or... Or I do something to make him leave. Either way, I just won't trust anyone like that again. <laughs> Dramatic, moi. <laughs> it's a pity you can't mend a broken heart, innit? Bad memories, sad times. It's a shame you can't have them all surgically removed. Todd Grimshaw. Come on. Thought you might have done a runner. How did it go? I uh, got a prescription for Pep. The side effects won't be too much of a pain. Mm -hmm. Wasn't in there that long, was I? <laughs> you know what I mean. I know what you mean. I missed you too. I mean, we were so good together till I screwed it up. I mean, weren't we? You meant so much to me, Todd. You still do. You know, like, like you said yourself. I just want to hurt you. Be stupid to go back, right? Anything. But there is still something between us. <sighs> there is a sweetness in you. When you ditch all the crazy, you're just. You're lovely. And you make me want to be the best I can be. Please, Billy, come on. Just. Just give me another chance. Soon. I just... I need some more time to think. Mm -hmm. I'll run. I'm not going. I'll just go and sort us a cab. Mm -hmm. Let's get you home.
Yeah, Mary Celeste, eh? Steve's just gone to change a barrel. Where did you get to today? Phone was ringing off the hook. I've had the day for Mel, all right? Last thing I need is you in my face. Hey, I'm hoping you turn your life around a bit more respect. Respect. Wouldn't go or miss. For you. What was I thinking? Let myself sink to your level. You chose to come and work for me. Nobody put a gun to your head. I don't want to be that person anymore. I want to be better. You guys all right? Yeah, just two in the fat, love. Yeah. Hold your nerve for the next few weeks and you'll be laughing all the way to the bank. No. No. I'm out. You can't just bin this off when the mood takes you. If nothing else, think about your mother. I am thinking about my mum. That's why I'm going to keep my mouth shut. But I promise you, Pat, I've got my eye on you. If you drop me mum in it, or Jason, I promise you, I'll blow the whole scam. You know, it's all well and good looking at interiors online, but I think I'm going to visit some actual shops today. Mm hmm. Listen to you, keeping it old school. Mm, I just want to get a proper sense of what the flats could look like inside. I like your enthusiasm, love, but we haven't even built them yet. Yeah, I know, but I'm concepts executive. I need to know what my options are and if there are any special discounts I can get if I buy in bulk. Ooh, get you. Northwest Businesswoman of the Year. No, I'll just be happy if I'm nominated. <laughs> How did you get all the fun jobs and I get left with all the boring stuff? Mm. <laughs> oh, you're up early. You're right, love. Trust me to get down with a needle when I'm trying to do something good for once. I tell you what, someone up there has got a twisted sense of humour. Maybe you should take a few days off. They said there'd be side effects with that pep watch, so, you know, trouble sleeping and stuff. Mm. It's about not told you. I've quit. Have you two fallen out? No. no. I didn't want to say anything. I was hoping he would change his mind. I haven't. You were doing so well. I just, you know, been a... Stay agent, this is not for me, so I'm done. You just quit. Mm -hmm. Getting jabbed by some junky syringe kind of puts things in perspective. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling after the pep? Yeah, I'm fine, to be honest. I've been more worried about you. Me? I'm really sorry for dobbing you into the bishop like that, Billy. I've been thinking about it all night. It was selfish. It was mean. You know, if I could take it back, you know I would. Find me. What's come over you? <laughs> Must be the tablets. <laughs> no, I just... I finally realised what is important in life. I want to do some good for a change. You know, I, I want to be a better man. And it's you that's made me realise that. Just don't let it get to you, all right? Any trouble, I'll go straight to a teacher. You sound like a pamphlet. <laughs> you should listen to him. She doesn't take any notice of anything I say. All right, I best get off anyway. Me too. All oh, right, yeah, you just leave me sat here on my own. So. Uh, yeah, I will do. Uh, see you later. Bye, Gary. See you. Well, she, uh, seems all right to me. Oh, it's just fun. It's just typical Bethany's. Stephen. I'm going to have to take this. Hello. Oh, yeah, good, thanks. How are you? Oh, great. What's that got to do with me? Oh, morning, Benny. Morning, both. Aline's just off to price some materials for the flats. I reckon she's a born haggler. Second name. She comes from years of being skinned. Not for much longer. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want me to have a word with Todd? Uh, he's just in shock, I reckon. Well, what's up with him? Why isn't he here? It's all right, love. You go on. I'll explain. Mm -hmm. and don't worry, I'll talk to Todd. You sure? Yeah, yeah. All right. Laters. Bye. Hmm. I hope she's not spending. She's just looking. It keeps it out of my hair. What's the story with the princess? Well, he's clearing out a squat yesterday with the vicar. Jabs himself with a dirty needle. Talk about no good deed goes unpunished. Yeah, well, knocked him for six for a bit. He was talking about quitting yesterday. But it's just the shock. He will come round. He better add. Todd causes any problems. Game over. 
Both of you. Talk to me. And he wants to give you £15,000, just like that. All I ever got from my uncle was a clip round the ear. Where the hell is she? She's meant to be here by now. Uh, try and stay calm, David. She's only a few minutes late. You must feel like you've won the lottery. I do, yeah. I, ca I can't believe it. So he wants to buy back my shares in his company because of this investment that he's had. Shares, eh? Get you, Deborah Meading. Well, he, he always gave me shares every Christmas, birthday, and I just thought it was because he couldn't be bothered to buy me a proper present. <laughs> and what if you don't sell? Well, why won't you? He has said that the value of the shares could go up over the next few years, but he's giving me the option to cash in now. Yeah, well, I won't be too hasty. They could be worth a fortune in years to come. You know, set you up for life. Let's take the money. Well, why don't you talk to Stephen again, eh? I mean, you don't have to make your mind up straight away, do you? It's your classic case of a bird in the hand versus two in the bush. Listen to me, right? Nobody knows when the cliff underneath us is going to crumble away, OK? Take the money. I'm just going to uh, pick up a few bits and pieces I left at the yard. So, uh, will I see you later? Yeah, maybe. I'm really glad we had this chat. Yeah, I know. And I meant every word, you know. This is a... This is a brand new start for me. So he's just offered me 15 grand for my shares. Just like that, I couldn't believe it. Oh, yeah, so you can buy a flat. Why not? I can't think of a better use for the money. Me and the kids, we can't stay cramped in that house and Michael's moved in. Yeah. Don't you, um, don't you want to think about it? Well, why? Say what a good investment we are. No, but come on, I, I say a lot of things to the punters, don't I? Yeah, but they are a great investment, aren't they? I mean, your mum, she seems to think so. I can't imagine her investing Jason's money otherwise. Yeah, yeah, I, I just, I, I think it's a huge decision to make. Be happy for me. Oh, I can't wait to tell Bethany she's going to be made up. Mm. I'm going to be a homeowner. <laughs> not been answering your phone. You really think I'd let you rip off Sarah? After everything she's been through. Oh, oh, I see. So no qualms about taking money off Rita or the Nazis. As soon as it's one of your mates, you're up in arms. You know what? The old thing stinks. And I cannot believe it's taken me this long to realise that you are finished, Pat. You and Vinny. You don't know who you're messing with. I know exactly who I'm messing with. And do you know what, Pat? I don't care. What do you think that's going to achieve? I'll just get it to sign another. Not after I tell her the truth. That there are no flats. That you're a fraud and a thief. And you're the good guy. No. I'm just an honest whistleblower who's just discovered your dastardly plan. You still don't quite get it, do you, son? It's not me you've got to worry about. It's Vinny. Mm, Vinny, Vinny, Vinny. I'm not scared of him. Yeah, well, you should be. If he'd have had his way, your mum would have been picking out your coffin right about now. We're back in Coronation Street in half an hour. Me a break. You've been, uh, been watching too much Sopranos. You don't think this sort of stuff happens, do you? You don't think where big money's concerned, people like Vinny won't go the extra mile? Nah, sorry, I'm not, not buying it, Pat. Last week, when he thought you were going to ruin it all, he was dead set on sending you to the bottom of the canal. <laughs> OK. So why didn't he go through with it? Because I stopped him. I love your mother. I couldn't bear to see her going through burying her son. So, believe it or not, Todd, I've been protecting you. Why don't we phone the police? See what they say. Todd, I want you to listen very carefully. If Vinny gets one whiff of PC plod, I promise you, it won't just be you in danger. 
But your mum, me, I've seen it before. Vinny will go to any lengths, any lengths to protect himself. He's just trying to frighten me. You're damn right. Vinny operates a scorched earth policy. Dead men tell no tales. Todd, please, for all our sakes, you think very carefully about your next move. Now, I know how you feel about Sarah. It's some and way I respect you for it. But I have to protect you and your mother in all of this. Oh, hi, stranger. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. I'm feeling a lot better, thank you. I was wondering, would it be possible for me to come back to work? Oh, music to my ears. Are you sure you're up to it? I know you've been through a very tough time. Though. Yeah, I think you're doing good, to be honest. Right, then. I'll fetch the road to Hello. Hi. Hey. Would it be possible for me to come in tomorrow with Bethany and have another look at the model? Let me arrange something with my associate. Uh, associate get you? <laughs> OK, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. Fire away. I keep quiet. I stay on site. But when all this mess is over and done with Sarah, she gets her money back. Wow. We go halves out of our share, me and you. That is non-negotiable. So Sarah gets her money back, but nobody else does? You're not going to make Sarah a bit suspicious? No, you leave Sarah to me. I'll tell her I pull some strings and to keep quiet about it. She'll be so happy to get the money. She won't even question it. Done. Done? You're just going to roll over, just like that? I told you, I need you on side for everybody's sake. Now, have we got a deal? Glad it is back on board. We'll have no more trouble out of him. You can count on that. How do you convince him? Just told him the truth. Told him if he crossed you, it would be the last thing he ever did. Direct approach. I'm pointing pussy foot and round, is it? True. Do you need me at this meeting? Not really. There's an old mate of mine. He reckons he's got a couple of old deers lined up for the flats, so fine. Why? Just a bit of insurance. In God we trust. Something like that. Excuse me, Vicar. You all right? Now I've seen you. Do you have five minutes? What for? Didn't expect to see you. How are you feeling? All right, just, um, I feel a bit groggy from the tablets. Yeah, just had a nap. What? Look at you. Poker face. It's the, uh, it's the one God gave me. When were you going to tell me? Tell you what? I've just seen Pat. He's, he's just told me about the Kenyan trip that you want to pay for me to go and work for the charity out of some of the profit from the flats. Yeah, yeah. Why didn't you tell me you were working with him again? I just, um... <clears throat> it just happened this afternoon. Yeah, I was mad to give it up. I think I'm still a bit messed up from the um, syringe, you know. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Can't believe Pat's offered to pay for the other half the trip out of his own pocket. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, surprised me and all today. I guess he needed me more than I thought, right? And you'll be doing some good. After all, just like you wanted. Yeah, just call me Mother Teresa of the Northwest. <laughs> <laughs> um, how about we? Put the last few weeks behind us. Start again. Billy, I'd, I'd like that more than anything. <laughs> no more secrets, yeah? We've got to be completely honest with each other about everything. Yeah, yeah, of course. Could be a good Well played. You and the vicar back on then? I thought I could be manipulative. I just thought I'd do you a favour, you know, sweeten the deal. Let you see that something good can come out of all of this. For those poor little kids in Africa. You know, we look after Jason's interests, we even look after Sarah's. You get your boyfriend back, everyone's a winner. Don't pretend you're doing this for anyone but yourself. Me and my family, yeah? I'm not your family. No. But your mum is the closest thing I've got to it. So, like it or not, one way or another, we're in this together. 
price of grout will make your nose bleed. Yeah, well, you know what they say, you buy cheap, you buy twice. <laughs> I've been asking round. They can a little plot. Is it true you've got a scale model? I'll show you this morning. Not seriously interested, though, are you, Rita? I am, as it goes. Well, aren't you happy where you are? Wouldn't be for me. Jenny. I can't take it with me, Sal. Are you out of your mind? Um, I'm trying to make a sale of Sal. Has Jenny put the squeeze on you? It was my suggestion, if you must know. She took some convincing. Oh, a likely story. I mean, I thought she was after moving in with Mr. Connor. It's obviously going downhill fast. Right, well, we'll um, finish this thing. Yeah. Get off, eh? OK. So you committed to this operation or not? Of course she's committed. Don't... You're going on, you? Development's really flying at the minute. Yeah, I found my niche. Well, I think it's about time we made a decision. No, wait a minute. She doesn't have to choose. No, 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 Tim's right. I'm neither one thing or the other. I am I am spreading myself too thin. Oh, listen, because when you've got two jobs, you know, it can keep you fresh, can't it? So which is it to be, then? Don't put her on the spot. I think I've made up my mind. What? Sorry, boys. I'm out. Brilliant. Now look what you've done. Concept executive. We are where we are. That's your answer, is it? How you talk me into involving that dozy mare, I will never know. She not get under your skin? Eileen's a means to an end. Nothing more, nothing less. Yo, approve it. Show her the door. She's a liability. Who still controls a sizable stake in our venture. Oh, I haven't forgotten. I'll handle her. I hope so. Because I'd hate to have to step in. It's not going ahead of ourselves, eh? You heard how she talked to me. I did, yeah. And in a couple of months, she's going to be heartbroken, disgraced. And partners, everyone's a winner. Yeah. You have me at Harbrook. Just, just keep a tight leash on her from now on. That's done. No more surprises. And the tiles, I'll sort it. In the meantime, I need you to do something for me. I'm not gonna lie this, am I? I'm just saying it's not worth antagonizing the guy. So you think I messed up and all? Well, 30 grand isn't peanuts. Quality doesn't come cheap. You said yourself, the sales are through the roof, the money's rolling in. Yeah, true, but... I thought we were selling the dream. We are, up to a point. Yeah, well, dreams don't come cheap. Oh, and if you're looking for an apology, you can whistle. I'm not here to start another fight. Mm -hmm. I'm here to apologise. Oh? My emotions got the better of me. I should have been a bit more understanding. Well, um, maybe I should have been a little bit more savvy. Live and learn. I'm just uh, making tea, so uh, would you care to join us? Don't want to put you out. No, there's no trouble. The team could do with a little bit of bonding. Hmm. This uh, this sauce is interesting. Thanks, love. Not hungry, Vinny. Italian's not really my bag. A bit like those tiles. Mm. Comedian as well as... Actually, remind me, what do you actually do around here? So, I've organised a session with this interior designer I know. Maybe you can pick his brain, get some ideas. Is that your way of telling me I'm clueless? Uh, you're always saying about how you want to broaden your horizons. I suppose it wouldn't hurt. Now I'm full-time, I need to earn my keep. Full-time? You not told him. Tell me what? I quit streetcars today. Mum, you love working there. Yeah, well, this is more important. No more surprises, eh? Well, you've still got the building yard to run, haven't you, love? So it's not 100% full-time. Yeah, I know. It just seems a little drastic. It's done. Deal with it. Care to stick your oar in, Vinny? No. I have complete faith in Pat's judgment. More wine, Eileen. We need to box a club out. That's all I'm saying. Morning, sweetheart. Hi. Guess what? Went to streetcars, I thought about it. <laughs> I can miss you. No, oh, tough. I've got bigger fish to fry. Listen, I was thinking, don't you think we ought to start hiring contractors by now? Just on the way to the site now. Interviewing all day. Better crack on. See ya. Look, I know you don't like it. Fine. Things are really starting to move now, so 
this grin, bear it, and all the flats are sold, they'll be out of our lives forever. Mm. Still don't trust him as far as I could throw him. Cheers, Roy. One a bacon bat. Now it's in front of me, not sure I can face it. Oh, you sure? Okay. Three vodka tonics and a boogie. <laughs> I'm feeling it today. <laughs> I'm still clubbing at your age. No, that'll get about a zillion hits on YouTube. Uh, I'm a better dancer than him, but... <laughs> Where was it you went? Zambezi. Well, it was back in the day. They've changed its name. Where is it? Harper Street. Harper Street. Uh, that's moments, isn't it? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Well, no. Back to business. I've had a long chat about this flat, and I've decided to go ahead. OK, there's, um, there's no rush. No, no, I've got my eye on one particular one, number eight. Oh, nice, nice. So I want to pay my reservation fee. OK, well, I have the contracts uh, drawn up today. Oh, thanks, Tom. You've been great. Yeah, he's a goodie. <laughs> you all right, love? No, I'm at off. Is this a ward I'm up for? Uh, Weatherfield, you know, good Samaritan. Oh, yeah, so I hear. It's fantastic. Except it's not. They've whittled it down to the last three. Well, that's brilliant news. Only one's a flaming copper who does all these fundraising runs and spends the money building community gardens on run-down estates. And the other, this, is even worse. It's a flaming 12-year-old who slam-dunked a basketball all day for charity. They both sound lovely. What chance have I got against either of them? Oh, I think that sounds a bit defeatist. What you did is just as public-spirited. I'm dead in the water. We're all up in front of these judges later today. Hey, I'll get a spray tan. Show a bit of leg. I don't <laughs> think that is the uh, right strategy. I think you need to pull on the heartstrings. Oh, this is like one of them army assault courses. I'm still miles from the finish line. I'm never going to win. You'll win. Don't think I will. You'll get there. Can't keep away, can you? Just wanted to show you and Steve there are no hard feelings here. Put that in your new biscuit barrel. Oh, thanks. Hey, I'm in the wrong job if your boss is anything to go by. Boss? Vinny. He's not my boss. Oh, whatever. I've just dropped him off at the casino. What? He's at the casino. Who? Vinny. Tim just dropped him off. He said he was interviewing all day. Okay, well, he must have dropped him off on oh. the way. I know he likes a game of cards. He's it's frittering not away our money. What? Now what's got into that head of yours? I mean, even I like a flutter on the GGs. It's no big deal. Well, then why did he lie? He didn't lie. It's his private life, love. <sighs> he said he was going to the site. So what's he got to hide? I've got a really bad feeling about this. Calm down. I'll ring him. No, no. We're going to go down there, because I want to see for myself what he's up to. Well, if this is ridiculous, there'll be a simple explanation. Yeah, so let's go down there and see. Come on. No. Fine. I'll go on my own. Give me a second. I'll just get my jacket. Russ. All right, mate. What's with the suit? Been in court. Don't worry. I got off. You got the money? It's all there. <clears throat> Mr. Frost, welcome to Mexico. Well, you don't want a name that stands out. Well, on the other hand, it's best to avoid John Smith. Is that where you off to, then? Mexico? I see, man. Gordon. Gordon. I don't want to spend the rest of my life being called Gordon. It's worse than being called Russ. Hey, there's been some pretty cool Gardens. Gordon Banks, Gordon Ramsay, Flash Garden. Just wait. Hey, what are you doing here? You said you were going straight to the site. We're not converting the casino, are we? No. So what are you doing here, and who is that? He's the buyer for flat number eight. You know the one with the nice view of the lake? Really? 
Eileen, this is Mr. Russell. Hi. Is there a problem? This is one of my partners. I was just explaining that you'll be buying one of the flats. Is everything OK? Everything's fine, Mr. Russell. Isn't it, Eileen? Yes. You've got um, fantastic taste. I wouldn't mind living there myself. He rang me on the way to the site. We're just negotiating a price. Well, I'll, um, I'll just... I'll leave it to it. Come on. Oh, well, you know, that's good enough. It's not good enough, Eileen. I told you. Leave it. Something wrong. I'm sorry. It's funny that deserves the apology. Well, it did seem fishy. You know, if you watch someone like a hawk and you read stuff into every single thing they say, it's going to be like that. He went to a casino, not the Swiss bank. He was meeting a client, and we roll in there like Bodie and Doyle. Mr. Love, Lewis Collins. You nearly scuppered the deal, Eileen. You could see the guy was having second thoughts. He must have thought you were a right nutter. I'm sad. I'm sorry. I feel like you don't trust me, Eileen. And if that's true, it's more than this job in jeopardy. Pat? I've got people to call. I might be home late. Well, that was close. <laughs> so, did you get the new passports? Well, give it to me. What's my new name? This is all gobbledygook. <laughs> I know I can trust you. Anyway, they say you can't go wrong with bricks and mortar. And I know Jenny will be thrilled when I ring her. She's a very lucky woman. <laughs> the vodka? I don't mind if I do. OK. Yes! Smashed it! You've smashed what? I went up before the judges. Ooh. First thing I said was you're not like the judges I normally go up before. They were cracking up. Well, that's good. <laughs> there was this one. He was dead fit. So all the way through, I gave him one of my smouldering looks. And then, when they asked me why I should win the award, I looked dead serious and I said, these old biddies, they walk round with reds in the clouds. It's no wonder people take advantage. I'm like an old people's carer crossed with Robocop! <laughs> you're, uh, you're all done, Rita. Oh. Uh, it's done now. Thank you very oh, okay. much. OK, cheers. See you. Long day. No, oh, don't bother telling me. I'm going out in a minute. Oh, charming. See you. All right, Rita's uh, sign on the dotted line. Good. You don't seem too happy about it. No, I am, I am. It's just, just been one of those days. All right. We're going to go and see a film if you want to join us. Oh, I've got stuff I need to do at home, love. All right. Rita, congratulations, you've made a wise investment. I just wanted to make sure Jenny would have something to fall back on if things didn't work out with Johnny. He is a boss. So which one have you bought? Number eight, the one with the lovely lake view. What's up? I want to see a record of who's been sold which flat. Uh, why? Do I need a reason? No, but... Right, show me. It, it's a bit left field in it. I mean, coming round here trying to call the shots Well, now. I'll go and look for myself if you're not going to hand it no, over. No, no, I just I, I want to know why it's so urgent. I know that two people have been sold number eight, Rita and some bloke that Vinnie was talking to yesterday. It is the one with the lay view. Uh, yeah. Todd, I can read you like a book. You're hiding something. What is it? OK. That flat is the best one in its price bracket, OK? So we've been using that one to get people interested. They put down a reservation fee, and then we just steer them into buying another one or tell them it's been a mistake. So you're cheating them? No, no, they get their money back if they don't like it. I'll tell you what, all the developers do it. Oh, so that makes it all right, does it? Does Pat know about this? Yeah. Mum, we need to push sales somehow, or they don't get sold. I mean, we didn't want to tell you, did we? Yeah, but... I bet you didn't.
Pat, there's something you need to know. Oh, well, Todd's obviously warned you by the look on your face. Sorry? Please, don't insult me any further, because I have just been through that charade with him. Sit down. I don't want to sit down. I want to know why our clients have been lied to. Well, Todd would have explained that this is a classic market employee. Ploy? My backside, it's a lie, and one you feel shifty about, otherwise you would have told me. Look, this is my friend we're talking about. I've encouraged Rita into buying a flat. What else are you not telling me? Are you finished? Don't take that tone with me. This is Jason's money, don't forget. First of all, I apologise for not telling you. I knew you wouldn't like it, so I kept it from you. I mean, all of this is for Jason's profit. Well, he wouldn't like it any more than I do. I mean, what more can I say? It was a breach of trust and an insult to your intelligence. I'm sorry, it won't happen again. I'm getting my own son to lie. I mean, he struggles with the truth at the best of times. Whose idea was that, Vinny's? I can't believe you've gone behind my back like this. It was a serious error of judgment. <sighs> and now Rita is looking forward to buying a flat that is not available. Well, Todd would have explained that she won't be out of pocket if she changes her mind. Well, that's something you're going to have to sort out with her, isn't it? Today. Hi, Rita. May I join you? Of course, Pat. How are you? I've been talking to Jenny again about the flat. She's over the moon. Ah. Uh, it was the flat I wanted to talk about, actually. Yeah? Um, I just thought you should know that there was a small administrative error. How do you mean? Well, it's, it's nothing to worry about. Only we got our wires crossed in the office, and the flat was sold twice over. I'm still not with you. Well, the day you put your offer in, the flat was sold to somebody else by mistake. I mean, it's all fine now because I've persuaded them to take another, but... I haven't lost it. Oh, no, no, no. No, no, no. I only mention it just in case, you know, Todd or Eileen bring it up. I just didn't want you to be alarmed. Oh, it can be a fright there for a minute. I'm so sorry, Louisa. How did it happen? Well, still looking into that. He can't be best pleased, though, can he, this no. other job? It took some persuading. What did you say? Well, between you and me, Lisa, I had to give him a discount. Expensive mistake. Yes. But worth every penny if it keeps you happy. What, you said that to all the women? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, a whiskey chaser. Oh, do you want me to slide it along the bar like they do in the cowboy movie? I thought you just poured a drink, see? All right, fair enough. Great message. So, where's the fire? Well, luckily for you, I managed to put it out. What do you mean? Eileen found out that one of the flats has been sold twice. Are you trying to tell me she knows what's going on? No, she doesn't, so don't go doing anything we'll both regret. I managed to convince her it was a mistake. So what's the problem? The problem? The problem is the last couple of days have been a nightmare. And I've spent most of the day trying to keep air and that old cow runs the news agent happy. The longer this goes on, the harder it's going to get. What are you saying? I'm saying I don't think I can do this anymore. Here you go. Pint of lager whiskey chaser. We can't walk away. I want to bet. Yeah. I bet a couple of hundred grand. Because that's how much you'll be kissing goodbye to if you bail out now. We've already made a bundle. Why don't we take what we've got and run? Because if we don't pull this off, it's going to upset a few people. People you don't want to upset. And besides, I've put a lot of work into this. And so have I. Only difference is you haven't got half this street breathing down the back of your neck. Oh, grow a pair, will you? I thought you were tougher than that. I'm tough enough for you and anybody else. Make no bones about that. That's more like it. Now listen, pal. If we keep this together, two months' time, we'll be sat on the beach, sipping a cocktail, watching the birds in bikinis walk by. And I'm not talking on holiday. I'm talking forever. Two months. 
if that. So are we all right now? Peachy. Good. So I'm gonna get off. Yeah, I should go on all. See if Arlene's back. Yeah, well, you just try and keep her quiet, eh? You don't want her screwing this up for us. Do your best. Things we do for money, eh? At least it's a lot of money. Take it that this is for my benefit. Just my way of saying I'm sorry. Mm. What for? Lying to my friends and neighbours or lying to me? Come on, we've talked about this. I've spoken with Vinny and I've sorted things out with Rita. How about a glass of wine? Go on then. Though it'll take a lot more than a bottle of cheap plonk to get you off the hook. I know, I know. Which is why I've decided we need a break. From each other? <sighs> no, darling. With each other. I mean, it won't be for three or four months, but my personal preference is somewhere hot, near a beach. You know, the waves run into the shore, clear blue skies. And you, by my side. What do you think? Does that give you your answer? Hello, Anna. Good to see you. Hey. Hope you don't mind us coming to visit. No. Oh, no, thanks. Uh, it's fine. Um, pull up a pew. So, um... How are you? That could be better. What did the doctor say? If, um, if you don't mind my asking. But it'll take time to recover. Yeah, of course it will. You've been through a terrible ordeal. And that I won't be winning any lovely legs competition anytime soon. <laughs> well, I, I just wanted to say that, um, well, you know, when you when when you get out, if you uh, need help with anything, uh, well, maybe I could clean for you. I mean, that's something I know I'm good at. How are you lot doing? Well, David uh, would have liked to have been here, but well, you know how it is uh, on his own with two kids. He still feels very guilty about what happened that day something he's going to have to live with for the rest of his life. Him and me both. You couldn't do me a favour, could you? Yeah, of course. What is it? Oh, I could murder a cup of tea. I'm spitting feathers here. Michael? Oh, yeah. A um, cup of coffee, please. Sick of talking about myself. Tell me what's been going on with you. Oh, well, um, Gail and me have decided to renew our vows. Oh, congratulations. Oh, it's really nice to have some good news for once. Yeah. Apart from that, um, nothing to report. <sighs> well, I can hardly believe that. <laughs> we should have brought Norris with us, shouldn't we? I mean, I'm sure he'd have some tales to tell you. <laughs> yeah. Him and Rita, they crack me up like an all-married couple. Oh, <laughs> don't tell her that. <laughs> Rita was talking to Phelan today. Sorry, I know he's probably the last person you want to think about while you're oh, in here. No, no, it's all right. She's, uh, she's buying one of his flats, isn't she? Apparently. She and Jenny were asking him when they could visit the site. There's something really weird about the way he fobbed them off. Why? What did he say? Well, it wasn't so much what he said, it was the way he said it. He was his usual smarmy self, you know, buttering her up, but I could tell he was nervous. Mm. He's definitely hiding something. Well, knowing him, he's probably up to no good. Too right. If I were you, I'd just stay out of it, Michael. Don't get involved, love. What we have to put up with, eh? <laughs> Hope you're not going soft in your old age. Rest assured, Ben. I'm not to do going soft, I just want to move on. You know what I mean? 
You and me both. And this lot freezing the backsides off, we'll be the other side of the world enjoying sun, sea, and 70 odd degrees. When's it when I say it? Mm, we are. When this one can decide whether it's Greece or Portugal. Pint, please, Michelle. Well, there's multitasking and there's multitasking, Michael. Of course. Oh, yeah, we're hoping to get a full day's work out of him soon. I broke my wrist once. It's amazing the things you find you can't do. So, are you up for a session of Weatherfield Rummy with me and Tyrone then? I don't think so. Sorry, mate. Ah, oh, Andy? Me cards. I'm gonna face for him. It's Rummy. It wouldn't matter if it was Trump, seriously. Oh, come on. I've been looking forward to this. What if you can take pity on an old geezer, surely? Uh, Pat will play. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. What? You don't even know the rules. No, but I'm quick on the uptake. I'm gonna say that again. Hey! Finney will be up for it too, won't you, mate? What's that? Him a cards. Freddy is desperate. So? We on, then? Oh, Kev's forgot a customer's coming to pick up the car. Oh, well, can't he see to it? No, he's in town. Sorry. And you know what Tyrone's right? We don't know the rules of this weather feel, Romy. How about we change the game, eh? Two? Poker? Yeah, I'm in. Ah, oh, well played, my friend, well played. Thank you very much, Patrick. Fancy you know that. And why not? Hey, Freddy, not often this fella gives you a chance to win your money back. Hey, Freddy, I'll give you a game of dominoes if you like. Living dangerously as usual, Michael. Pat. Oh. You up for it, Freddy? I'm up for it. Good man. How about we up the stakes? OK. Good job, Freddy. Hey, hey, what are you doing? I'm sure no one will object if I sit in. More than Maria. This is not a good idea. Uh, Michael, are you sure? Eileen. The man alone. Michael. Ace is high to deal. Ideal. Now I know what the invisible woman felt like. Is it not the invisible man? I doubt that very much. Freddy. Fold. Really? Bad luck, mate. Raise your ten. That's more like it. Careful, Gail. Be asking you to break into your piggy bank. I'll do no such thing. Raise another ten. Right, let's see them. Two pair. Okay. Straight flush to the jack. Good, yeah. Very good. Well, come on, what have you got? I think I've got a flush. Oh. <laughs> Only I think it's a royal flush. That better than yours, then? <laughs> Way better. <laughs> <laughs> well played, <mate. laughs> uh, What do you think you're playing at? Poker. Yeah, well, you can't play for money in here. I could have my licence taken away. Sorry, of course, no problem. Listen, um, take back what you put in. You're kidding. I don't play for money anymore. It's not what it's about for me. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Anymore? When did you? I picked up a few skills when I was inside. Yeah, and a few tricks, no doubt. <laughs> Nobody likes a sore loser, Pat. That's true, Michael. Trouble is, I haven't had as much practice as you, have I? Michelle? <clears throat> Whatever these two want, I'll take you home. Don't mind if I do. Can't we just go home? Come on, love. Let's celebrate a bit, eh? <laughs> hey, one good night at cards doesn't alter the fact. You're a loser, and you always will be. Whereas you... But, as the wise man once said, 
Success teaches us nothing. It just kids, the so-called smart people, into thinking they can't lose. But you know what? They can. Yeah, I had an idea for a story. All right, it's a chef. Murders his punters. Serves him up in the restaurant. Gets a Michelin star. <laughs> That's brilliant, that. Yeah. What an imagination. Speciality of the house. Yes, great title. Stanley Ellen, uh, uh, American author, 1940s, I believe. Uh, doesn't have the Michelin star bit, but it's worth a look before you embark. So, just 150, please. Well, we'll take it easy. Right. I guess what's going on, sorry. All right, Pat. Michael, what little treat do you have in store for us today? I'd like to apologise, if I may. My behaviour has been out of order just lately, so if we can put it behind us and move on, eh? But I'm your soft target, Michael. I mean, how will your excitable little tongue resist? There's three witnesses here, if I go back on my word. I mean, we can't go on hurling insults at each other, can we? So what do you say? Live and let live, eh? Time will tell. Two teas, Roy, please. Todd, you couldn't do us a favour, could you? What? I left my electric blanket cable in your house when I used to live there. You couldn't get it for me, could you? Where is it? It'll be upstairs in the cupboard. Well, I've got to be back at work and there's no one in, so... Well, can I go in? It'll only take a minute. I could close the door behind me when I leave if you've got to get off. Didn't you once have a career as a burglar? I'm not going to nick anything now, am I? Oh, come on. I have to buy another blanket. Otherwise, they don't make the cables anymore. All right, OK, fine. Well, listen, just make sure you shut the door behind you. Yeah. OK. And don't make a mess. Right. Everything's all according to plan. I'll tell you what, I will be glad when it's all over. This keeping up pretenses with Eileen is really taking its toll. Yeah, I know, I know. He's a man has to do. Never mind, eh? Won't be long before we're sunning ourselves on that beach in Mexico. <laughs> Good. Great. You? I can't complain. So, flats coming along nicely, are they? We prefer luxury apartments, but yet everything's going to plan. I was thinking of getting one for myself, for uh, Gail and me, maybe. You know, get from under David's feet. Well, Todd's the man to talk to if you want a little love nest for you and Gail. But I'm here now. It's a perfect opportunity for you to sell me a flat. Have you been charging over the odds for a 99? What? Look, mate. I thought you had the cash. I'd chew your ears off about these apartments. Look at the state here. I'm surprised you got enough of that cup of tea. Now, do us a favour, Rodwell. Do you want? <laughs> Pat, mate! I'm just trying to have a chat with you. There's no need to get stressed. I'm not stressing, Rodwell. I've got things to do. Yeah, yeah, of course you have. You know, with the apartments and that. When was it you said that they'd be ready again? Soon. Yeah, but builders are notorious for taking the time, aren't they? Not me, pal. Well, I'm glad to hear it. You know, when I first met you, I thought you were nothing but a two-bit con man. It was a bit too cocky. But I can see I'm going to have to eat my words when this development's finished, aren't I? <laughs> yeah, you are. How much of the deposit again? Fifteen grand. Better go and check my piggy bank then, eh? Think about dimmer switches. I never know which way to turn them, love boy. Thought it could be nice to have them in the flats, you know, give each room a bit of ambiance. Yeah, whatever you think, love. I'd have thought you'd have gone by now, anyway. Uh, are you wanting ready me? Certainly not. Wow. <laughs> but why don't you go and get a bus, a nice chippy tea, and a bottle of red? Oh, you're the right to spoil me. I know. <laughs> I'm not interrupting anything, am I? Oh, Billy. Really? Just caught me being all romantic, eh? Well, I won't tell anyone. So is he uh, gonna make an honest woman out of you, then? Mm, don't know. Mm. Hey, make sure you don't keep him too long, because there's a bottle of red and a beautiful woman waiting for him at home. See you in a bit, love. 
She, uh, she all right with you seeing other women, eh? Listen, Vinny, we've got a problem. It's Rodwell. He knows something. How does he know? Well, I'm not sure yet. But he was over here today being all pally-pally. Something's not right. Why is nothing ever simple with you? Right. I'll deal with it. It's fine. I'll take care of it. You sure? Mm. She know what I think about that smug shrimp. I'd happily shut him up. It's fine. I'll keep him quiet. All right. Well, just make sure you keep his gob shut till Monday. Then we're all and dry. Monday? This is for you. Or should I say, Alan Frost. It's a one-way ticket to the beautiful shores of Cancun. <laughs> You just make sure you pack your factor 50. Because it's nothing but sunshine from here, on it? Yes. Beautiful. Beautiful. Right, I have got a, a soft and fruity red. Well, that's what it says on the label. To be honest, they all taste the same to me. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just kick these boots off and I'm all yours. <laughs> What are you doing with that? Searching for clues. What? I'm just going to hang it up in the hall. What's your problem? I just don't like people going through my stuff, that's all, love. Oh, right. Well, one, I wasn't going through it. I was tidying it up because you left it on the sofa covered in plaster dust. And two, I'm not people. I'm your partner. Why are you being snarky? Sorry, love. I am a grumpy beggar. Oh. Something smells good. Oh, I'm surprised you haven't got an armed guard. <sighs> I'm sorry I snapped last night. Well, no one would think you had the crown jewels in there. Maybe I have. You want to take a look? No time. Look, I'm sorry, love. I was on edge. Somebody wound me up. Oh, that's my fault. No, it's not. No, I'm sorry. Come here. I hate it when we fight. Pinky and Perky. Good boys. <laughs> Sorry, Rita. <laughs> oh, dear. Right. <laughs> no harm done. My fault. I wasn't looking where I was going. Well, neither was I. So we're both to blame. Let's leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> Have either of you seen Gemma today? Only she's not in the show. No. Well, if you do, will you tell her I need to speak to her? Oh, what's she done now? She has won a Good Samaritan Award. Well, good her own. Didn't you win that last year and there were some to do? Let's not go there. Uh, yeah, let's not. Uh, are we are talking about kebab shop, Gemma. Yes. She'll be disappointed she hasn't won, but the presentation's on Monday and Peter Andre will be singing and I know she's a fan. Oh, he is my guilty pleasure. That pop great musician of course well i'm sure there'll be space if you want to come see you bye i was part last night don't start did he mention me only we had words oh that's why he was so wound up you're like a dog with a bone i overheard him on the phone to vinnie he said and i quote keeping up pretenses with eileen is taking its toll won't be long now till we're sunning ourselves on a beach in mexico i don't believe you ask him see how he reacts don't need to do you honestly trust him, Eileen? Is there nothing that doesn't add up? Mayonnaise? No. Yes. No. Last chance. Yes. That's a big dollop. You working here now, Mary? Just helping out for today. Normal dollops will be resumed tomorrow. If my shirts get tight, you're going to sew extra panels in. <laughs> well, if she can't do it, I will. I'm a dab hand with a sewing machine. Is there anything you can't do, Mary? Not much. Unless it involves balls. 
I have astigmatism in my left eye that affects depth perception. Throw as many balls at me as you like. <laughs> I'll never be able to catch or hit them. <laughs> <laughs> we'll remember that. Hello, my sweet. Yeah, I'll just come in to pick up some food. I'll be right back. OK, bye. Hey, stop, thief. You what? You need to pay me for that bacon bomb. Oh. <laughs> Unless, of course, this is a heist. <laughs> So sorry, Mary. My head is all over the place. That should be dead right. <laughs> What's a shame? I've never been in a heist. Mm. Thank you. Bye. Uh, egg mayo, please. You rang, my lady. Uh, you want to go and get yourself some lunch? No, I'm not hungry. <clears throat> oh yeah, go get some more biscuits. Done now. Why did you book me up Monday? Ah, that was meant to be a surprise. I was going to organise you a Christmas shopping trip to London. Maybe a hotel so you could make the most of it. So I could make the most of it? So you're not coming? No, we've got contractors visiting. Me and Vinny will have to wind them down. I'm all very boring. I just, you know, didn't think you'd want to be a part of that. Oh, it's very sweet. I have something I want to do on Monday, so I think I'll leave my uh, Christmas shopping till another day. OK. I just thought it was a nice idea, you know, a nice treat for you. I know when you're lying, Pat. First, you're hiding something in the rucksack, and now you want me out of the way. And well, why would I want that? Mexico mean anything to you? Mexico? We'll be lying on a beach in Mexico. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm oh, sorry, I was just... Uh... We'll continue this conversation later, love. So we're private. Have you been to the site to check on your flight yet? Um, no, no. Todd says it's all going to plan. Is everything all right? Only well, Jenny has one of them flats. Well, Todd doesn't know everything, does he? Like the fact that Phelan is planning a trip away. Well, so? It's a bit odd, isn't it? Well, everybody needs a break. Yeah, I trust Todd. Is this about Mexico? How do you know? Eileen asked him about it. Did she? Yeah, and I'm not one to gossip, but he keeps booking days off behind the back and hiding something in his rucksack. Anyway, listen, don't, don't, don't say it to Eileen, will you? No. Uh, service? No, no, it, it, it can wait. All right, there you are, love. We need to finish our little chat. About Mexico? Yeah, we do. And get us a drink. Yeah, you do that. Pint, please, love. You promised. Big rucksack you've got there, Pat. Oh, you know what they say about big rucksacks? Yeah. You can hide things in them. And what would I be hiding? You just slipped out, sorry. Perhaps you could show us. I don't have to show you anything. So you have got something to hide. Let's have a look in No! No. I really don't want to do this here. Tough. So it wasn't quite how I planned it, but... Eileen, will you marry me? Well? What's he doing? Has he dropped him out? No way. Come on, love, put me out of my misery. My knees kill me. Of course I'll marry you, idiot. Get <laughs> off. <laughs> oh, blimey. Oh, I wasn't expecting that. Oh, no. I'm sure it was the oh. right size. I get it changed. Matty, you could have given me a hula hoop. Mm. Wish you'd have told me that. Oh. Congratulations. It's a bit uh, unexpected. Well, I was overwhelmed by my feelings, so. All makes sense now. I was going to propose on Monday night. And Mexico? 
couldn't think of a better place for the honeymoon. Well, to be too fair, it was Vinny's idea. I've asked him to be my best man, by the way. This is uh, it's big news. It's like a brand new future, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I love your mother. All I want is to make her happy. <laughs> I think this calls for champagne. Um, Tim was just buying some, actually. Oh, yeah, lucky me. Hey, maybe Michael could split it with me. Ooh, we could have a wedding. <laughs> <laughs> To the happy couple. Thank you. Cheers. 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 Cheers, Cheers. Cheers Mom. Thank you, darling. Very exciting. Mm -hmm. Hey, you're not having second thoughts about us, are you? No, of course I'm not. Eh, uh, not the only happy couple, it seems. Uh, uh, how long has this been going on? Hmm? Uh, what, a few weeks now? Uh, I thought you told me everything. I do. I just, I wanted to be sure for. Oh, it's just so much romance in there. Young love, nightmare. I'm so glad I'm over 40 and know my own mind. <laughs> Gary, really pleased you found a woman who will change your life, just like I have. Oh. Well, I'm sorry, everyone, but I now have to go and kiss my fiance. <laughs> Unless we don't have to watch. <laughs> Amen to that. Hey, uh, what's going on here? Don't pretend you don't know. He told me Mexico was your idea. Like you said, Vinny. That's a place. For a honeymoon. Thank you. It wasn't a proposal I had planned, but this one here, she got wind I was hiding something, so I had to come clean. Mm. Come on, you. Get us a bottle of champagne. What are you playing at? She found out about Mexico. I had to do something. Right, the plan still goes ahead. Monday is cut and run. Obviously. Did she get my answer for a message? Laughing boy over there, sniffing around the site this morning. I've lost me phone. Must have dropped out of my pocket at the builders' yard. I haven't had a chance to look for you. Yeah, well, Pinky and Perky saw him off. He's still being pretty nosy, though. He's just making shadows. Do you know, I really think that as buyers, you should be visiting the site. Should we? No, no, it's all going to plan. Well, you know, if I'd invested the kind of money you have, I'd want to see it for myself. That's a good point. In fact, you could go with them, Gary. You know, your expertise would come in handy. <laughs> oh, I can assure you, it's all, it's all bang on schedule, so... You can definitely release the cash for our trip. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. What is the schedule? Um, I'm not really sure offhand, but I'll, I'll check tomorrow. So, what stage of the building works at now, exactly? Well, you know, feeling's a person to talk to about specifics, because uh, I'm not a builder, so... Have they finished the plumbing? <clears throat> it's not really my department. Oh. Sorry, I've just got to get this text. Sorry. I really think that you two, Rita, Jenny, in fact, all the buyers, should demand a visit as soon as possible. Get answers to all this. Yeah, I think you're right. Oh, what's the homework? Anything I can help with? Maths, algebra. Maybe not. Now, if it were chemistry, <laughs> believe it or not, I were really good at chemistry. I think I just like putting things together and watching them fizz and change colour. Oh, I remember this one Seven. time that... Oh. I weren't really doing that. It's just for show. You said you had something for me. I nicked it. Did you? Where are you from? Some bloke, out under his nose. He didn't see me. We get a few quid for this, you know. That's what I thought. Right, we'll take this guy now tomorrow. Split the profits. Pat. What are you playing at? I'm, uh, I'm drowning out there. Eh? Why didn't you answer me text? Oh, I've, uh, I've lost my phone. Oh, Michael is telling everyone to visit the site. They're all up for it, even Billy. Just tell me what to do. Meet me and Billy in the backyard, five minutes. Five minutes? What am I supposed to do for five minutes? I found Sarah and Gary right up. You can see they have nothing. He hasn't. It's all hot air. What are we going to tell them? 
Hey. Tell them we'll have an open day on Thursday. We'll have a grand tour and a Q and A for all the buyers. What are we going to show him? I don't know. I have some machinery. A digger. Get some lads in. Made the place look busy. Yeah, you big it up as much as you like. Tell them to invite all the friends, all the family. Yeah, and if they get pushy before then, tell them it's um, a health and safety thing. We need to make the site secure. Yeah, I think you can handle that. Yeah. Good lad. Not long to go now. Nearly there. Hey, darling. Hiya. What do you fancy for your tea? Well, it's all right. I'll do it. You sit down. Oh, you're an angel. What's that? Oh, it's just my phone. I changed it in the tongue. I mean, um, Seb's phone. I forgot you had it. Let me see. Bye. I found it on the floor. You stole it. I didn't. Did Seb put you up to this? N no, it was all me. You're in big trouble. What are you going to do? I don't know. Mum, please. Go to your room. What are you going to do? I don't know. Go to your room or I'm calling the police. Tell Jenny. Such a shame Alex couldn't get one of those yes. flats. No, I'll come too. Why? It was just to keep you company. <laughs> all right, okay. Well, look, I'll uh, give you all the details on Monday. Funny how you just come up with this now. Well, we're responding to demand. What's the problem with that? Look, you're obviously concerned about the building work, so come down on Thursday. See for yourself. You really surprised me today. Did I? Who'd have thought I'd be sat here? Looking at an engagement ring that doesn't fit. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at an engagement ring that doesn't fit with being the happiest I've ever been in my life. Love you, Pat Beelan. I love you too. And I'm sorry. For what? You deserve better. Give over. It's true. You make me feel safe. First time in my life that I'm not worried about the future. some help? No. Fine. You took your time. I've been trying to get hold of you all day. Yeah, well, I would have got here earlier, only I promised Gail that I'd go and look at some venues, you know, for renewing our vows. I mean, all we need is a room with some chairs, but before I knew where I was, oh. I was knee-deep in chocolate fountains. One place had a ha-ha. <laughs> I don't even know oh. what a ha-ha is. Right, well, just <laughs> never mind all that. <laughs> look. <sighs> Recognise this? It's not mine. No. It's Pat Phelan's. What? How did you get hold of it? Well, it doesn't matter. But, uh, Vinny's left a message on it. You frightened him to death. You did pitching up at the site like that. They're definitely hiding something. He's having a good old chuckle about what they need for the stuff for the interiors. In, yeah. I don't follow. Mm. He's having a laugh. Because there ain't going to be any interiors. Because there ain't going to be any flats. You were right. <sighs> we need to get this to the police. N no, no, it was just the drift of what they were saying. Nah, we need something more solid before we go to the police. For the sake of Rita, Sarah. For the sake of getting shot of that man once and for all. <laughs> Are you missing Summit? Not you, that's for sure. <sighs> Look at the state of you. You better get back to the British Museum. King Tut's gonna be missing you. I need to see you tonight. Oh, going a bit too fast for me, Anna. No offence, love. You're not really my type anymore. I like me baking well done, not me winning. Can you come to the flat when you finish work? 
I want to talk to you. Now, what could you possibly have to say that I'd want to hear? Oh, you'd be interested in this. Believe me. Okay. Nefertiti. I'm prepared to be intrigued. I have got plans for Christmas, you know. I thought you weren't coming. Yeah, well, not all about you, is it, Anna? The world doesn't revolve around Anna Winder. Yeah, but it did for you, didn't it? Once upon a time. <laughs> Don't flatter yourself, Anna. You were never more than an entertaining sideline, and actually not that entertaining in the end. And that was before you got your backside brew laid. Anyway, I haven't got time for memory lane. My tea's gonna be on the table. Say what you gotta say. Make it quick. Um, what can I do for you? Can I bring my truck in? I've got some palace of tiles for you. Huh? Yeah, I meant to come Thursday, but I had a drop this way, so I thought I'd swing by on the off chance that someone would still be here. I did try and ring a couple of times. Yeah, uh, uh, don't worry. Th that's fine. Tiles, did you say? Yeah. Bathroom tiles. 30 grand's worth. I wouldn't give them house room myself, but no accounting for people's taste, eh? <laughs> no. The last few months, they've been hell for me having to look across the road at you. Oh, I've told you, Anna. I'm not interested in any way I'm spoken for. Me and Eileen got engaged. Oh, didn't you know? I wondered why we never got a card off you. You try not to be too disappointed, eh? The sight of you makes me flesh crawl. <laughs> I'd rather not think about your flesh. Yeah, well, I don't want to look at you any more than you want to look at me. Well, get to the flaming point. Stop wasting my time. You're wasting your time shouting at me. You can't intimidate me. Oh, can I? I mean, granted, you haven't got any looks to lose anymore, but it must be awfully sore under them bandages. You don't frighten me. But you do make me feel physically sick, and I want you gone. Well, you better put a contract out on me. That's the only way I'm leaving town, darling. I've got it too good here. Spoken like a true parasite. You're just using Eileen. Three meals a day in a warm bed, nothing more. Yeah, but well, believe me, nobody would stay with Eileen for a cooking. I don't mind anything else. So it's love, is it? <sighs> nah, didn't think so. I don't think you could love anybody. I'm not loving this, so ta da. No, wait, 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 wait! I've got two grand together. It's, it's took some doing, but it's yours if you agree to go. Two grand? Yeah. Wow. There's an offer you don't get every day. A whole 2K. Two large ones, two bags of sand. I mean, how could I spend it all? Oh, Ten-year-old Mondeo, maybe. Fortnight in Benidorm, self-catering. Mm, possibly. <laughs> Hardly life-changing, Anna. Hey. Eh? If you sling your rock, it'll change my life, and it's two grand more than you've got now. So, do you know, I won't be so quick to chuck it back in my face. Listen, no matter how fast I went, it wouldn't take very long, would it? Unless it's all in pennies. It's not all in pennies, is it, Anna? 
Don't tell me you've smashed little Faye's piggy bank. Oh, look, just take it or leave it. Well, I think I'm not basis. I'll leave it. I think that might be for me. tables in the cafe. Careful, Anna. If that conk of yours gets any longer, you'll have my eye out. I'll try again. It's true. And anyway, I'd ought to justify myself to you. Hello, mate. I had a missed call from this number about ten minutes ago. Yeah, that's right. I thought they were being delivered on Thursday. Whoa, 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 whoa. Who let you in? What bloke? What did he look like? And how old would you say he was? Was he still there when you left? No, 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 everything's fine, mate. Thanks. Bye. Funny, that. Some fair-haired bloke in his 60s just taking delivery of a load of tiles down at the building site. Any idea who that might be? Nope. Come on, Anna. What's the game? Don't know what you're on about. Yes. Yes, you do. <laughs> this whole thing stunk to high heaven. I should have guessed with you. You must be losing your touch in your old age. Don't! Don't you dare push it any more than you already have. You are so gonna regret crossing me. You and little Mikey Rodwell. Evening. Coronation Street continues in half an hour. I'm scared of you. That's funny. Your mate Anna said pretty much the same thing. She was lying and all. If you've hurt her. What? What are you going to do, Michael? That's right, nothing. Now, I could just call the police. You won't go to the police. It's all here in black and white. You were going to disappear to Mexico with innocent people's money, weren't you? Alan. I've got you back to rights this time. OK. That being the case, what do you think happens now? Um. No, no, um, just stop a sec, hey? You, you can take this ticket and make a run for it. As long as you're gone, I don't care. You OK with me running off with dinner some people's money? Well, no, obviously. But at least you'll be... Stuck in Cancun without a peso to my name. Can't say that appeals. I know you. You're not a murderer. You don't have to go to Mexico. I'll let you go to the police and confess. It's very decent of you, Michael. 
that go easier on you. There's a world of difference between getting sent down for fraud and sent down for murder. Bigger difference in being sent down and not being sent down at all. I'm sorry, Michael. I try and make it quick. What's up? Don't say anything, but Michael's in trouble. What kind of trouble? The flats are a scam. Michael's gone down to the site office to try and get some more proof, but feeling's on to us. He's gone down there after him. Have you tried reading it? He's not picking up. There's no telling what feeling's gonna do. Oh, we've got to tell the police. No, we can't. Michael's breaking and entering. He'll go straight back to prison. Michael! Come on, Michael, you're only making it worse for yourself. No! Please! Please, not now! Well, whatever it is, we shouldn't get involved. We've had enough trouble lately. You don't like Gary. No, that's not true. I just don't think it's ideal, you and him getting it together right now, but uh, birds flown, hasn't it? Anyway, I told him, after all you've been you through, told the last him. thing... But what, what did you tell him? Well, somebody had to mark his card. Mum, I'll decide what I need and I don't need you. Shouldn't be sticking your oar in. Oh, don't worry, I won't be doing it again. Can't risk upsetting him now. And neither can you. In case he blows the whistle. Uh, it's about the size of it, yeah. What kind of basis is that for a relationship? If I can't argue with him, can't walk away if I want to, you're as good as saying that I'm trapped. No, that's exactly what I'm saying. Because unless and until Gary calls it quits, you're trapped, all right? We all are. You're going to have to stop doing this to me, Michael. I'll be getting a complex. Please. Please help, help me. I'll take those. I like to keep my paperwork in order. Do you know what Napoleon used to say? That he liked his generals to be lucky. Napoleon would have loved me. I'd have been a flaming field marshal. <laughs> but you, two nil off, five minutes to go, and you still managed to blow it. <coughs> I win again. <laughs> but you're right, Michael. I'm not a murderer. Just too soft, you see. When I was a kid, I had an air rifle. And one day I went out to the country. Well, I say country, it was Croxton Country Park. <laughs> anyway, I shoot this rabbit. And there was a hare, I'm not sure of the difference. Anyway, the shot didn't kill it. It's so I went over. And I'm looking at it, twitching, making these funny breathing noises. It's a rasping. This blood bubble coming out of its mouth. And I won't lie to you, Michael, it wasn't a pretty sight. And I should have... I should have killed it. I was suffering. But could I, now that I was right up close? No. It wasn't in me, you see. So I just sat there. Just watching it struggle. Till it died. I felt really bad, Michael. Because it was my doing, you know, but 
I mean, not this time. It just so happens your time's up. And like I say, Napoleon would have loved me. No, 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 don't get up. I'll just leave you to it. I'm going to clear up some of that mess you made. I'll check in with you later. Don't you wander off now. No sign of Michael. Feeling seemed pretty cool. Yeah, well, you know him. If he had any more front, they'd build a flaming pier off him. Well, I'll see what more we can do. No, Michael was there. He took delivery of some tiles and then feeling has gone to get him and now he's not answering his phone. And what do you want me to do? Join the dots together for you. Mum, you said yourself that you weren't answering when you called him earlier before feeling could even have arrived. Mm. He's lying. Oh, maybe not. Maybe Michael did do a runner after that delivery, let's face it. He thought feeling more building the flats, then a bloke arrives with a load of tiles, it doesn't add up. No, there'll be some explanation. But they're not building anything at that site, believe me. I do, I do, I do. Look, I'm gonna head back, see if he's gone home. Before we know, he found what he was after and got off before feeling arrived. I hope so. God, I hope so. I'll see you in a bit. All right, darling, love you. Have been home by now. You know, it's not like him to not answer his phone. He knows how I worry. Oh, I'm sure he's fine. He probably just got talking to someone. You know what he's like. Probably having a game of darts or something. Mm, probably. Not in my look. It's just that, um, well, tonight just. It wasn't any old dinner. Oh. I did wonder why we we're having a roast midweek. Why was the occasion? I found his wedding ring in his things the other day, so I. Took it to the jewellers, got it polished, and I was going to give it to him tonight, ask him to start wearing it again. Well, you can give it him tomorrow. Yeah. I'll just give him another ring. What are you doing calling me at this ungodly hour? Were you sleeping? Of course I was asleep. What time is it? It's five o'clock in the morning. Listen, I was trying to ring you all last night. I was busy. We don't fly till this evening. But we've had an unforeseen problem, so to speak. You surprised me. I had a visitor last night at the site. Michael Broad. He was onto us, Vinny. Onto everything. But I swear to you, I never laid a hand on him. I'm just saying, things might not look so rosy this morning. Things like what? He's no longer onto us. I see. It'll be better if we leave before they find him, so. Let's think about getting an earlier flight, eh? Look, just leave the house as not, and then lie low for the afternoon. Patrick, this time tomorrow we'll be laid on a beach in Mexico sipping margaritas. Just... Just be at mind for our fault. Are you sure the passports are OK? Patrick? Adios. Adios.
Michael, where are you? I'm beyond worried. It's past six o'clock in the morning, and just let me know that you're OK, will you? I don't care where you are or what you've done. I love you. It is me. It's, it's Gail. Still nothing. I hope his battery's gone flat. There's pair phones. He won't have my numbers in his head. So you didn't come home, then? I thought I heard something in the middle of the night. I thought it was the front door, but it was Sarah. Yeah, I've been up three times in the night with Harry. I don't know why he's sleeping so badly. I mean, no text, no phone call. What's happened to him? Another woman? David! I'm only saying what you're all thinking. Eileen? Mum, he will not have gone off with another woman, and if he had, it wouldn't be Eileen. Well, how else do you explain it? Maybe he's been arrested. Arrested? What for? Well, in case you forgot, he used to rob houses. This one for a kickoff. That's behind him, and you know it. What have you tried, Andy? Maybe he's just crashed there with them. Too drunk and too embarrassed to come home. Give him a piece of my mind if he was. Oh, Todd, everything is going my way. I have 100% job satisfaction. And I have the man of my filthiest dreams. Good, Mum, please. Mm -hmm. but... I'm getting married, then he's taking me on holiday. Oh, and I've um, been having a look at wedding dresses. Do you want to see what I've got in mind? I'm not your daughter, Mum. I'm just gay, all right? <laughs> mm. <laughs> what about after, eh? After finally Mrs. Feeling after your lovely holiday. Maybe we'll get a cat. Have you, uh, you spoke to Vinny this morning, Pat? No, I haven't. Why would I? When are we pulling the plug on this? Okay, what's happening with the open day? What is the plan? The plan is to hold your horses. I'll speak with Vinny later. People have to be told. And they will be told. Don't worry. Oh, and on them. Is that we? Who needs this, Jump? Where are you going? Hawaii. Oh, take me with you. I will be coming back. Oh, if you see the landlord, tell him, will you? I never even knew your name. Terminal 2, mate, please. Right then, I'll best be off. I'll come with you. How could you be looking at those towels they delivered yesterday? No. I mean, I don't think it's a good idea. I mean, it's a right tip down here. Like it's a building site. But on that note, I've got a couple of meetings there today. Looks like we can finally break ground next week. Fantastic. I'll uh, spread the word. OK, so uh, why don't you two work from home today, both of you? Have a good day. All the best. So, tonight's the night. Peter Andre, here you come. No, I couldn't get any tickets. Oh. Hey, do you know what? I am... Um, I am going to go to the office because I've left some paperwork. So, see you later. Bye, lovey. Hello?
All right, Jace, how's it going? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. They're not uh, far off starting now. Uh, properly, I mean. Yeah, yeah, she's fine. She, um, she, she wants a cat. So. <laughs> yeah. No, no, can, can, I, can I just call you back, though? Because I'm just in the middle of summer. Yeah, y you are? Yeah, Beach, yeah, well, um, send me a photo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love you too, mate, yeah. Yeah, all right, bye. Please, please. And the door was open. I left everything exactly as I found it. So what is it that you do here, Mr. Grimshaw? I sell apartments, the, um, the building new block of flats, so... I was brought on board to shift him. And you're sure that it's Michael? Yeah, Rodwell, yeah, I'm sure. He, um, he lives on the same street as me. He used to go out with my mum. But not anymore. I mean, not before he died. And you got no idea what he was doing here? No, uh, no, no. Uh, uh, but my mum works here, and they still got on all right, so maybe he was coming to see her. But he doesn't get on with my mum's current boyfriend, who also works here, so, so there's that. And he had a, I know he had a bad heart. He had an uh, operation about one or two years ago, so. And what about this? Any reason to think it might have been him? But look, I'm not one to speak ill of the dead. But he did have a record. What for? Burglary. Hmm. I'm doing Ryan Cathy's wedding. Oh, maybe you'll do mine. Mm. What about you? Have you seen him? Michael? No, not since you asked me this morning. I should go on. Mum, you've left a message on the door, and if he sees it, he'll come here. Well, maybe I should call the police. What are they going to say? Is how old has been missing since when? Yeah, well, if it gets any later, though. Hmm? You seem worried. I'll turn up sooner or later. Oh, sorry. Hi, Todd. Come on, let's be having you. Don't trip up on stage. I try my best. <laughs> You're not seeing Johnny tonight. No, I think I'll just stay in here. Right. Come on. I can't do it, Vita. I'm too nervous. Nervous? Don't be absurd. What is it, Ali? Are you sure? Just keep in touch. Gone, Petal. You what, love? The fella who lives there. Gone where? On his holidays. What time is this, love? First thing this morning. Eight o'clock. Seemed like he was in a rush. Is he a friend of yours? What? Yeah. No. I never even knew his name. Although I did put my bins out the once. Did he say where he was going? Hawaii. Hawaii? Not Mexico? Mexico? No, no. He definitely said Hawaii. He would dress for it as well. Thanks, love. I'm sorry. The number you are calling is no longer available. Coronation Street continues in half an hour. It's Michael, isn't it? Todd found him this afternoon. Found him? By the site office. 
called an ambulance. <laughs> oh, Ali. It looks like it was a heart attack. The second letter of my password is T. You said the fourth? The fourth? The fourth is W. Yeah. Well, what you can do for me today is tell me how much money is in the account. Uh, no, 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 no. There must be some mistake. This is a business account. And this morning it was considerably more than that. Has there been a withdrawal this afternoon? How much? Long, did it? You know how they met, don't you? He robbed her. Next news, they're engaged. Well, it takes all sorts, I suppose. She was devoted. Feeling has got something to do with this. What makes you say that? What are you suggesting? He's he's in shock. I mean, we all are. <gasps> you heard about the one before him? No. Mm -hmm. David went out with his daughter. Got himself into terrible debt. I have just bought the bargain of the century. <gasps> oh, any news? Yeah, not as hard as living with Pat Phelan. All right, Mum, let's get you upstairs, yeah? Can you not give it a rest today of all days? Why, what's so special about today? You've not heard? I heard what? About Michael. What about him? Todd found him this morning. He died sometime last night. It's not your fault. Of course it's my fault. We don't know when it happened. Look, Phelan knew that he was there, and the next thing we know, Michael's dead. But I went there. I saw Phelan, there was no sign of Michael. It must have happened later, and maybe Phelan wasn't there. I didn't see any signs of a break-in. No, we're better off staying out of this, Mum. Oh, how can we stay out of it? They all think it was a heart attack. Well, maybe it was. Oh, wake up, Gary! It, uh, Michael might have found what he was looking for. Maybe Phelan caught him. No, we're just guessing. No, we're telling the police. I'm going to shout it from the rooftops if I have to. Phelan was involved. Nothing stacks up. I'm going to prove it. Where's my phone? I'm calling the police. Go on, where's my... Get my phone. Get my phone. Jason phone today. What did he say? Nothing much. No, I said I'd call him back. It was like the second that I found Michael, so... Did you tell him? No, I didn't want to worry him. Not even spoke to the police or you about it, so... He said he was at, um, beach party or something. What do you think Michael was after? It's not as if we keep any money on the side or, for that matter, any valuables. I uh, just no idea. That's not answering his phone. Have you spoken to him? No. I've had thousands of messages. Well, he'll, uh, he'll be home soon. Oh, Michael. What on earth was he thinking? Check in. 
Okay. Yeah. Was it him? Of course it was him. Fine, you didn't have to be like that. Is he okay? No, I suppose we should think about getting you somewhere to eat, my love. You must be famished. No, I, I can't think about food. Uh, should we get fish and chips? Yeah, if I give you the money, um, can you go? No, I'll pay. Well, it's all right, Gran. I've got this. No, look, I'll get the fish and chips. I can afford it. No, I insist. I said it first. Would you please just take the money? He'd gone back to get an electric blanket and he was coming down the stairs when he heard Phelan on the phone and he was talking to Vinny. Um, Vinny's the other bloke who helps run the company. And, um, and he was saying, and I might not have this word for word, but he was saying, it's hard work pretending to like Eileen, but it won't be long before we're in sunny Mexico. And Michael Roswell told you this? We share a mutual loathing. Shared. What do you think he meant? Well, Michael thought that they were ripping people off, you know, like the apartments weren't even going to be built. He wasn't sure, but he knew something wasn't right. And then I heard um, a voicemail on Phelan's phone that backed that up. Like I said, uh, my daughter, she picked his phone up by mistake. What did this voicemail say? It was Finney. And he was laughing because there was never going to be any interiors in them flats. And, and well, and then I heard um, another voicemail from Vinny saying that that well, Michael he'd been sniffing around the site, but it was okay because the dogs had seen him off. So is that why you got Mr. Feel into your flat so Michael could go back there? Yeah, I know it was stupid. He's not involved in any of this, by the way. Well, that's not quite true. But anyway, then, um, like I told you, his phone, it went off in my pocket and that's when he realised. Yeah, so I, uh, I went to the office after that. I feel him was there, but he just played dumb and there was, there was no sign of Michael. You need to talk to him, you know, make him tell you everything about them flats. M make him show you the paperwork, M make him tell you how much people have put down when they're going to be built. M you know, make him tell you when the last time that he spoke to Michael Rodwell. Make him take a lie detector. Right, ma ma no, Gary, I feel like they're not taking us seriously. We're very grateful for all the information. No, do you know what? I am putting my neck on the line here. That man is an animal. And heart attack or no heart attack, I'm telling you now, Pat Phelan is involved. Yeah, I will talk to him. No! Please don't let him get away with this. Don't let him palm you off. Michael Rodwell was on to him. He knew that something wasn't right, and now he's paid for it with his life. Mrs. Windass. No! No! I won't be Mrs. Windass like I'm some bitter old egg with an axe to grind. I could tell you a lot more about that Pat Phelan. Much, much more. And I'm telling you now, if you don't do something about this, I'm not going to be responsible for my actions. Well, thanks for your time, guys. Thank you. No, thank you. You've got our time. Pat, is that you? Yes, love. I'm sorry. Um, I've been down to the uh, Cat Rescue Centre. I think some inquiries for you. Everything OK? Have you not listened to your messages? Well, I haven't yet. No, love, because I'd left my phone at the yard. I'm going to get hold of you all afternoon. What's happened? Michael's dead. Michael? Michael, Michael. Gail's Michael. Why? How? This is terrible. Today, well, last night, Todd found him this afternoon. He was near the site office. Near our site office? What on earth was he doing there? Breaking in. Come again? He was trying to rob us. Why? It's a million dollar question. Have we got a million dollar answer? Oh, nobody. At least not yet, they haven't, but the police are looking into it. OK, what, what did you say to them? I said that we, we knew him and that he had a criminal record. Exactly. I mean, what? <sighs> what a chance. What did he think he was going to find in there? You know, the world's most precious stapler. A diamond-encrusted pencil sharpener, I mean... I don't think I'm ready to laugh about it just yet. I'm sorry, love, but it does somewhat diminish my sympathy for him, knowing he was going to steal from us. They reckon he had a, a massive heart attack. Yeah, well... Probably all the excitement, isn't it? Fancy getting back into that game when you've got a dodgy ticker. Hmm. So 
So you didn't you didn't see him last night? Me? No. I'll tell you what, though, now you mentioned it last night, I'll tell you who I did see. And you know what? It's funny, because I thought it was odd at the time. Came to the site office, Gary Windass. What did he want? Like he was... He was looking for my Why? Absolutely no idea. Well, I'm sure we'll find out sooner or later. When someone dies in mysterious circumstances, it usually comes out in the wash. It does. Going to bed. Will you make me a hot water bottle? I'll bring it up, love. Night, Mum. Night. Start talking. Michael is the least of our worries. Michael, you knew the truth. Michael is dead. How is that the least of our worries? Okay. And where, where's Vinny? I tried phoning him, but, but the line's dead. Will you just be quiet for a second? This is what I'm trying to tell you. Vinny's gone. Vinny's gone, gone? Where? I don't know. He's gone. And so has all our money. How come you didn't know? How come you didn't know? No. Pat, he was your mate. Not my mate, my business partner. And he reeled me in. No, you were in this together. I thought we all were. No, Pat, I don't believe you. You know, another thing, you know where he is. Yeah, I do know where he is. He's on his way to Hawaii. He's cleaned us out, Todd. He's taken the lot. Yeah. Then you're going to split the money, aren't you? And do what, Todd? Ride off into the sunset together. He's already gone. On the same day? that I find a body on the site. Well, maybe Vinny had something to do with that. I don't know. I'm as much in the dark as you are. Pat! Sorry, love, we're disturbing you. Where's my old water bottle? I'll bring it up now. Oh, hurry up. My feet are like blocks of ice. I'll tell you what, Pat. If you're lying to me... I'd be long gone, wouldn't I? But I'm not. I'm here, making a hot water bottle for your mother. He shafted us, Todd. He's left us holding the baby. What are we going to do? What are we going to tell my brother? What, what are we going to tell my mother, eh? I wish I had an answer. But for now, you're going to have to excuse me. Your mum's feet are like blocks of ice. Good, Pat. I don't know who you're putting on a show for, though. Not you. Half expected to find a cowboy builder shaped dent in the sofa this morning. What? Thought you'd done a runner and all. Told you, besides, where would I run? Can't even afford a bus ticket. Yeah. At least you've not lost 65 grand, like Jason. Have you told her? No, Jason? Because don't think I'm going to do it. You got us into this mess, Stanley. You're right, love. Good morning. Oh, you stink of booze. Yeah, not one of my best decisions. Whiskey for breakfast. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Gail's doing the same thing. I still don't understand why Michael would break into the site office. Well, he was a burglar, Mum. <clears throat> If you two know anything, now would be a good time to tell me. Oh, come on, love. You know what he was like. You get a bee in his bonnet, he go, you know. Did he know something I didn't? No. Right, well, I'm, uh, I've got to go over and see Gail. Well, you don't have to go. Let me make you a bit of breakfast. Oh, like I could eat at this time. No, I'm going to check on Gail. OK, see you in a bit of... So what happened there? You saw her. She's upset about Michael. Mm. So one bit of bad news at a time, yeah? I'll tell her. The thing I don't get is... I... <laughs> How are you let Vinny shaft you? That's easy. I trusted him. Schoolboy error. Jason trusted you. 
Me mum trusted you. We've all lost everything. I'll get it. Morning. Great to see Patrick Phelan. Is he home? Uh, yeah. Oh, come on. I want to talk to you. Okay. Sit down. I've been expecting you. Excuse me, do you work here? Yeah, but we're not open today. I'm just cancelling some appointments. But uh, if you want to make an appointment for later on in the week. Yeah. Can I come in? Yeah, that's where we keep the appointment book. You didn't see her? See what? Tracy Barlow, staring at us with some proper weird look in her eye. She was staring at me. Oh, are you? And why would she be staring at you? No! No! Right, tell me everything. I mean everything. Have you worked here long? Seems like forever. Has it changed much? Changed how? I don't know. Looks like it's been like this for a long time. Yeah, well, we haven't had any complaints. I can uh, fit you in next Friday if you want. Do you remember who owned it before you? My gran owns it, not me. What's she called? What? Have these chairs always been here? Yeah, look, I've got stuff to do. Do you want an appointment or not? No, I think I'm fine. All right, well, don't worry about wasting my time or all. Sorry. There you go. Oh, thanks, Lou. Sorry, Andy, do you want one? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm fine. Such a shock. Look, are they sure it was a heart attack? Oh, that's what it's looking like. We all did everything we could to encourage him to have a healthier lifestyle. Oh. Well, I don't understand this. Why was he at the building site? I mean, what was he doing there? Mum, just don't think about it because it's just going to upset you again. I'll get that. What about Pat? What about him? Well, would he know why he was there? Afraid not. Are you sure? I asked him earlier. He's got no idea. I think I might be able to shed a bit of light on that. What? Why Michael was at the building site. It was because I sent him. So you've no idea why Mr. Rodwell was visiting the site? None at all. Maybe I can help. <clears throat> we have a statement from Anna Windas that you were in her flat the night that Mr. Rodwell died and that you left for the site intending to do him harm. Anna Windas. Anna Windas. <laughs> you ask anyone around here what Anna Windas thinks of me. I won't bore you with the history, but she's had it in for me from day one, so... What I can say with absolute certainty is, when I left that site, there was no sign of a break-in and there was no sign of Michael Rodwell. Maybe you could help us with something else. I will, if I can. Vincent Ashford, your business partner. We'd like to talk to him, but so far we haven't been able to contact him. You're not the only one who would like to talk to Vincent Ashford. In fact, if I could get my hands on him, you'd have another dead body to investigate. Excuse me? Well, I'm not entirely sure of the details, but from what I can gather, he's emptied out our bank accounts and left the country, leaving yours truly to carry the can. You know what the real tragedy is here? I think Michael was on to his little plan. Frankly, I wish I'd have listened to him. So you can see, I'd be quite keen to talk to Vincent Ashford myself. Well, as soon as we found out that the development was a scam, we knew we had to do something. A scam? There is no scam. Really? 
because when Faye accidentally picked up Pat's phone, there was a voicemail on it from Vinny, and he was laughing about decorating the interiors. He was laughing because there weren't going to be any interiors, because there wasn't going to be any flats. <laughs> what? Yeah, Michael told me he thought the whole thing was dodgy. Yeah, and I heard him telling Pat that he was worried about Michael sniffing around. You've always had it in for Pat. Can you not give it a rest out of some respect? And you discussed all this with Michael. So... Why didn't you say anything sooner? We needed proof. I just want to know the truth. Michael, he went to the site because he was determined to prove that the whole thing was a con. Oh, please, Anna. Michael went to the site to try and get some evidence. What evidence? I don't know. Um, paperwork, contracts, anything. We knew that nobody would believe us unless we had proof. Yeah, but you didn't get any proof. Well, only because Vinny and Phelan must have found out what Michael was doing and they stopped him. What do you mean, stopped him? This is a ridiculous accusation. Is it? I know what that man's capable of. She is a vindictive woman. She is living in cloud cuckoo land. Michael died of a heart attack. Yeah. But who was with him, Gail? Who helped bring it on? You. That's who. You put a load of daft ideas in his head. You sent him there. You put him under that stress. You pushed and pushed with a string of lies. If anyone's got Michael's blood on their hands, it's you, Anna. OK, can both of you just stop it now, please? Sorry, Gail. Mr. Fielder. Thanks, Mr. Thank you. Thanks. What did the police say? Oh, it was just routine. Routine? Yeah. OK. How's the girl? Grieving. Tying herself in knots, trying to work out what Michael was doing at the site office. You sure you don't know? Yes, I'm sure. Just that when Anna turned up, she reckoned she had all the answers. Apparently, Michael and Anna were absolutely sure that the whole development was just one big scam. Why would she think that? Any ideas? <laughs> because it's true. I trusted you with my son's money. And everything would have been fine, except for Vinny. Anna! Claims she heard a voicemail on your phone with Vinny saying there weren't going to be any flats. On my phone? My phone? If that were true, you'd think she'd do something about it. She's making it up. She hates me. Michael hated me and Vinny shafted me. I'm a victim here. No, wait, wait. Jason is the real victim. Where here. is Vinny? If I knew, I wouldn't be here. So it's gone? All of it? He's emptied the accounts. What, what, Left what, us with nothing. What about the police? I've told them the whole story. They're looking for Vinny now, but... Oh, I wouldn't hold your breath. This was the best chance that Jason had of a decent future. Something real he could come home for. That was his hope, that was my hope, that he would have something good! Love, I will do everything, everything that I can. You have lost Jason's money! This was my fault. I know. Jason won't blame you. Really? Well, he should blame me. For being so stupid to listen to your promises. No risk. We'll make a killing. Please tell me that you had nothing to do with Michael's death. Love, I swear. No way. And, Mum, you have to believe me. I don't know what to believe! Anna was right. No, love. I want you to get out. Look, love, this is... I said get out!
Is he gone? He's back in a bag. I'm sorry. For once, I don't think you were the major player. Am I wrong? We had no idea what Vinny was up to, Mum. I sure know how to pick him, don't I? How am I going to tell Jason? How am I going to hold my head up high when all the people who've been ripped off start banging on my door? So he's just sitting there, staring at the salon. Maybe he wants an haircut. That's the thing, he said he wants an haircut, so we go inside and he's just looking around the place, like totally spaced out. Is that Daniel? Is that his name? Ken's son. His mum, Denise, she used to work in the salon. Yeah, well, my mum used to work in the cafe. You don't see me outside taking pictures, <laughs> do you? <laughs> Honestly, you guys are weird, or? And I know weird. Mm, no one's gonna argue with that. He's got some serious issues. Well, his mum abandoned him as a baby, so it's no surprise. Well, no surprise what? Or do you only like talking about people behind their backs? You are small people with small minds. OK, look, I think we've got off on the wrong foot. Uh, why don't I buy you a drink and we start again? I don't want to drink with you. Why would I? You're pathetic, all of you. Well, that's not fair. Yeah, I think that's enough now. What's your problem? You all right, David? Start it. You really need to keep a lid on that temper. I'm sorry. Look, it's fine. There's no harm done. What's going on? Nothing. Have you chucked him out of the pub? What has he done? Well, he got a little bit upset. I didn't mean what I said. I think he's a bit sensitive. Whoa, whoa, hey. What are you doing? Your mum's thrown me out. No, you're not leaving now. What do you care, Todd? Because you're leaving me with a whole lot of mess to deal with. You know, there's a lot of angry people out here. Not me, Vinny. You know the truth. So do you. Listen, I would quite happily batter Vinny to death right here. But I can't because he's gone. It's over. Fat lady is so. Right, so you're just gonna leave me to deal with the fact all on my own, yeah? You might want to think about packing a bag yourself. Thanks, E. How are you, mate? Yeah, yeah, good. Oh, you know, getting by. Same as ever. Listen, Dexy, I wanted to ask you, are you still living at that flat in Salford? Oh, I see. So you're all, you're all settled now. Oh, yeah, me too, yeah. No, all good. Got to run, Dexy. Bye, mate. Bye, bye, bye. We need to work out who's going in which car. It's no rush. The funeral's tomorrow. The undertaker's going to want to know. Well, you need to have something to eat. I had some toast for breakfast. You can't live on toast. Of course you can. I lived on toast for years. You stick anything with it, can't you? Beans, cheese, boar. You never get bored. We're planning a funeral. Do you think this is helping? Don't make it any easier, does it? Oh, it's Todd. Hello. A meeting. Well, can you tell me? I won't tell anyone. OK. All right, then. Bye. What do you want? There's a meeting this afternoon in the Rovers for everybody connected to the development. What about? He wouldn't say. But it's not good news. Sounds like Anna and Michael might have been right. Oh, please, no. My dad was rubbish. Like he wished he'd never had me. I was an inconvenience in his life. 
Look, I know that everything I did with Michael was wrong, but he was a good man. With a good heart. Yeah. You know, whatever he did, he didn't deserve it. Do you really think that Pat's capable of murder? I think that man's capable of anything. Michael told me he didn't trust Pat, but I, I had no idea how dodgy all this was until you filled me in. You want sugar? Uh, no, no, thanks. Are you getting on with Gail? Oh, it's not easy. I still feel really uncomfortable around the family. I mean, I don't want to create any more trouble for them. They've, they've been through so much already. Where have you been? Sorry, Sarah called to got to the door. You're going to be interested in this. Am I? Yeah, apparently Todd's called a meeting this lunchtime. Got an announcement about the flats development. What sort of announcement? Dunno. Right, we're going. It's meant to be for investors. So they can kick me out if they want to. Yeah, they can try. Yeah, yeah, one o'clock. Uh, it won't take long. But I'm really sorry, Rita, but I'd really prefer to tell everyone all together. Yeah, yeah, of course, Jenny can come. Yeah, all right, yeah, uh, see you there, bye. You won't tell what you're gonna say? No. I mean, how do you break bad news? Well, tell him fast. Tell him straight. Like pulling off a plaster. Just call Jason. I was a complete mess wittering on, and he was just brilliant. Said not to blame myself. The money was never really his. I just wanted him to shout at me. I feel a hundred times worse. I mean, why could you just call me a complete fool? God, I can't believe Pat's left you to deal with this on your own. You're not on your own. Mum, seriously, right? I've got this. I will you... be there by your side. Things might get really ugly. And you're going to need backup. OK, but you are not going like that. I can't get changed. Bulletproof vest might be good. See? You're not on your own. Just keep telling yourself that this was not your fault. Right? Good turn now. It's not bring and buy sale. I'm sorry. They're all going to want a piece of me. You'll be fine, love. If this is going to be one of them we need more money or it's all delayed until 2021 things, I am going to kick off. No, you'll do nothing of the sort. We'll sit here and wait to hear what he has to say. I do hope Anna's got this wrong. Yeah, your fingers crossed. You deserve a break. Mm. No, Pat, then. Hmm, what does that mean? Maybe he's been arrested. Yeah, don't get me up, so. Excuse me. Uh, looks like we're all we're all here now. So, um, firstly, I want to say thanks for coming at such short notice. Um, you're probably wondering why I've asked you all here today, and the simple truth is. Hang on, hang on. This is my job. I think you've done enough already. My mess, my responsibility. Pat, you walked away. Yeah, well, I'm back. And I'll do what has to be done. Thanks, everybody, for coming. I'm sorry, folks. It's bad news. Bad news for you, for me, for everyone. I think you all know that Michael Rodwell was found dead on the building site. What you don't know is what that that brave man uncovered. Myself and Todd have been working on this project in good faith. But our business partner, Vinnie Ashford, and trust me, I struggle to say the man's name, our business partner has shafted us royally. He's done a runner with the money. Our money, your money, no flats, no developments. We've all lost everything. Please, please, please. I understand how you feel. I'm as angry and frustrated as you are. Todd and I have spent hours, hours, trying to explain to the police what exactly happened. Isn't that right, Todd? Yeah. yeah. I don't fully understand it myself, but if you give me a chance, I'll try and answer all your questions. Could I just, uh, make it clear? 
Nearly everyone here gave you... I'm talking to you. Nearly everyone here gave you £15,000 for a reservation fee on a flat. All that's gone. No money. No flat. I'd like to deny it, Rita, but that's exactly right. So where's all the money gone? Vinnie took it. And as soon as I got wind of this, I checked on the business accounts. All emptied. And where's Vinnie? Well, the police are looking for him now, but I suspect this was his plan all along. So, wherever he is, he's probably covered his tracks. This is criminal. You have stolen our money. Not us, Vinnie. How come you don't know anything about this, eh? You're really that stupid. Ma'am. No, you was obviously in on it too. I understand your anger, and I share it. Trust me, if I could get my hands on Vinnie Ashford, there wouldn't be much left of him. I have lost 15 grand. There must be some way to get it back, I'm sure. That flat was for my kids. What have I got now? I've got nothing. What are the police doing? They should be locking you up. Let's not forget, someone died. Well, I'm as angry as any one of you in this room, but poor Michael lost his life. He hasn't had his funeral yet. Do we know what happened? Well, I, I found him, Rita. It looked like he'd broken into the site office, took a four stop with some jaws, and then he had a, a heart attack as he left. And we'll never know what he found, will we? Because you doubtless destroyed any evidence. Former lynch mob, if you want. <laughs> I've got no defence. I should have seen this coming. I've developed dozens of projects. Yeah, you have. And you've been bankrupt and all. I'm denying nothing. But you're looking at a victim here. Not a villain. I've lost here too. More than money. I persuaded this wonderful woman here to invest her son's savings in this project. 65,000 pounds. Gone. I promised her. Promised her it would make money. I promised her son, Jason, he would make money. And I lost it. And I've lost her. So, Todd is not to blame. Eileen is not to blame. This is me. I'm to blame. And rides to the rescue. Everything. Sarah, I am really sorry, but listen, we're going to do everything we possibly can to get back, you know, at least some of the money, yeah? How? And when? I mean, she can't afford to lose this. No. Hopefully the police can help us sort it out. How did you not know that this was going on? You're supposed to be my friend. How could you let this happen to me? Not the only one, love. Jason's lost 65,000. And that's meant to make me feel better? You never know. Maybe the police will find Vinny. Well, you might believe in miracles, but I don't. <laughs> they should give you an Oscar for that performance. I know you were in on it, so come on, where's your Sheridan? Remind me again, Anna, what's your stake in this? Hey, watch it. Calm down. Most of the people here today have lost money. What have you lost? Apart from an opportunity for revenge. At least she knows what you like now. It's just a shame, isn't it, that so many people here had to suffer along the way. Just remember, somebody died. Poor Michael lost his life. Mm. So convenient for you. Oh, please. Show some compassion. If it wasn't for you, then Michael would still be alive. Maybe if it wasn't for you, Michael would still be alive. You, you are an evil monster. You're a monster! Oh, come on, let's no, go. He's a monster! Find you here? Nowhere else to go. I'm a bit short of mates at the moment. It's brave what you just did. Brave or stupid? I can't tell the difference. Could have left Todd to face the flack on his own. My mum always taught me you make a mess, you clear it up. Then how are you going to clear up this one? Well, first, I'm going to work my fingers to the bone to pay back every penny for Jason's money. Don't make promises you can't keep. Might take a while. 
but I don't mind grafting. You got nowhere to live. I'll sort something out. I don't trust you. I don't even like you anymore. But if you're going to work to pay Jason back, then you can keep in Sean's old room till you find something yourself. You sure? Not really. Morning. How are you feeling? How do you think I feel? Burying Michael today. Hey. Ask a stupid question. bad about Paul Michael as anyone. If you hadn't got mixed up with that crook Vinny in the first place, none of this would have happened, would it? Oh, be fair. Michael's had more heart attacks than I've had games of darts. Anyway, today's not the day to be flinging around accusations. Too right. Michael deserves a decent send-off, and I'm not spending it refereeing between the pair of you. <sighs> Come on, Mum, don't upset yourself, all right? I'm fine. Oh, Mum. Like she's not been through enough this year already. Well, poor you losing all that money on the flat. I don't even want to think about it. Not today, anyway. How's your mum? Not great. I thought she wanted to come to the funeral. But... Oh, yeah. Um, have you heard any more about the flats? Police have confirmed it was Vinny behind it all. I'm burying my stepdad today. I've got more important things to worry about. I'm sorry. Well, that was embarrassing. Typical me, open gob, insert foot. Them flats have caused more chaos around here than Brexit. Yeah, tell me about it. Uh, can I just have a, um, a cheese and onion on white, please? Yeah, go sit down, I'll bring it over. I'm sorry about that. You'll, you'll give Gail my best, won't you? Yeah, of course I will. How's your back, love? Yeah, I've got the old clay to go back to work. Can't believe I much have missed it. Oh, that's good news. Is your man thinking of coming back to work soon? Only we don't half miss her. She's, uh, she's struggling, to be honest. Well, it's nice seeing her out and about yesterday. Don't worry. She's tough as old boots, is Anna. Yeah, she'll be back to her normal self in no time, you see. Me and Lily are breakfast in bed. What do you think it is? The Ritz? Please. Lily wants to watch Tractor Tom. Right, all right, fine, yeah. I'll bring it up, Your Highness. Wicked! Well, he seems to be cheerful enough. Yeah, I think he's just pleased he didn't have to go to another funeral. Sally said she'd have him. And Harry, as well. Oh, blimey. Shouldn't know what she's letting herself in for. <laughs> I had to give him the speech again last night. I said, it's not another funeral. It's a celebration of Michael's life. You'll be sick of hearing that. Hey, come on. No long faces today, please. Right? Well, it's a funeral, Gran. What do you want? Jazz hands. Who turned the kitchen into a branch of Subway? Uh, can I get you any breakfast, Gran? Uh, just a brew, love. Thanks. I can hear them now, the neighbours, joking about how many husbands I've buried. Darling girl. Listen, the only thing people will be thinking today is what a wonderful man Michael was and how much we're all going to miss him. Where's your mum? Ah, oh, she's not feeling it to it still. Oh, you tell her we understand after everything she's been through. No, not today. Oh, sure you don't want to come? No. Sounds right. Too many people blame me for what Vinnie did. I don't want to kick him off. It's not fair on Gail. Yeah. Too right. Ready? Uh, just a minute. Would you like to come in the car with us? Me? 
Well, you loved him too. Once. And I think it would make him smile. Knowing that we'd patch things up. I'd like that very much. Thank you. Still feeling that's something to do with Michael's death. I know that you're angry, but just please, just don't do anything daft. Not today. I was to the funeral. How do you think? I need to know what happened. Well, I've told the police everything I know. I just, I, I, I just hate to think of him dying alone and scared like that. Come on, lad, sit down. You're obviously upset. No shame in that. Do you, um... Do you think this Vinny could have had something to do with it? I mean, from what I've heard, he was a, a proper villain. You knew him. I don't know, mate. One thing I have learned over the years is the simplest explanation is usually the correct one. Yeah, but what was Michael doing there? And if he did suspect Vinny, how come you didn't? You knew him much better. You were working with him every day. Look, whatever happened between Michael and Vinny, I think poor Michael's heart just gave up. You know, he died a hero. Trying to expose that crook. You should be drinking him a toast, not torturing yourself like this. Yeah. I should, um... I should get back to the wake. And tell Gail I'm thinking about it, yeah? Thanks, Pat. Any time, kiddo. Any time. Charging Paul Maria with his fake marriage as well as a murder? What's the point in that? That's like kicking someone in the backside right before you're about to blow their head off. Paul Maria. Paul Maria? Just buried Michael. Don't you think we should at least talk about him for five minutes rather than gossip about how hard somebody else has got it? He doesn't mean that. It's been tough for him today. I know. Is David OK? I think he could do with a cuddle up. On it. How is it that a little lad that's been through what he has can just stay such a little sweetheart? Well, I think that's down to David and your mother, mm -hmm. darling. I think he's a lesson to us all. Well, I just wanted to see if he could shed any light on what happened. Yeah. No, I don't think he can, love. I mean, he's lost more than everybody, thanks to Vinny. Does anyone want another drink? Oh, no, Tart. We should be getting off. How much did you lose in the flats again? Was it 15 grand too? Yeah. yeah. Bethany's really disappointed. Yeah, she must be. Oh, I'm sorry. I wish you'd never got involved. But honestly, you have no idea how much Pat is hating himself right now. Well, it's not his fault, is it? To be honest, you know, with everything that's happened with Michael, he's just put things in perspective. What a positive attitude. Yeah. Um, where's Gary? Oh, he's got his uh, first shift back at the gym. But I'm going to go and see him later. So are you all right just to sit with Graham for a couple of hours? Uh, of course, yeah. Does anybody need a top-up? Not for me. I'm going to make a move. Okay. You OK? 
Yeah, I was a bit shaky when I went into church. Yeah, well, he wouldn't be so soon after. Yeah. I'm all right now, though. At least I can look forward to you and your sprog stopping here for the next decade or so. At least. I'm uh, going to get off now, Gail. Thank you for coming. Thanks for having me. I really mean that. Mind if I join you? Mind? You tickled pink. We'll get you a drink, Bob. Uh, in a minute. Off day. Educational day. You know, all of life's too short. Don't push it. Sorry. Right, you can get me that drink now. It's perfect. Keep thinking I can hear the tinkle of his ice cream van. Used to joke with him, I could hear him coming long before I saw him. Just think how much you'd be reminded of him in summer with all the ice cream vans around. Yeah. Yeah, there is that. Gail? What, love? What's this? A memory box for all your favourite memories. Like Michael gave me for my mum. <laughs> Another letter from the solicitor. This one on behalf of my clients, Mr. S.J. Hardwick and Miss T. Partridge. Which ones are they? Young engaged couple, flat nine. He was a teacher, taught physics. She was in marketing, and their mum lent them the money. Poor things. Mm. Solicitor doesn't mince his words. Put it on the file, love. None of that's got anything to do with us. No one seems to appreciate that we've lost more than they have. Mm. Mm, well, people are funny about these things. Have you finished with that? We need to look at the jobs pages. Have you not heard of the internet? Uh, oh, there's, um, there's a job going for a receptionist at a drugs clinic up in town. I'm thinking of applying. Uh, <sighs> drugs clinic. Don't know when Jack poisoned into the body. You should just let them get on with it. Oh, he's so charitable, isn't he? Come on, hand it over. We can't I'll be on the bread line. Where are you going to live? Ah. Oh, was that a stupid question? Well, we're just thinking short term, aren't we? Mm. Depends if he can behave himself. Hello, my mate Tommy. Thomas, thanks for ringing me back. Hi, hi. Do you need a hand? No, it's all right. I'm pregnant, not completely helpless, but thanks. <laughs> Morning. All right. We had one from the bank yesterday, the fraud department. Two from the solicitors the day before, and another one this morning. And the language is really aggressive. Well, what can they do, though? I mean, if the police think this other bloke's responsible. Exactly. So why are they persecuting us? Now do they know where we live? I mean, the company's not even registered at my address. Oh, if people are out of pocket, they'll find a way. Jason, I feel sorry for. Well, you and me both, love. See ya. In a bit. What was all that about? Solicitors. Solicitors, bankers, disgruntled clients, you name it. Oh, going to a door. Tyrone said Eileen said Feeling thinks they should put him in the shredder. Oh, stupid cow. She deserves everything she gets. Why don't you come outside? No, I'm not going outside. Come on, make you feel better. What? Staggering up the street while all the neighbours gawk at me? Oh, yeah, that's really going to cheer me up. No one's going to stare. Do you not reckon? Pay good money to come and see me, you know, along with the bearded lady and the world's tallest man. Hey, you've got nothing to be ashamed about. And it'll be good practice for the wedding. You've got to get used to these public appearances. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure about the wedding. Oh, come on. You put your dress out. I'm not going on my own. Oh, who's this now? <sighs> Hello? Hello, it's Roy here. Uh, Roy, crop 
Could you mention him? Who, oh, Tommy? He's my go-to man for a couple of days honest labouring. Aren't you a bit old for shoveling? Yeah, normally I wouldn't, but means must. We can manage. We? I know it's not much, but I'm going to try and pay them all back. One day, all of them. It's Denny who stole the money, not you. They trusted me. All right, Andy, lad. Hey, I heard you're quite the wordsmith. You are. You know, your short stories, what are they? The romance or stuff for ladies' magazines? Horror. Oh, scary. <laughs> I'm not much of a reader myself, to be told, but uh, I'd like to read one of your stories one day. Yeah, well, I'm, um, <clears throat> I'm writing one right now. It's about a very bad man who finally gets his comeuppance. Perhaps you'd sign it for me. Anyway, all the best. Wish you every success in the world. Thanks, love. <clears throat> Do you like him? Like nectar from the gods. Right, well, I'm going to go and have a bath while the bathroom's empty. Yeah, I do love your stink. Don't push it. <laughs> You're right, love. I thought you were going for a bath. Yeah, yeah, fine. Can you save us the water, will you? Yeah, sure. You see these? These are legit. Names, addresses, everything. And they match the clients that lost money. Well, they might be legit, but they're still nasty. Yeah, but these two. No names, handwritten. But they're the nastiest two. They're not about the flats, they're personal, trust me. We have to stick together on this, love. Can't stand the thoughts of you being hurt. Well, I don't want you to be hurt either. What the hell do you think you're doing? I don't know. I just. You know... Are you off your head? You know, if you want to protect me, fine. Move out. Problem solved. Thought I'd start looking, love. I should be out of your hair in a week or so. Well, at least I've not got any more of those letters. No. I'm going to call the police. You're right. They were full of bile. Whoever wrote them is a nutcase. Listen, whoever wrote them has obviously suffered because of Vinny. Now, I feel bad enough as it is without involving the police. My feeling is we won't hear any more from them. Well, I'm not going to take the chance. I'm going to call the police. Just wait. It was Anna. I saw a post this last night. Why didn't you tell me? Because I feel sorry for her. You're going to get what's coming to you. This is a threat. I am definitely calling the police. Just wait, Eileen. Just think what that poor woman's been through. She was already unhinged as it was, then nearly being burned alive. If I'm gentle, I'm sure I can talk some sense into her. And that's got to be better than you going around there all guns blazing, eh? You're a very forgiving man, Pat Phelan. I know. My feet are killing me and my back. I don't know how you do this day after day. Well, take a break if you like. I'm OK. No, no, I I'll, I'll soldier on. All right, well, in that case, then, you can go and empty out what's left in the freezer. It looks like it needs defrosting. What about the waste? Oh, it's better to have a little bit of waste, isn't it, than go and be sued for food poisoning. Go on. <laughs> In a minute. I smell burning. <clears throat> oh, it's just you. 
How's it feel, Anna? Yeah. To look at yourself every day and realise that no man's ever, ever going to want you again. No matter what sympathetic lies you might tell you. <laughs> hmm? You spout bile at me and you'll get it back tenfold. I know you wrote those letters. What letters? I saw you post it. You stupid cow. One more word. And you'll have a lot more than looking like Freddy Krueger to worry about. <laughs> Pity. That body was quite nice, as I remember. Oh. Hey, Brian. Love the penny. Oh, thank you very much. I rather like him. What's he called? I need to go. You all right? No, I am. I'm not ready to come back to work yet. But... Oh, Brian. Sorry, we're closed. I can't cope on my own. Oh, I thought Anna was open. She left. Why, did something happen? Oh, she seemed fine. Then that gentleman, uh, what's his name? Tall, bald. Pat Phelan? That's it. He came in and she said it was all too much. I mean, one minute she was mixing egg mayonnaise, the next, poof. I'll see you later. Oh, what a day. Anyway, how's Roy? I've no idea. I thought you was looking after him. I cannot be expected to care for every traumatised resident in the street whilst I work my fingers to the bone. All right, I was only asking. Excuse me. Oh, what now? Are you Roy Cropper? Do I look like Roy Cropper? I've never met him. Uh, for your information, I don't. I'm a great deal taller. How can I help? Uh, I'm Paul from Ellis Cook Estate Agents. He wanted to talk about valuation. For what? Mm, the cafe in the flat above. For you to put it on the market. I think you've got the wrong end of the stick, mate. I spoke to him an hour ago. What happened at the cafe? Nothing. Hey, you shouldn't have. Tell me. I just I felt a little bit wobbly, that's all. I put these in some water. Brian said Phelan was there. No, it was nothing to do with him. Don't lie to me, Anna. I'm not. We said no more secrets. What did he say to you? I, um, I can't repeat it. Give me one good reason. Why not? Because I... Um, I sent those letters. What letters? The poison pen letters. I wanted him to suffer like I have, like all those other people have. I mean, why should he walk away again scot-free? The man, he, he ruins lives like other people drink tea. It's not right, Kev, it's not right. He always gets away with it. Yeah. Not this time. No, I don't want you getting yourself into trouble for me. Look, Anna, when are you going to realise? I'd do anything for you. Hey, Kev! Use down with this, will you? Sorry, pal, I'm busy. Well, then take a minute. No! What's the matter with him? Oh, I don't know. I don't know where to stay. Got a look at a bedsit tonight. Why don't you stay and have a brew? Just put the cap on. Did you speak to Anna? I did. I had a gentle word. And? Well, she's sorry. She knew what she did was wrong. She's flaming lucky. If I had my way, we would have gone to the police. Well, I don't think we're going to get any more letters. And I'd rather not add to her suffering, to be honest. Are you sure you'll be able to find somewhere better to stay? Yeah. Listen, I'd better get on with some rubble shifting. Yeah, I've, uh, I've got to get going. Can you sink any lower? Sorry, Kevin, just on my way out. Anna told me what you said to her. Well, did she? Did she also tell you what she said to me, or rather, wrote to me? Yes, yeah, she did. You're going to get what's coming to you. That constitutes a threat of violence, legally speaking. Well, you pushed her to those lengths. Oh, come on, Kevin. It's not my fault she's off a rocker. You destroyed that woman's life! She did that to herself. No, you did it. You took all her self-confidence, all her self-respect. Being burned to a crisp can't have helped either, can it? Steady now, Kev. You're going to end up like poor Michael. You're going to pay for what you did. To her and to Michael. Hey, hey! Go on, go on. Just a misunderstanding. 
Kev, let's go and cool down, shall we? You shouldn't have got involved. Kev, I'm not going to let you batter a man like him. What, are you saying I couldn't have him? No. Yeah, but I bet he's a dirty fighter. Yeah, and you don't want him as your enemy. Are you? Just after we were with Luke. Everything all right? Going for a walk. Don't do anything stupid. What's all that about? Oh, it's just a... He's just had a spat with feeling. What about? Well, I don't know the details, but Kev says something about him. What he done to Michael. Like what? What did he say? Just that. Tell me. I don't know. That's all I heard. It's probably nothing. What did you want me for, anyway? Never mind. Andy! What happened with feeling? Not enough. I don't understand. I was this close from having that scumbag, and Luke pulled me off him. Oh, good. Good? Yeah, as soon as you left, I knew it was a bad idea, and I was worried that I'd encouraged you. Look, we don't want to give that man any more ammunition. He could already call the police about those letters. He won't. Well, I don't want him calling the police on you as well. Do you hear me? I'd do anything to protect you, Anna. You know that. Yeah, I know. I love you, Anna Windows. I love you, too. in the flat. Hello. Yeah, we need an ambulance, please. Don't touch him. I need to see if he's alive. Right, there's been an accident. Yeah, I've just found someone bleeding. I think he's unconscious. I, I don't know. He could, he could be... There's a pulse. Right, OK, there's a pulse. Um, it's um, Jason's Constructions, 19 Victoria Street, um, Weatherfield. Stephanie Britton. Yeah, OK. Yeah, I'll hang on. Oh, thank God you came back when you did. Do you think someone's done this? Well, I'm pleased to say that the bleed on the brain was successfully evacuated in theatre. He will be drowsy when he wakes up, and the medication will disorientate him for a while. And longer term? Well, hopefully there'll be no lasting neurological damage. I'll be back in a while. So, that's, um, that's good news. Yeah, and you know... It's the uh, change of clothes you asked for. Come on, you look worn out. Look, why don't you go home, yeah, get some rest, I'll take over for a bit, yeah? No, I'll be fine. Well, well at least go and get some breakfast, OK? I just want to know who did it. You know it was Anna who sent the hate mail. Anna? How'd you find that out? Pat caught her at it. Well, yeah, but she's not got the strength to clap him over the head like that, has she? No. Kevin has. And who did it? Well, you have plenty of enemies. Yeah, well, we all have enemies. Does it mean we go around trying to kill them? Yeah, well, it's not our job to work that one out. Does it stop us asking the question, though? Mm, big concern is for the boys and uh, brown toast for the lady. <laughs> for the lady? It's what bartenders say in Hollywood movies. Well, don't get carried away, Billy. You're only standing in for a few hours. What's well, don't know. I can get used to this. Well, excuse me while I go to the restroom. So you're putting in an offer, then? How do you know what I haven't? Oh, oh. More punters here than at church, I bet. Yeah, I'll pretend I've never heard that. Hey, that'll be the estate agent telling you to up your price. Uh, no, it's Todd. The hospital looks like uh, Pat's going to be OK. Excuse me. Oh, I'll be right with you. So you, um... You're going to tell the police what you saw, then? That, that fight between Kevin and Phoebe? Nah. I don't really want to get involved. Not even if it helps them find out who did it. Since when did you care so much about what happens to feeling? And until he comes round, we haven't got a clue what happened to him. Well... What? I saw Kev heading towards the yard yesterday, around about the time that it happened. Really? Yeah, he looked in a bit of a state. But why? I didn't ask. But they've got history, haven't they? Their man around Pat makes you think, doesn't it? 
was it today? Do you know, it doesn't feel as bad as normal, actually. It's cos I gave feel and what for yesterday. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> hey, don't get ahead of yourself, you. You'll be looking forward to Christmas next. Sure. <laughs> hey, what's all this? I didn't know he's selling up. No, it'll be because of Cathy. I hope he's all right. Mm. Great news, eh? Uh, what, Roy? No feeling, ain't you heard? No. no. He's in hospital. Somebody lamped him yesterday. Have you both been? Do they know who did it? Not as far as I know. Let's get our alibis ready, yeah? <laughs> See ya. See ya. What are you looking at me for? Well, what do you mean you give him what for? He had words. But you didn't hit him? No. Can't deny I wasn't tempted. But good luck to him, whoever it was. Well, I wouldn't let the police hear you talking like that. I've been here before, remember, with our Gary. The only winner in all this is going to be Phelan. <laughs> if he survives. Oh, he'll survive. He always does. Like I said last night, Andy, my partner, he heard me shout from inside the flat and then he came out. We checked that he was still alive. Called 999 and that's pretty much it. How well do you know Mr Phelan? I'm not that well. I mean, he comes in here sometimes and then I bump into him on the street. Know anyone who has a grudge against him? Uh, the Windasses don't like him much. Uh, Anna lives above the florist with her son, Gary, but I really don't think either of them would have done this, though. Anyone else? Well, he's not exactly the most popular man on the street, especially with the dodgy flats, but grudge enough to want to kill him. OK, thank you, Miss Britton. That's very helpful. Okay. Uh, what's happening? Oh, they were just asking questions about Pat Phelan. Uh, hang on, where have you been all morning? Oh, uh, yeah, sorry, I'm in flat hunting. Why the sudden rush? Because I'm fed up with slumming it at other people's gaffes, that's why. How much? Uh, Victorian co-op doesn't come cheap. So when are you moving him? This afternoon. You're not going off again, are you? I'm afraid so. Well, if I was you, I'd wait to find something cheaper. You're not me. And while you were in the flat before the commotion, did you hear anything unusual outside? No, no, not a dicky bird. Um, I, there was just one other thing, though. Yeah? Uh, earlier on, I was walking by the garage and I found Luke and Tyrone who worked there trying to calm down Kevin Webster, who owns the place. Calm him down? Why? He'd gone ballistic because of Pat Phelan, apparently. His partner, Anna, has some history with him. I, I don't know the details. And what time was this? It was about three o'clock. I wouldn't mention it, but this morning in the cafe, I overheard someone say that they'd seen Kevin heading towards the builder's yard and, and he was in a right state. Really? Who was that? It was a guy called Tim Metcalf. He works in the taxi office. And what time do you see this, do you know? Well, the words he used were round about the time it must have happened. Look, it's probably nothing. No, but... no. Every detail helps, Mr. Carver. Every detail. You've heard I've had a barney with him, I take it. We heard you were seen headed for his yard and estate. Oh, yeah, well, that's why. Is there somewhere we can go and talk? Oh, do we? Nothing to hide. It's no secret. I ate the man's guts. What was this barney about? been saying nasty things to my partner, Anna Windass, so I went to have a word. Was that just verbal? No, it's just a bit of pushing and shoving. He's lucky I didn't thump him. I've got Luke to thank for that, dragging me away. So you had nothing to do with the assault? Nope. Plenty around here be glad to oblige, though. People who got scammed out the money over these flats, you reckon, to have been building for a start. And what time did your argument with him happen? Half two, three o'clock. Hard to put an exact time on it. Is this a murder inquiry yet? No. Oh, bitter. Right, well, we'll leave it there for now. We need to talk to you again. Be my guest. A bit close to the knuckle, weren't you? Cops want the truth, don't they? Oh, yeah, but... So, I give it them. Wonder how he is. Good news travels fast, so if he dies, we'll find out soon enough. Had the police round. Really? Asking me about the row I had with him yesterday. Well, who told him that? I don't know, but it's no secret, is it? What did he say? Just told him the truth. 
I did a month inside, eight years back for whackings on step. I've got to play it by the book. I wonder if you should go and tell Arlene that you've had nothing to do with it. Oh, would that not make it look like I did it? No, not if you word it right. Yeah, I think she's got a point. It's none of my business, but you know what people are like and once rumours start flying round. Yeah, and if you're going round telling everybody what you think of him and Eileen finds out, which she will, you know, why have the aggravation? I don't really know. Oh, How are you? Um, I'm sorry that I landed Kevin it this afternoon. So it was you? Yeah. Somebody heard me telling Sally in the cafe that I'd seen him walk into the builder's yard in a bit of a state. I told the police I had to confirm it. Well, thanks a ton. Well, what else was I supposed to do? I didn't do it on purpose. Well, it's you who grassed him up. We should be looking for well, you. Well, who did? That cafe was full. It could have been anyone. Well, if Kev's not doing it, he's got no to hide, has he? Yeah, until Phelan wakes up, hears about it and decides to go after him. Yeah, but what proof would he have? I don't know. I'm sure he'll use it to his advantage. He always does, Sally. Careless talk costs lives. Never heard of that expression. Who's that? No, oh, it's just Billy asking if I'm free tonight. Where you go? No, not leaving you here. Well, you've done your bit for today. You still really care about him, don't you? Nothing like nearly losing someone to focus the mind. Miss Grimshaw? Yes. Good news. He's coming round and the signs are promising. Oh, thank goodness. Can I go in? Just give it a few minutes so we can do some more checks. I'll come and get you. Thanks, Doctor. That is a weight off my mind. Right, you get off and make sure you enjoy yourself. Cheers, Mum. <sighs> If you're here to cause trouble... No, listen, I just want to say... I had no part in what happened. You might have heard we had a row yesterday. But there's no rough stuff. And I've told that to the police. And Anna's letters? Did you tell the police about them? Didn't think so. Look, I've no grudge against you, and nor does Anna. You need to be looking somewhere else. <laughs> but you got your work cut out. Cos it's a pretty long list. Finished? Good. Because I'll still be telling the police that you and Anna are number one suspects. I'm glad to see you. PC Mills, Weatherfield Police. If you can tell us what you remember. I was just locking up the yard and somebody jumped me. Did you get a look at them? It's on a blade, to be honest. Do you remember anything else? Any detail, however small? Look, maybe you should come back later. But there is just one thing. Just before it happened, there was a bloke hanging around outside the cafe and um, staying over at me. And who was that? Um, the bloke who owns the garage, Kevin Webster. We'd had a, an argument earlier. I knew it. He was just here. How come, love? Because he knows we're on to him. Why else would he turn up here claiming his innocence? Oh, that doesn't mean it was him, love. <sighs> Not much, it doesn't. And Coronation Street continues in half an hour. When I get you home, I'm going to treat you like a king. Oh? Huh? Thought you wanted me out. Never have said what I did. Something like this makes you realise what's important. I still love you, and I still want to marry you. I love you too. You know, when I opened my eyes and saw your smiling face, I knew everything was going to be OK. You have been on quite a lot of pain medication. Mm -hmm. I mean it, Eileen. You have every right to turn your back on me. I'm the luckiest man in the world. Lucky? Just been attacked by the manic mechanic. No, I can't be completely sure it was him. It's all very hazy. Mm, yeah. Mm. It's probably somebody who's lost money on the flats, I mean. If I'm honest, I could probably give you a list as long as me arm. Anna sent those letters. It doesn't take a brain surgeon to work it out. 
I'm bending over backwards to put things right since Dick Turpin did a flit. And I'm the one left taking all the flack. Oh, if I could get hold of Vinny, I'd put him in hospital. I think I could do with the rest now. Okay. Visiting's too late. I'll come back. Okay. Would you do me a favour? Would you ask Andy and Steph to drop in? I'd really like to thank them for what they did. Yeah, I'll pop in the beast on the way home. Thanks, sir. Excuse me for a sec. Hey, uh, any news of Pat? Well, he's sitting up. Good. Yeah, please, sit in. He's grubby, he doesn't remember much. Though I've got no doubt about who did it. Who? Kevin Webster. Wow. Yeah, the police say it might still come back to him. Well, fingers crossed, eh? Oh, um, and he's asked whether um, Beauty wouldn't mind popping in. Uh, he wants to say thank you. Oh, look, well, there's, there's no need for that. Just tell him he's welcome. No, he wants to do it in person. I'm going to go back in half an hour, so if either of you fancy coming with me. Yeah, sure, I'll come. I'm, I'm working. We can manage. Uh, it would be better without you. No, no, look, look, you two go. No, I want you to come. Yeah, oh. please. You've saved his life. It'd mean a lot to him. We got visitors. Ah, Steph, Andy, good Samaritans. I got you some clean gym jams and I got you some fruit. Thanks, love. How are you? Still smiling. You saved my life. Come here, give us a hug. Any excuse, eh? I mean it. It's been touch and go here, isn't it? When I get out of here, the drinks are on me. <laughs> we only did what anyone would do. Yeah, we just saw you lying unconscious. We found the ambulance. Mm. Police are asking me if I saw who did it, but it's, it's just a blur. Oh, come on, we know who it was. Come on, please tell me everything. I might jog my memory. Um, I was just walking home from work and I saw you lying there outside the yard. Uh -huh. Where were you, Andy? I was in the flat. I heard her shouting. Yeah. You didn't see anyone lurking around, or...? No, no, you were just lying there, and I right. went... Well, something's coming back. I was at the yard. There's someone behind me. No, no, it's gone. Boys in blue will track them down, eh? Pass us a plum. Do you know where the loo's at? Oh, come on, I'll show you. You keep having these flashbacks, you know. The pain when I hit the floor. Just about make out a shape. Of course I saw you, you idiot. But you, you've told the, you've told the police it was Kevin. Why? Why? Yeah, well I like messing with him. You, on the other hand, I got bigger plans for you. What do you mean? From now on, you do as I say. You come back, you see me here tomorrow, or I call the cops. Understand? Oh, yes, officer. It's all coming back to me now. The white male, about mm, five foot ten, brown hair, brown eyes. His name. Oh, it's Andy. You follow? And then there was this bloke that was eating prawns, but then with the heads and tails still on. I mean, I tried to tell him, but he weren't for listening. Too much vino, I think. <laughs> tell me what I just said. What? What have we been talking about? Um, heads or tails? No. What's up? Nothing. Is this Pat? No. Why would it, why would it be about Pat? I don't know, you just didn't really sleep that much after seeing him last night. Yeah, well, it, it just played on my mind, that's all. Yeah. 
was horrible seeing him all battered and bruised, wasn't it? Yeah. Hey, do you think Eileen's right? I mean, I know that Kevin's not his favourite person, but do you think he hated him enough to do that? Do you two not see enough for each other at home? Stop gabbing, will you? Sorry, I was talking about Pat. No, Eileen thinks it was Kevin who attacked him. Kevin won't take things so far. Um, can I, uh, can I take my break? You've only just got here. Just five minutes. I'm, I'm not feeling too good. Yeah, you're looking a bit pale. You all right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I just need to get some fresh air. Yeah, yeah, you do look a bit peaky. Go on. What? Now, is there any way to talk to somebody who's helping you out? Helping me? How are you helping me? Well, I'm keeping me gob shut, aren't I? But you're not keeping your end of the deal, are you? What? You're supposed to be here. I told you to come for a friendly chat. I'm at work. Not my problem, mate. I'm not a man you want to keep waiting. Hey! Oh! <laughs> I didn't mean to scare you. Just want to see you, OK? Yeah, fine. Really? You're looking a bit sweaty. Uh, actually, do you know what? I, th I think I'm getting a migraine. Oh. Have you had one before? Uh, it's not for years. Right, um, let me go tell Leanne. I'll go to the chemist for you. No, 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 look, I, I can go. Um, we can't both leave Leanne in the lurch. You sure? Yeah, yeah. Just need to pop some pills, get my head down for a bit. Um, I'm sorry. No, no, it's not your fault. Um, right, I'll go finish my shift and then I'll come home and look after you. Thanks. Right? <laughs> ah. Exactly who we wanted to see. That friendly neighbourhood assassin. What do you want? Well, that's not very polite, is it? If I'd left someone for dead, I'd be a bit nicer to them. I doubt that. How did you ditch work? Said I had a migraine. Oh! Lying to your bed, eh, you see? Me and you. Not that different, are we? I'm nothing like you. Oh, come on, mate. Just thought we could have a friendly chat over a brew. Well, go on then. What? I'm parched here. Get the teas in. Two sugars, dash of milk. And a slice of Battenberg if they've got some. Love a slice of Battenberg, me. Mmm. It's not Battenberg, but it'll do. If you've just brought me here to mess with me, then I've got to get back to work. You just stay where you are. I'll tell you when you can go. All right. No, I've been thinking about how you can pay back your debt. I don't owe you anything. I disagree. I think if you try and kill someone and it goes wrong, you owe them more than an apology. And come to think of it, I haven't even had that, have I? Michael is dead because of you. Hey, I would appreciate it if you don't go spreading malicious rumours about me. I mean, who knows when my memory will come back. What do you want? OK. Now, I need to get out of this financial cul-de-sac I'm in, and you're going to help me. I'm skinned. Well, you're going to have to unskin yourself, aren't you? Otherwise, I might find myself getting a bit chitty-chatty with the police. I can't just magic up money out of nowhere. No. If only there was a till full of cash you had access to. Oh, no, no. I am not robbing from work. You're forgetting something, son. You do as I say. I own you. Look, I thought you had a migraine. I should be in bed. Yeah, well, I'm feeling a lot better now, and I'm busy, so... Oh, he's my brave little soldier. Yeah, if you're going to be sarky, I might as well take to my bed again. Oh, don't do that. We need all the help we can get. Uh, do you want me to put that in the safe for you? Oh, it's all right. Robert's changed the combination. To what? Ah, she told you she'd have to kill you. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I wasn't expecting to see you. You OK? Yeah, loads better now, thanks. Good. Uh, can you give a couple of glasses of house red to table six, please? Yeah, sure. And when you get a minute, will you uh, move this box of tablets? Tablets? Yeah, for the new ordering system. Dozy beggars delivered 24 instead of four. They're going to pick them up tomorrow. If you, uh, I don't know, just put them in the office. Uh, yeah, 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 sure.
Any candy? Oh, you look awful. You should go home. Oh, no, we're, we're too busy. Yeah, well, that's not your problem, is it? Go on. Yeah, we're finishing. Oh, we're going to close just after 11. One of the cleaners is going to come in early in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, go on, get yourself home. Thanks. Thanks very much. Thanks. What's happened? We've been robbed. You are kidding. Nope. What, what did they take? Just them tablets and some petty cash. Just, he says. Do you know how much they're worth? About 9K. Still, you'll, you'll get it back on insurance. No, we won't. Because someone forgot to lock up and put the alarm on. I did. What? I swear. Well, there's no signs of it breaking, so you can't have. I I'm sure I... At least I think I did. Well, you either did or you didn't, which is it? I, I don't know. I kind of do it on autopilot. Like, I, I don't really recall. Maybe I mustn't have. Great. Oh, Robert, I am so sorry. Yeah, well, sorry's not good enough, Steph. Go home, eh? What? You're suspended until further notice. You can't do that. <laughs> yes, I can. Unless you've got nine grand. Look who it is. Hope you brought me some good news to cheer me up. I got you 24 brand new tablets. I told you to empty the till. It's cash I need. These are worth way more, about nine grand. These are worth nothing. What am I supposed to do with these stuck in here? I don't care. As far as I'm concerned, we are done. Well, I think I'll decide when we're done. Still, you made a good start. <clears throat> Michael teach you the tricks of the trade, did he, before he pegged it? Right. Ring this number, he'll buy them, and you bring me the cash, OK? No. I've done enough. You do not know what I risk getting these. Uh, another prison sentence? On top of the one for whacking me? Shall I just ring the police now? Good lad. And no arguments next time, eh? It won't be a next time. Oh, no, well. There is always a next time. Now, bog off. I need a rest. Are you sure you're going to be all right? Yeah, it's not like I've not had one before. Yeah, a couple of days ago. I mean, is that normal for migraines? Yeah, absolutely. But I'm going to the doctor's to see if we can get some strong painkillers. Mm. Stephanie Britton. Yeah? There you go. Oh, wow, well, thanks. What have I done to the Zeppies? They're not for me. You must have a secret admirer. Hmm, hardly. But from Pat Phelan. Well, it's a nice one, I suppose. Yeah. Look, could you put these in some water? I'm really late for my mum. OK. I can cancel, you know. It's only shopping. No, no, no. Look, look, you go. I, I, I'll be fine once I've been to the doctor's. OK. I've tried the over-the-counter stuff and it's just not touching it. Would you say these attacks have become more severe? Absolutely, yeah. 
ever since Michael died. Michael? Michael Rodwell. He was a patient of yours. Yes. Were you close? He was like a father to me. I see. Well, it might be that your more frequent headaches are connected to the emotional trauma. Have you considered grief counselling? I could get a leaflet. I don't want a leaflet. I want pain relief. Excuse me. Come in. Yeah, I'm sorry to disturb you, Doctor, but your son's in reception. He says he needs to see you. I'm so sorry. Can I just... Yeah, yeah. Go for it. Hey, do you want to end up in a ward next to Pat? Is that where you're heading? You no, know, doing a couple of hours at streetcars for my sins. How about you? Uh, Steph's folks asked me around, but I swerved it. It's not fair, is it? Good man like Michael gone. When you look at the people left behind. Big plans for the day. Mm. Might even break a few commandments. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbour's BMX. It's always a tricky one at Christmas. <laughs> Do you that? There's more to the day, though, isn't there? You know, it should be about family and friends and pulling together, sticking up for those who, who can't stick up for themselves. Yeah, well, if it's too late. Michael, he was pushed around, he was treated like a joke, and I just... Let it happen. Mm. Maybe next time you see that, you won't. You'll stop a bullet. Cut him down. Mm. In Michael's name. Have a good one. Well, I've had better Christmases, love. Even the time I found Val in bed with the pill boy. I'm sorry, love. I just wanted to have a bit of cash, you know, so you could go and enjoy the sales or whatever. Two little words. That's all I want. It's only nine carat. And I saw them wheeling you in on that trolley. It just hit me. I don't want to live without you, Pat. And you do know one thing. You'll never find me in bed with the pool boy. I do. The 20th of January, 2017. Yeah. To Pat. Yeah. Mum, come on, I thought you dodged this bullet. I mean, you really want to be Mrs Eileen Phelan? Well, Grimshaw Phelan's a bit of a mouthful, so yes. <sighs> oh, talk about the season of goodwill. Do you know what? You're just in a knot because you've been on your Todd all day, Todd. Yeah, whatever. Sorry. I'm sorry too. Miniature. Champagne. Go on, then. <laughs> Thanks, Debs. Don't have to worry about Debs. The teenagers spend all the time on their mobile phones and their mother-in-law's a battle axe. She's happy to be here on Christmas Day, unlike you. Yeah, well, I thought you'd just want to know if... Sold the tablets. Oh, goody. You brought the cash. Santa's little helper. Well, we haven't done the handover yet, but your man, he definitely wants them. So you've come empty-handed? No. I brought you this. It's freshly squeezed this morning. With half a bottle of Nick's best gin. Now, if you've got to spend Christmas eating hospital food... And thanks to you, I have to. This might... Sugar the pill. Could do with some ice. I'll go and get some. Birds. I thought our Jason had a big appetite. Is that your other son? The, the, uh, the one who's off travelling. Is, um... Is Jason coming home for the wedding? Because you'll want some guests, won't you, Mum? All right, Todd, you're not doing handstands. I get it. 
Shona, do you need to use a phone, you know, if you need to find a sofa for the night? Oh, I'm fine. Thanks ever so much, all of you. There's not many are taking a stranger off the street, and you have made me feel welcome. She's got a big heart. Mm. You're too big for her own good sometimes. I'll see you later. Bye. See ya. Are you sure I can't run you to an hostel? Well, you've done enough. You should be with Todd. Oh, I suppose I bet you got a good in here. Hang on to him. I'll try. See ya. Mm. See ya. Thought I'd never get you to myself. <laughs> What's wrong? I asked for a sign. I thought it was the job. It... It's shown her. Oh, my heart is racing. I feel it now. I, I know it. Billy, come on. We've talked about this day for weeks, haven't we? Eh? I've been called back to the church. I can do so much more there than I can as a civilian. It's where my heart really lies. It's well with you. Oh. Oh, just get a drink. What kept you? You waited. Yeah, I'm not going to drink on my own, am I? No, I've got a fridge full of beers at home. A toast? To what? You think I left you for dead? I know. It was what you deserved, because you killed Michael. Oh, not this again. Are we going to drink, or what? I never asked for any of this. I, I just want a fresh start, pretend it never happened. You know, Eileen's going to make an honest man of me, don't you? You get me the money for those tablets, you walk away. What, no more calling in favours, no more threats? You get me the money, call it quits, end of. As though we'd never met. As though we'd never met. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. I'm so sorry. I'll, I'll, I'll get the nurse. spirit today? I'm sorry. What's wrong with you? I don't know. Have I done something? No. So how come you ignored me all yesterday? What, you didn't call? No texts? No nothing? I just... I didn't want to spoil your day. I was feeling dead miserable, you know? Do you know what? I'm still feeling a bit rubbish now, so um, I'm going to go out and get some fresh air. Well, if you wait, I'll come with you. No. Thanks. I'm, I'm fine. Andy. Look, I just, I'd rather be on my own, OK? Don't worry, I'm going to pop out and I'll be back soon, OK? What, no grapes? I sold them all to your mate, as agreed. So we're quits, all done? Could you get us a glass of water? I don't know. I'm feeling a bit weak today. I'm not sure I can trust any drink that's been prepared by you. We had a deal. I sell the tablets, bring you the money. Yeah, well, I've changed my mind. Now, what are you going to do about it? That's not fair. Come on! I haven't got the guts, eh? Come on, I'm an old man, I'm weak and frail. This is the best chance you're gonna get to do me in. Hey, maybe you could smother me with a pillow or squeeze the life out of me. As far as I'm concerned, we're quits. Uh, what, no get well soon? I'm stuck in here for the time, but I will be out one day, so we'll talk again. Unless you crack up, lad. Whichever comes first. <laughs> So, you've wangled the night off. What's the plan? 
Hello? What? Tonight, New Year's Eve. Yeah. Yeah, well, um, decided to bistro or the pub, I guess. Did I hear the word pub? Uh, I thought you were with Joan Collins tonight. No. I might be out with Tracy. Yeah, so she's not got something better on. Cuts both ways, that. Can I get a Danish to go, please? Certainly. You're right, Toya. Yeah, you. Yeah, good. Heard you about. Yeah, nice to see you. Um, Eileen, um, I was just wondering if I could have a two-week extension on the rent. Um, I've lost my job. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No worries. Least I can do after all the help you've given Pat. Oh, thank you. Thanks. How is he? Yeah, he's getting out of hospital today, actually. Oh, so quiet New Year. Well, if I can rein him in, but you know what he's like. So, any New Year's resolutions? And don't say to drink more and bed more, will you? I wasn't going to. Mm. I don't need New Year's to make them decisions. But um, shh. Oh, yeah? You all right? Oh, didn't tell me it was a kid's night out. I'd have brought Amy if I'd known. Uh, well, if you want to be in bed by midnight, Tracy, talk to up with your hot cocoa. Uh, excuse me, but I could drink you under the table any day. Uh, shouldn't you be slowing down at your age? I hear the big four O's coming up. OK, that's enough. Either you two play nicely or I'm off. Oh, blimey. Straight from the hospital to the pub, eh? Well, little Billy, what your fancy does you good, I always say, and I've got no intention of ruining Ireland's New Year's Eve. Well, as long as you don't overdo it and end up with a relapse. That's a white wine. Mm. And a half a shandy for me, please. Oh, you can be goody two-shoes when you want to be. I'm always on my best behaviour with you, love. <laughs> if not with others. Ollie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Happy New Year, mate. Listen, remember we once talked about me crashing at yours while I look for work in Bristol? Yo, is, is that offer still on? Really? Great. Well, if there's no time like the present, how about tonight? Right, well, I don't know about anybody else, but I am starving. Hot pot. I will pretend you didn't say that. Well, I'd say go to the bistro, but I've been suspended. And it's Andy's night off. What is wrong with you? Get a grip. If Robert says out, just, you know, tell him where to stick it. Yeah, you're right. Where is he, anyway? No, he's in the back ringing his mum. Oh. Are you going to ring your mummy, Luke? Maybe. You got a problem with that? I love it when you watch. <laughs> right, well, I'll, I'll go and pack a bag then and come on down. Steph? No, 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 she's, she's cool with it. I'm, I'm not really sure that's, that's going anywhere, to be honest. I'll get off anyway. Yeah, see you. Not avoiding me, I hope. I told you, leave me alone. Nobody tells me what to do. Who's that on the phone? My mother. Ah. Does your mum know you go around trying to kill people? I don't need this. Whoa, 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 whoa. Have you forgotten something? I tell you what you need and what you don't need. Unless you want to go down for attempted murder. For you, prison. Oof. Grim. Especially for pretty boys like you, if you get my meaning. Or you can have the alternative. Face down in a ditch. Because, you see, when I put my mind to something, unlike you, I see it through properly. Hey, it doesn't seem five minutes since last New Year. Oh, I know. Six more minutes daylight today than oh, ten days ago. Uh, spring is on its way. All set. Oh, we're going to go to the beach, OK? Yeah, sure. How was she? What? Your mum. Oh, yeah, yeah, fine. Come on. Right, let's go. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah and the years are <laughs> Big softy. I hope I've done the right thing. Uh, he spoke to his mum on the phone. And his taxi boat to bring her back by one. Yeah, I know. She'd never have forgive you if she said no. Is that her? I would have thought so. 
Hello? Johnny? Whereabouts are you? Hang on a minute. Johnny Connor's broken down. He wants me to go and get him. Ruin our new year. How long will it take you? About an hourish. Good money, though. We'll pay through the nose for this. Yeah, well, you need it for Sophie, don't you? And it's not like we're painting the town red, is it? You can say New Year in when you get back. I'll put Jack to bed when you're gone, if you like. Johnny, you look lucky you've not been drinking. I'm not going to bed yet. No, I know, darling. Uh, right! Ten minutes to go, everybody, so charge your glasses, please. I'll do these. Thank you. <laughs> Emily to Peru a year ago, and, and now you, it, it's beginning to look like everyone's trying to get away from me. I beg your pardon? <laughs> no, I, I was saying, you know, Emily having gone to Peru and you going away, it's as if you're all trying to get away from me. <laughs> I seem to remember you tried to talk her out of it. Yeah. <laughs> you haven't done that with me. No, no, I mean, why, why should I? I mean, it, after all, it's none of my business, and if you've found something you've set your heart on, then... But it's never stopped you before. You're forever poking your nose in where it's not wanted. Oh, <laughs> but that is if... I mean, would you want me to try and talk you out of it? Out of it? Being with my family after all these years? Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> hey, what do you want? Yes, another red wine, please. Happy New Year. You see, that is more like it, girlfriend. Gee, thanks. <laughs> Do you ever feel sorry for the old year? What? Comes in all fresh and new on the 1st of January. Everybody's pleased to see it. <laughs> and in the year later, just boot it out. I have never seen you this drunk before. No, seriously, how must it feel? I'm feeling a bit queasy. Really? I think I might have drunk too much. Oh, here we go. Maybe a bit of fresh air? Yeah, I think so. OK, I'll come with you. No, no, no. I'll be fine. No, I think the world of you. Yeah, so you should. 